and they end up here. Uh, the inspection belt, we have a group of ladies that pick off imperfection. Proceed on to our racks in the trays where they're put into glass freezers and they're frozen IQF. They're brought back out and they're dumped into large totes and we also do a bit of secondary processing in smaller boxes and gallon bags for local sales on the island and in the area but most of our product right now goes to international markets and they're distributed worldwide. If you want to learn more about Agriculture in the Classroom, Newfoundland and Labrador, you can check us out at AITCNL.ca. There's a lot of different events we do throughout the year and different programs that you can get involved in and volunteer for, so we'd love to meet you. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. This is Rogers TV. Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's your boy DC, Thursday night host of Rogers Out of the Fog. Right, you kind of got to make your own fun. Yeah. Which was a transition for me right. going into the morning show Just here. Proud. Keep doing the amazing work, will you? Um, they're learning about how to hire people. 20 years of local matter, so join me every Thursday night and see what's going on in the fog. We can be hurt, we can be bruised, we can be broken, slowed down, confused, and even numbed, but we can't be defeated. We're built on a foundation that's strong, our mission unwavering, and together we'll beat as one. Tombolo Multicultural Festival, Newfoundland and Labrador, a leader in supporting economic, social and cultural integration of newcomers in Newfoundland and Labrador and in bridging communities through arts and heritage. This is Rogers TV. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Good morning and happy Championship Sunday. You are tuning into Rogers TV live coverage of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. Today we have semi-final action in the women's division between the Ascension Astros and the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. The winner of this one moving on to the very first women's championship game. We're still a few seconds away as the teams are gonna line off here to my right on ice level uh, for the anthems. Great day of hockey ahead. Games at 9 o'clock, 9.20, 10 o'clock, 10.20. We're going to see some great uh, championship action later on today and crown two new champions. Maybe not even new. Over on the men's side, O'Donnell's still in it, the two-time defending champions, as we're going to head down to ice level now for the anthem.
the playing of the national anthem. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this morning's game between the a Ascension Astros and the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers, this semi-final game. My name is Chris Ryan. I'll be bringing you play-by-play -play of this contest. About to get underway here now. These two teams face each other in round-robin play. It was the Ascension Astros coming out on top of that one by a score of 4-1 to over the Pioneers. So uh, should be some good, exciting hockey here this morning between these two ladies teams as they are up and cheerful this morning the referee is ready to go at center Queen Elizabeth quick off the draw gets it into the ascension zone it's bought out to the neutral zone dumped down by number 10 Leah Shepard in the corner now. Puck gets tied up along the wall. Kennedy Goss gets it out into the neutral zone. It's ahead now for Megan Rustin. Rustin in over the line. She'll take it wide. Tries to get it to the corner. Ascension turn it over. Come back the other way. Leading with it is Jenna Snow. Snow in over the line. Tried to get it to Shepard. It'll go in towards the goaltender. Sarah Hillier for the whistle. 9.27 now in the first period remaining. These periods, three 10-minute periods. First official shot just registered on net. Pioneers win the draw, send it to the corner. It gets over snow stick. Back now to the far wall, racing for it as the Pioneers in the neutral zone, chip down low by Grace Nolan, picking it up for Ascension. Turned over, Goss gets it back. In the corner now, Ascension has it. Pioneers get it back. They send it behind the net to Jenna Snow. No, oh, excuse me, Kennedy Goss. Grace Nolan from the corner, sends it over in front. It's deflected, it comes up top now. Nolan still with it, sends it to Rustin. From the point, Brooke Vincent's shot. Cleared out by Ascension. Send it down, I believe it goes into the bench as the Astros are changing. So it will be a neutral zone face-off here now. 8.28 to go into the first. Astros win the draw. Defense quickly plays it out to the neutral zone. It's shipped down low by Molly Goff. Molly Gills, excuse me. To the wall now. Kept bought in there now by Ascension. Yeah. 
Pioneer send it down below their own net. And then around the boards. It's out now. Racing back with it, it's Molly Gill. She comes to the middle of the shot. It's loose on the side. Couldn't get the rebound shot off Tiana Lambert. From the point, now a blast in. That was from Deanne Walls. In the corner now. Ascension with the down low, Carrie Butler. Butler, she's going to carry it up ice to the neutral zone. She'll send it to Beth Edmonds. Edmonds, shot right in on net, and a save made by Hillier. A couple of good opportunities in the opposing end for the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. A couple of quality shots there. Uh, the goaltender for the Astros, Brooklyn Drover. She's standing tall between the pipes for her club. Astros win the draw, right back to the point. Pioneers able to clear it out, rushing back and getting it as Jenna Snow. Played ahead now, in over the line. In alone out front, what a save there from Hillier. Back to the point now. Tried to get it over, intercepted by the Pioneers. They send it out into the neutral zone. Ahead. Kennedy Goss carries it in for the Pioneers. Picked up by Marissa Dawson now at the Astros. She turns to avoid Goss. Still with it, she plays it up. Not enough to clear it out. Sent back in by Brooke Vincent. Out in the neutral zone now, it's Aaliyah Shepard for the Astros. From the circle, shot right in on it. Loose puck on the side, bouncing puck there now. Back the other way come the Pioneers now. Over to Kennedy Goss. Goss on the wall, shot. Steered to the corner by the stick of Drover. Astros collected in the corner, send it to the opposite corner, and played ahead. Out in the neutral zone now, it's Aaliyah Shepard with it. Racing in, helping her is Allie Ackerman, but Astros are offside. So still scoreless in this opening Semi-final game. 6.07 left to play, and the shots even at six, or excuse me, at four apiece. Puck in the Pioneers end. They send it out in the neutral zone. Carried back in by Beth Edmonds of the Astros. She battling for possession. Gets it to Ackerman. Ackerman in the slot. A shot in on net. Save was made there by Hillier. Pioneers looking to clear. It bounces. Able to be kept in there by Macy Parsons. Back to the point. Parsons stepping in. Keep it in for her club. From the wall now. A shot goes off the stick of a Pioneer. Up to the mesh. Whistle a goal. 5.29. Left here now. We're at the point of the weekend where Fisherman's friends and Halls are my best friend, getting me through these games. Face off one there by the Pioneers. They blow it down, and I'm not sure why. win the draw this time. Played back for Carrie Butler. Pioneers back the other way now. Played back to the point. Kept in by Brooke Vinson, but it's a bouncing puck. Ends up in the Astros bench. Zone face off here now. Pioneers deemed responsible for that puck out of play. Yeah. 
Astros send it ahead in the Pioneer zone. They get by with it now. Jenna Snow, a shot in on net, and a save made from Hillier. Sarah Hillier with some nice saves for the Pioneers this morning. She's been up and had her coffee this morning. 4.55 to go. Bouncing puck off the draw, comes below the goal. With it now, it's Aaliyah Shepard. Played back to the point. Kaylee Flynn. Pioneers coming away with it is Molly Gill. Gill looking to raise up ice. She dumps it in, right in on net. And Drover will cover it up for the whistle. 4.36 to go. You'll see that save once again here from Sarah Hillier now. There's a good opportunity there for the Astros to get on the board, but she's denying them so far. Laid back to the point now. Pioneers fired in. Loose puck in front. Couldn't get the rebound off. Down low. Snow rims it around the boards. Picked up by Aaliyah Drover. Molly Gill try to center it there. Astros collect it and back the other way now. With it. Aaliyah Shepard. Steered ahead by Jenna Snow. Snow with it. Sharp angle shot. Save made there by Hillier. Out in the neutral zone it is. It's played D to D. Dumped down low. Racing in for it now. Marissa Dawson played around. Kept in by the Astros. A chip off the boards. It comes out into the neutral zone. Allowing the Pioneers as Astros were offside. Astros send it into their own zone. And a hit. Jumps over the stick of Ackerman. Collected now by Deanne Walsh. Back the other way now for Queen Elizabeth. They come. Puck gets intercepted. Off the boards and out. Back the other way now. Beth Edmonds gets it over for Abby Neal. Neal with a shot in on net. The save made by Hillier once again. 3.07 to go here in the first. We're still scoreless. Shots 9-6 in favor of the Astros. Back, sent down low by the Astros. Deanne Walsh will send it up the boards for Queen Elizabeth. It comes out, turned over, sent back in the zone by Chelsea Crane. In the corner now, Queen Elizabeth has it. They send it up ice, a bouncing puck comes out into the neutral zone. Macy Parsons sends it ahead for the Astros. Intercepted and turned over by Queen Elizabeth. They get it in the zone. Gill sends it down low. Goes to the opposite corner. Astros back to the point. Sent back in. It's onto the stick there now of Macy Parsons. Macy Parsons racing up ice. She gets the blue line, dumps it in. On the back of the net she collects it. She tries for the wraparound. But Hillier is there, gets the glove on it. We'll cover it up for the whistle with 2.15 to go here in the first period. We'll see that ref in the tent once again from Macy Persons. She holds up with the puck to avoid the pioneer player there and freely comes up the side of the net and tries to wrap it around. Tied up on the wall. Pioneers get it. Lose it to the Astros. Rachel Saunders. Pioneers send it below. Saunders with it now. She sends it out in front. There was no one there. It allows the Pioneers to come back the other way now. Kennedy Goss dumps it down. Goss, first one to the puck. She gets it below the goal line. Tries to get it over in front. Shot in on it. Nice save made there from Drover. Back the other way. Now it's Rachel Saunders again. Saunders with the shot. 
right in on Hillier and an easy save for her with no traffic in front. A minute 30 to two to go now in the first period and we're still scoreless. Pioneers come back the other way. Gets intercepted and sent out into the neutral zone by the Astros. Dumped down the wall. Poked ahead. Jenna Snow sends it down deep. In the corner. Molly Gill carrying it back now. Gill plays it to the far side. Turned over. Back the other way from the Astros now. With it was number 10, Leah Shepard, and she just goes right on over top of Hillier. Net off its moorings. Shepard never held up. There's going to be no penalty on the play. I'm not sure why not. You have to make somewhat of an attempt to avoid the goaltender to not get a goaltender interference penalty. But the official not calling it. 52 seconds left now. Play back underway. Pioneers rim it around the boards. Okay, to our viewers in Cornerbrook, our channel is going to switch over shortly now where you'll see Cornerbrook and Discovery as their game starts to get underway. For you guys here at St. John's locally, uh, you will continue to tune into this game. It's just the Cornerbrook channel that's going to switch over to that game. Kept in on the blue line by the Pioneers. Gill with it. She gets it back below the goal line. Still on her stick. Sends it over towards the goaltender. It bounces. And that'll do it for the first period. After one period of play, we are scoreless here between the Astros and the Pioneers. Shots 12-9 in favor of the Astros. We'll be back after a brief intermission with second period coverage of the semifinal game. Underway here now for the second period. Astros win the opening draw. They send it into the Pioneers bench. It's reversed. Uh, excuse me, into the Pioneers end. It's reversed and sent back the opposite way to the far corner now. Molly Gill with it on her stick sends it down low for Queen Elizabeth. Kept in. Over in front, it's, oh my goodness, that was a bouncing puck, I thought it was in. I thought it was a deflection off Kennedy Goss, but it wasn't. Sent back now, the Astros. 
Coming up the ice. Number two. Not sure who that is. She's not on my program here. Could be Kaylee. No, not Kaylee Williams. She's the other goaltender. So I do apologize. Number two, the Astros. Don't have her name here on my program. Oh, it's Peyton Porter. Here we go. We just found another lineup card here with her name on it. So my apologies to Peyton. Back the other way comes the Astros now. With it is Carrie Butler. Butler from a shot at the top of the circle and hits the crossbar. Pioneers back the other way. It's in over the line. Megan Rustin with a shot right in on net. Save made by Drover. 8.32 to go here in the second period. We'll have a replay of that shot through now that we just saw to hit the crossbar. No trouble to hear the, the ding. Here's the other angle from it. Back to the point. Pioneers send it down low. Collecting it there, Molly Gill. Gill with a shot over towards the goal. Doesn't go on the goaltender. Carrying out into the neutral zone now. Astros are offside. Turn over again. The Astros get it back. That's Jenna Snow with it now. Snow going in. Fires it high over the net. Astros fighting for possession. It's the Pioneers who come away with it. Grace Nolan. Gets it out into the neutral zone. She sends it into the zone. Astros go D to D. Edmonds to Dawson. Dawson puts it up ahead now onto the stick of Aaliyah Shepard. Shepard with a little move there. Backhand opportunity. The blocker save made by Hillier. Shepard loses it. Comes back to the point. Pioneers carry it out. On the back check there from Aaliyah Drover. Astros get it back. In the zone it is. Carried out again by the Pioneers through the neutral zone. Going up with it, it's Megan Rustin. Rustin leaves it there for Anna Pike. Pike loses it. Able to be kept in by Maddie Dunn, but no, it's not kept in. The linesman says it's offside. 7.04 to go here in the second. Gonna welcome Nicholas Hillier into the broadcast booth with me here now. Nick, welcome this morning. Thank you very much, Chris. I hope you're having as lovely of a morning as I am. What can you not love about this? We've got some great women's hockey on the go, then we're going to have some great men's hockey. It's Championship Sunday, and my Leafs won last night. And the Leafs won, yes, an exciting finish it was for the Toronto Maple Leafs. With it here now for the Astros. She plays it to the D. Chelsea Crane gets it into the zone. Astros racing for it. Going to fight for the possession on the wall. Pioneers come away with it. Ackerman pressuring Deanne Wallace. Back the other way. It's Walsh. Leaves it there, turned over by the Astros. One of the players go down. She fell over the stick. Referee's arm is up. It's going to be a penalty against Ascension. Head contact will be the call. So Beth Edmonds of the Ascension Astros He's going to go to the penalty box for head contact. The first penalty of this game is going to be a two-minute minor. So the Pioneers will go on the power play. As you said, Chris, the first penalty of this game so far, and it's been a great back and forth, very evenly matched so far. And I think I'm, uh, Queen Elizabeth Pioneers are going to really try uh, and crash the net today, make sure that they can get one pass the Ascension goal from Broken up play there from the Astros. Coming back the other way with it now. Jenna Snow. Snow, she'll get it over for you, Leah Shepard. Shot just high over the net. What a sh short-handed opportunity there for the Ascension Astros. Carried it back the other way. Now it's Molly Gill. Gill will take it wide. She holds up in the corner. Gets it back. Plays it back to the point for Deanne Walls. Shot there. It's steered to the corner. Ascension clears it out. Racing back for it now, Jenna Snow. Trying to rush up for, for Ascension. 
Pioneers get it out in the neutral zone. Sent back the opposite way by Carrie Butler. Sengen had to touch up there as they were on the change, so they needed to come over the blue line again. Down low, the Pioneers haven't been low their own net. Less than a minute left on the power play. In the zone, backhanded out by Ascension. Gill will play it over for Tiana Lambert. Lambert loses it. Lambert gets knocked down by Megan Rustin in the neutral zone and allows the Astros to collect it. Aaliyah Drover with it. Drover sends it down around. Kennedy Goss with it. Goss below the goal. She plays it up. Goss has it. Shot in towards net. Steer to the side by the pads. The Brooklyn Drover into the corner. Astros put it back to the point for the Pioneers. Goes to the stick of the Astros. A bouncing puck comes out in the neutral zone. She sends it in low again. Great effort there on the penalty kill by the Ascension Astros. Chris, I think that one could not, the only way that that one could have went worse for the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers would have been if they gave up that shorthanded goal. There was no shortage of opportunities there for Ascension. Is Queen Elizabeth going to control the play now in the zone? Katie Rustin keeps it in along the wall, puts it down in the corner. Now chasing after that is Grace Nolan. Turns it over now to the Astros. They come back up into neutral ice. With it now, Anna Haley. It goes out into the play here up in the stands. So one lucky fan, you're gonna have a nice souvenir, these nice uh, bucks that they have done up for the tournament with the Royal Newfoundland Regiment and the tournament logo on them. Absolutely, and you can head out to the merchandise table. Hoodies, t-shirts, hats, and you can buy these pucks. Absolutely beautiful pucks. That person there saved a few bucks, and there you go. There you go. Played in now. Ascension with it in their own zone. Plays it up into the neutral zone. Aliyah Drover. She gets it in the Pioneers' end. She sends it over. It goes to the stick of Molly Gill. Intercepted there by Jenna Snow. Snow sends it down low. And a Penny with it. Penny plays it over for Megan Rustin. Rustin is taken down. Sent in again by Ascension. Down low it is. Around the boards now. Rustin gets it out. Ahead to Gill. Gill will play it over for Tiana Lambert. But she's deemed offside. Not a lot of time left here in the second. Is we still have double zeros on the board. Going to be interesting to see. Line's been doing right thing there, uh, you know. Uh, ignoring the coach there as he's a little bit upset but you, you can't back over the line and take the puck with you that's an easy offside call there and a great job done by the young official ascension back the other way now trying to get through the d and a great job there as hillier is out covers it up and the d separating the astros from the puck great effort there by the pioneers to try and keep that puck Away from the the Both teams playing a really strong game so far. I mean, shots are, are within one, 15, 14. You know, Ascension with the lead by one, that one shot there put them up by it. But this is a very tight game, and I think it's going to stay that way right through to the end. Yeah, both the ladies, you know, the ladies' teams have had some good opportunities either way, but both goaltenders, uh, Brooklyn Drover, Sarah Hillier, uh, playing a great game between the pipes for their respective teams. The Ascension fans a little upset that there was no call there in the corner, screaming uh, out at the uh, at the official. Chris, I got uh, a few words about that. It's too early for that. 
Nice opportunity here, the rebound, it just goes off the side post. My goodness, we'll have another look at that at the next stoppage there. Uh, but what an opportunity there from Queen Elizabeth. Sent back the other way, Astros. Not sure where the puck ended up to. There it is. And here's that replay, Nicholas. Yeah, Chris, we'll have a look at the Rogers TV replay on that one. They're a nice pad save, but waiting on the back door. That one just ends up off the side of the post. I mean, for Kennedy Goss, that was a great opportunity there to put her team up, team up by one. But ultimately, I think for Brooklyn Drover, it was great for her that that one went off the iron and not past her. Astros get it in the zone. They send it down deep. That's by Peyton Porter. Collecting it there was Deanne Walls for the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. Guild will get it over now. And Megan Rustin, her shot is blocked. Gill able to help Rustin now. Centering opportunity, no one there. Stepping in now, Tiana Lamber. Back with a the shot there was Kennedy Goss. Didn't get through to the goaltender. Goss has it in the corner. She plays it down low. Below the goal, sent to the opposite corner now. Allie P Ackerman, excuse me, ahead for Beth Edmonds. Edmonds going in, tied up by the D. A shot there from Beth Edmonds. Loose puck here now. Oh my goodness, that was in the crease. And Molly Gill sends it high down the ice. Icing is waved off. Ali Ackerman with it now for Ascension. Going wide, backhand opportunity, intercepted. Molly Gill has it for Queen Elizabeth now. Gill carrying it through the neutral zone. In over the line. She tried to drop it, almost taken down, gets it back in the corner. Molly Gill on the side of the net. Rustin, back to Gill. Ahead now, a shot there. From Tiana Lambert, and that's going to do it for the second period, folks. An exciting finish to this second period with opportunities either way. But once again, both goaltenders standing very tall between the net. Shots after two periods. 18-17 now in favor of the Pioneers. We'll be back after a quick uh, one-minute intermission with the call for the third period. underway here for the third now. Played ahead in the neutral zone. Ascension looking for possession. They send it down deep. That's off the stick of Rachel Saunders. Pioneers with it. Intercepted. Picking it up now is Aaliyah Shepard. Leaves it for Jenna Snow. Shot right in on net. 
And a save made by Hillier. Sarah Hillier really standing on her head so far today. The Ascension Astros have really put some great shots on net. Uh, creating a lot of great opportunities for them. Making Hillier work to keep the score at zero for the Astros uh, as the faceoff going to come to her glove side. Underway here, it's the Ascension Astros winning the draw. Sent down low by Chelsea Crane around the boards, picking it up down low. Aliyah Drover, a shot near on the side from Jenna Snow, and she gets it by Hillier. I believe that one might have been batted out of midair. We're going to have a look now in a moment at a Rogers TV replay, but Jenna Snow right now, 30 seconds into the third. Puts the Ascension Astros. Here comes the Rogers TV replay. Batted out of mid-air. Wow. wow. What a goal by Snow. Good hand-eye coordination here this morning. I got to say, that's probably one of the better goals we've seen in the female division so far this week. And I don't think it could have come at a better time for these Astros. So, goaltender fixing her equipment there. In the neutral zone now. You can already tell after this, after that goal, you know, from the faceoff, it just intensified a little bit. Down low, racing to it. Chelsea Crane for the Astros. She sends it around the boards. Kept in by Maddie Dunn. No, it's not. It's sent out. Racing back now, Rachel Saunders of the Astros. She sends it down low. Pioneers get it back. It's ahead now. Maggie Bussey ahead to Megan Rustin. In the zone. Down low. Chelsea Crane has it. Takes a little bump from Rustin. Astros get it back. Chipped out in the neutral zone by Ackerman and sent back in by Queen Elizabeth. To the far side now. On the stick of Katie Tippett. They're tied up in front. Beth Edmonds sends it in to the Pioneers end. Deanne Walls with it. Receiving pressure from Ackerman. In the neutral zone. As the Astros touch it, there's going to be a penalty. Body checking will be the call. Big loss here for the Astros. Allie Ackerman going to sit for two or less. Definite call there on the body, uh, the body checking uh, in the corner. She was hacking and poking and hooking away uh, at uh, Deneen Walsh of the Pioneers. Nonetheless, uh, Pioneers now going to their second power play of the game, looking to tie this one up at one apiece. They win the draw, quickly steered across the crease. Kept in here. Astros get a stick on it, send it out into the zone. Ahead now on the blue line, Rustin. Turned over, back the other way. Now comes Jenna Snow, the Astros. She dumps it right in on Hillier. She sees it easily. Stepping up, Gill able to get a stick on it, send it to the point. On the stick of Kennedy Goss now. Kennedy Goss. And Jenna Snow gets a stick on it. Off the boards. Clearing it all the way down to the Pioneer's end. Time ticking away here. 7.14 to go in the game. Pioneers. Get it out into the zone. Turned over again and set back down by Ascension. Gill now through the neutral zone. Rustin pressuring Dawson. Off the glass. Kept in by Gill. She retrieves it on the blue line. Drops it there for Kennedy Goss. Back to Gill. Molly Gill with it on the wall now. 
It's poke check there by number 15, Aaliyah Drover, sent out into the neutral zone. Kennedy Goss got it there. Goss in over the blue line, loses it to Beth Edmonds, and she sends it back down to the Pioneers' end. Gill gets it in her own zone. Play gets intercepted. Goss tries to play it up to Gill. It gets intercepted there by Aaliyah Drover. Sent down into the Pioneers' end. Back at even strength. Pioneers with it now. Beth Edmonds collects it back for Ascension. Ahead, she tried to put it up to Aaliyah Shepard. She lost it. So it'll be icing called against the Astros with 5.42 to go here in the third period. Face-off coming all the way back in their end, and they lead this one by a score of 1-0. I want to talk about one player with the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers who's really been a difference maker for them, but hasn't been able to find anything today. She's been very prominent all tournament, and that's number eight, Molly Gill. Gill has been playing a great game today, and we've seen a great tournament from her. The Pioneers and their coaching staff and fans are going to be looking to her to generate some offense. A very good athlete. Yes, she is, Nicholas. Sent back down now by Katie Rustin to the Astros' end. Astros able to get it out. They carry it up ice. That's on the stick of Jessica Bursey. She dumps it in right in on the goaltender. And Hill, you're not going to waste any time. She will cover it up and take the whistle. Smart play there by Hillier as the Ascension uh, attackers were very close to the net there. She wanted to get that covered up, give her team a chance. Uh, now as the face-off comes to her blocker side. On the wall, high sticked by Queen Elizabeth. The officials didn't see it. They come back the other way. Down low now, Marissa Dawson sends it around the boards to the stick of Rachel Saunders. Back down with the Astros. It's ahead for Ackerman. Ackerman sends it over. Abby Neal couldn't get to it in time. It's into the corner. Ackerman races to it. Pioneer sends it to the opposite corner. Kept alive there by Julia Edmonds. Sent out into the neutral zone for the Pioneers now. They're racing forward. Ascension gets it, turns it over, brings it back the other way now. It's Marissa Dawson with it. Dawson trying to get by one, gets by two, didn't get the shot off. Steers it to the far side. Shot from the wall, sends it down into the corner. Back to the point. A bouncing puck bounces over Anna Penny's stick. Rusted now on the wall. Gill gets it back for the Pioneer. She sends it to the far side. Kennedy Goss couldn't handle it. It's the Pioneers with it. Beth Edmonds chips it off the boards, collects it in the neutral zone, carries it in over the line. From the circles, she shoots it. It gets blocked there from Anna Haley. Beth Edmonds with it back now. Shot right into the glove of Hillier for the whistle. 3.56 to go in the third period. Ascension trying to get Hillier back in here now. Trying to get her knocked off. Nine minutes left in the second over on the other rink between Cornerbrook and Discovery. 1-1 the score over there. Very tight game, uh, much like over here. Almost an opportunity there for Ascension, but Pioneers carries it to the wall. Sent out into the neutral zone off the stick of Kennedy Goss. Astros play it ahead. They touch up. Allie Ackerman. It bounces over her stick. Ascension with it now. That's Beth Edmonds battling for the possession. It's carried out into the neutral zone by Tiana Lambert. It's sent back to the stick of an Astros player now. Kaylee Flynn plays ahead. Intercepted there by Kennedy Goss. Sent back out into the neutral zone now. Pioneers with it. Katie Rustin gets it in over the line, sent back the opposite way. It gets by. Hillier is out to play the puck, but no, she says, I'm going to cover it up. I'm taking that whistle. 3.05 to go here now in the third period. Still 1-0 in favor of the Ascension Astros. Sarah Hillier playing a great game today. The faceoff. So we're actually going to have a timeout here, Chris. Timeout called by Queen Elizabeth, but... 
the Pioneers are really trying to get something going here. They're, they're struggling to get it out of their own zone, and when, they, when it comes back in their zone, they can't get it out. They can't. Hillier's forced to almost cover everything up and go back to a face-off, and, and I feel like we're in this repeating cycle, and I think the Astros are very happy with that right now. They want to keep the Pioneers in that cycle where they're forced to play defense rather than offense with under four minutes to go here now. Timeout expires. 3.05, the exact time on the clock. 3.05, so still lots of time for anyone to score a goal here. In yesterday's uh, men's game between the Concords and Eagles in quarterfinal action, there were, I think there were three goals in the span of 2.35. This could very well end up at a three to one game for somebody. Back underway here we are. So gosh, she's waved out from the face off. Gill, excuse me, it was. Goss comes in to take it. My apologies. Out in the neutral zone now. Ascension collects it. Macy Parsons sends it down low into the Pioneers end. They try to reverse it. Leaves it there for Gill. Ahead now for Megan Rustin. Rustin carries it in over the line. She gets separated from the pockets into the corner. Sent out in front. It allows Chelsea Crane of the Astros to come back the other way with it. She's got the red. She dumps it down deep. Racing in the opposite way into the corner as Aaliyah Drover. In the corner, Macy Parsons sends it to the wall. Pressured there by Gill. It comes out into the neutral zone. Racing back now, it's Jenna Snow. Snow, she's hooked down. The referee's arm is up. She got the shot off, so it was just going to be a hooking penalty. It never met the criteria for the penalty shot, so just going to be a penalty. That's, that's a penalty Queen Elizabeth does not want to take. It's going to be Kennedy Goss going to sit for two minutes or less. 2.06 left on the clock. Ascension must be salivating at this opportunity. We're going to have another look at that on a Rogers TV replay. Came in, and the hook she's brought down there. Really not sure why they did that. The goaltender's been playing well, and there was already a defender in the shooting lane. Well, still an opportunity. An opportunity you don't want to give away. Ackerman goes down in the corner. Another penalty going to go to the Pioneers here now. And it's going against Anna Penny as she trips Allie Ackerman. I think that that's going to be pretty well it for these Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. Minute and 45, pretty well the rest of the game they're gonna be playing shorthanded. All but six seconds of that will be five on three. Astros win the draw. Quickly played back to the point. Sent down for Beth Edmonds. She'll send it to the far point. A shot there from Carrie Butler. Hillier saves it. Loose puck on the side now. Molly Gill racing for it. She fires it up, it comes to the blue line, sent down low again by Carrie Butler. Clearing attempt there, gets knocked down by the Astros. Down low, Ackerman has it. She plays it to Marissa Dawson. Back to the top for Chelsea Crane. Down to the corner for Dawson. Marissa Dawson, her shot gets intercepted by Molly Gill. Dawson gets it back, she plays it to the other side for Ackerman. To the top there for Carrie Butler. Her shot right in on net, and a pad save made by Hillier. Dawson gets it back. She sends it to the opposite corner. Racing forward is Allie Ackerman for the Astros. Ackerman sends it down low. Dawson comes down to support her. Back to Ackerman. To the point now for Carrie Butler. A shot right in there. The loose puck is there. Gill not holds her. Shot. No, it hits the crossbar. My goodness. Molly Gill gets by now. Gill going up. As a pioneer is down, there's going to be a penalty against the Astros. A shot by Gill off the blocker of Drover. They finally touch it. The referee blows the play down. Cross checking will be the call. Beth Edmonds to the box. 
36.5 seconds to go. It's gonna be some four on three action. So a lot of room here. The face-offs coming inside the ascension zone. Can the Pioneers tie this up and force an overtime period? Deanne Walsh towards the net, it's loose in front, she scores! Megan Rustin collects the rebound in front to the goaltender, taps it home, we're all tied at one! The officials are having a conversation about this now. As the net is off on one side. So we're gonna have a replay of that here now. We look, the net is off. There's go there should be no goal on the play as the net was off before the puck crossed the line. We just saw it on the replay. We're gonna wait for the officials to talk about it here, but according to our angle on the replay, oh my goodness, they called it a goal. Oh my. Oh my. So. We're tied up at one. 30 seconds remaining. Still four on three here. Ascensions win the draw. Crane up for Aaliyah Shepard. Shepard going in. Shepard gets by the defender, loses it. She gets it back. Shepard with a move there. Pioneers coming back the other way. It's Megan Rustin. Interfere with that center. Going to be another penalty going against the Ascension Astros now. Oh my God. What a sequence of events here. Eleven seconds to go. It's going to be three on three. And that's how it looks like we'll start this overtime period, unless there's going to be a goal here in the last eleven seconds. Gill wins the draw. Defense not able to keep it in. It comes out into the neutral zone on the stick of Deanna Walls. Now shot in on net, steered aside by the pads of Drover. Down in the corner, and that will do it. We are headed to overtime in this semi-final game. A crazy sequence of events here in the last minute of play, I'll say. Gonna be a five minute. Well, it will be a, what's supposed to be a three on three overtime. Will probably be a four on three. as we have a quick intermission here now, and then we'll get things other underway for overtime. Well, well, well. A crazy sequence of events here. Just unfolded in the last part of this game. It's been an evenly matched game all, all the way through. You know, some, some great saves from both goaltenders, some great plays from, from the players on each respective bench. But my God, I didn't see this getting tied up late. And what a roar from the crowd here as Queen Elizabeth put that puck behind the goaltender.
about to get underway here now for overtime. A five minute overtime period. It's going to be a four on three here. Then it's going to be five on three. I think. Queen Elizabeth wins the draw with it now. Deanna Walls. Plays it ahead, intercepted there by the Astros. Carried in by Kennedy Goss. Gets it over, intercepted there. Sent out into the neutral zone. Off the stick of Jenna Snow. Molly Gill has it in neutral ice. Gill in over the line. Carrying it down the wall. Sends it over. Oh my, Kennedy Goss just fanned on the shot. Gill with it now. Goss loses it in the corner, sent back to the point. Tiana Lambert with a shot right over in front and it's just got steered short of the net. Back to the point, Lambert with another point shot, it's in! Lambert's point shot gets tipped by Megan Rustin, pass, Drover. The Queen Elizabeth Pioneers are off to the finals. My goodness, what a tip shot. And we'll have a replay of that here now. The shot, and Rustin just gets her stick out and deflects it over the shoulder of Brooklyn Drover into the back of the net to give the Pioneers a 2-1 victory here this morning. What a game, folks, what a game. Pioneers, they're on their respective blue line now, and the Astros having a conversation. But dear players, the girls will line up and shake hands. And they'll shake the hands of the officials and the Royal Newfoundland Regiment members that are present here this morning. So your three stars of the game now. The third star from the Ascension Astros, Brooklyn Drover, the goaltender. The second star, Sarah Hillier, the opposing goaltender for Queen Elizabeth. And your first star, Katie Rustin, number four of the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. Players now on their respective blue lines, waiting for the call for the players of the game, presented by members of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment here this morning. An update from the opposing side here now, rink A. Between Player of the Corner game Brooke for Ascension, number seven, it's Jenna still Snow. still one, one in the second intermission there now. So the players of the game from the Ascension Astros, number seven, Jenna Snow. Great sportsmanship you see here from the girls as they collect their player of the game awards, going over and tapping the hands of the opposing team. Player of the game for QE, number 15, Tiana Lambert. Player of the game for Queen Elizabeth, number 15, Tiana Lambert. She was the one who had that point shot there. That got tipped in by Megan Rustin. She'll go by and tap the hands of the Ascension Astros players. We're going to throw it down to ice level to Nicholas Hillier. He's going to be standing by with, with one of the uh, Pioneers players. And down to you, Nick. 
Okay, just another moment here now, and we'll be down to Nick. So that's going to do it for me. Nick is going to close this one out down below, and I'll be back later this morning with a call for the next high school game between the O'Donnell Patriots and the Holy Spirit Falcons. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Down to you, Nick. Thank you, Chris. I'm here with Megan Rustin, the overtime winning goal scorer for the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. You got a bit of an audience in front of you for this one, but uh, how did that one feel coming off uh, off the stick on the tipping in? Oh, it felt awesome. I can't believe we pulled it off, and it was hard going there for a bit, but we won, we did it. Now, the comeback, obviously, we saw it yesterday in the men's division with Stephenville that sent them to the semis. This one sends you to the finals. What do you think it means for your teammates? Uh, I think it means a lot to them. And I, to play another game today in the finals to win Beaumont Hamill for the first time and for the girls league two. All new for the girls, so. Best select this afternoon. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Back up to you and that's actually gonna do it for this one. We're gonna be back now for the game between the O'Donnell Patriots and the Holy Spirit Falcons. Stay tuned folks. On behalf of Chris Ryan, the entire Rogers TV crew, Thank you for tuning in. Don't go anywhere.
think she'll be here by herself, but she understands. I'm really gonna miss home. Friday morning. How's your mom doing? She's fine. It's hard knowing she'll be here by herself, but she understands. I'm really gonna miss home.
Yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Rogers TV live coverage of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. My name is Nicholas Hillier. I'm here with my broadcast partner, Chris Ryan, who will have the call for today's game between the Holy Spirit High Falcons, the host of this tournament, and the O'Donnell Patriots, the defending champions. Holy Spirit looking for their first finals berth, while the O'Donnell Patriots looking for their third straight Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup. Now, we're going to have a quick second. I believe we're going to go to the playoff bracket. Before we mention that, Stephenville is going to be taking on Gander over on rink A momentarily. You'll have the call over here. I'm going to leave you alone. You're grown, man. You can do it. <laughs> and I'm going to head on over there and have the call over on rink A. If our viewers would like to watch that over in rink A, you can tune in on Rogers TV. Dot com select Cornerbrook uh, on the side and you will find the stream for that so we're gonna have a look now at the playoff bracket Chris as you see the trail of the caribou the Holy Spirit Falcons four to two and seven to two their wins get them here against the defending champions it's the O'Donnell Patriots four to one and three to one against the Gonzaga Vikings and the Prince of Wales Collegiate Cavaliers. Uh, yes, so uh, in our quarterfinal matchups, uh, we saw Gander coming out on top of Exploits Valley with a 4-2 victory, while Stephenville, a couple of upsets in this tournament already. Earlier in the morning, they knocked out Holy Herd. Uh, and now, then last night, they knocked out the Holy Trinity Tigers in overtime with 28 seconds left. Liam Dutcher tied the game up at one apiece, forced overtime. I think with about a minute 38 left, scored the goal, got it by the goaltender, and give his team the victory. Uh, a player to watch, no doubt, as you head over to your game with Stephenville is going to be uh, Dutcher. Uh, but, you know, their goaltender... Noah Bellavo, he's the guy that we've been talking about all week. He's the guy that's giving that team the fighting chance because he's facing a lot of rubber. Now, we're going to come back here to this rink. O'Donnell, a lot of pressure to go for the first ever three-peat. They're one of three teams who have ever won this tournament. The Patriots, the Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies, and the Ascension Astros, last two going to O'Donnell. What do you think the mindset is of the O'Donnell players coming into this game? Well, I guess as you get, especially to this round, Nicholas, you know, they know that the pressure is on them. You know, they, they want to be able to, as you said, get that three-peat for their club. But knowing and seeing some of the players on that roster, you have to be mindful. You can't go into it all uh, too overconfident. The Holy Spirit Falcons coming off a couple of big wins, a huge one last night against their arch rivals, the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers, defeating them 7-2 to two to get into the semifinals. So you're going to see both clubs a little bit rested up from, from yesterday evening's games. They're going to come in hot and heavy. They're, I'm sure there's going to be hits, but I think it's probably going to come down to what the goaltending is going to be because there's much talent on either side, both forward and defense. Well, both teams, great goaltending so far this tournament, but both teams have also put up a lot of goals, and I believe we have some footage of a couple players. We're going to be looking at... Uh, number eight from the Holy Spirit Falcons. That's going to be Michael Skinner, somebody who a lot of people have noticed. Skinner, quietly good at the start, but really producing on the scoreboard over the past couple games. What's it like having Skinner on the ice, and what's he going to bring to this game? Well, you know, you look at that that, that top line that Holy Spirit has between Skinner, uh, Farrell, and Villanueva. They've been lethal out there. They've been dangerous. They, they've scored some beautiful goals in front. You know, they, they, carry, they carry their team. They carry the energy. Uh, but as I said, you know, you've got to watch them. On the opposite end for, for O'Donnell, you got guys like Noah King, Liam Noble. These guys, uh, they can put up points as well. So with, with threats on either end, it, it's going to come down to how do you shut it down and do you get the secondary scoring from your top, uh, from your bottom six. So that's, that, I think that's where it's going to come into play here this morning. Now we look at that secondary scoring, but O'Donnell producing a lot from their top line, and we're going to have a look at O'Donnell's number 13, Liam Noble. Noble, one of the top scorers in this tournament. You see him there warming up on your screen. A rocket of a shot from the face-off dot. What are we expecting from him today? 
I think you're going to get what you've seen from him all week, and you're going to get the end-to-end -end, uh, carried action. Uh, once he's in the zone, you you got to be aware for where he's to in the zone and, and, and what he can do with that puck because he can find it back into the net, no doubt about it. Now, the O'Donnell Patriots coming off of a, a tighter game. The Prince of Wales Collegiate Cavaliers gave them a really good race yesterday. It was 1-0 Cavaliers heading into the third. Early on, O'Donnell tied it up. They pushed in that third period. Now, for Holy Spirit, they're coming off of a dominant win. How's that going to impact this game, having one team who fought really hard last night to get to where they are right now versus the other team who put a lot on the board and eventually were able to put it in cruise control? Again, it's going to be tough, you know. It's going to be in the mindset of these young players and how they reset themselves going into the, the game. Uh, as you said, you know, a tight one for O'Donnell. So they had to fight for where they got to, where Holy Spirit was able to maybe preserve some of their energy last night, set it into uh, cruise control, and get here tonight. Or this morning, excuse me. Now, both teams taking to the ice now. Puck drop supposed to be at 10 o'clock, a little delayed as the women's game right before this. The Queen Elizabeth Pioneers came back very similar to how we saw Stephenville win yesterday. They won, put a goal on the board to tie it up with 28, about 30 seconds left. Then in overtime, Megan Rustin, the winning goal to put the Pioneers in the finals. Both teams going to line up for the anthems now as we're going to take it down to ice level. Chris with the call today. I think you're going to have fun with this game. I think so too, Nicholas. It should be a good one, folks. High Tech Communications, Carpenter Mill, right call. Once again, folks, about to get underway here now. This semifinal game between the Holy Spirit Falcons and the O'Donnell Patriots. The first time these two teams have met in the tournament so far. One last words of encouragement in front of the Falcons players for their team. And it's the line we expected to see starting for them. It's Farrell, Skinner, Villanueva on the other side. It's King, O'Brien, and Noble.
Villanueva ends the op uh, wins the opening draw. O'Brien quickly in with a shot. Pat, their glove save made there by Turpin. A quick opportunity from O'Donnell just two or uh, nine seconds into this opening period. <laughs> Testing goaltender Jack Turpin early. Avery plays it around the boards, picked up on the half wall and chipped out. Well, almost chipped out by Farrell. Evan Cross keeps it in on the blue line. Sent down low to O'Brien. Sent back to the point. The shot there, gets blocked. Finds his way down below the goal. Noble with it, plays it up top. Cross with a shot right in, misses on the far side. Kept alive there by Nate Nolan. King down low to O'Brien. Centering opportunity, Noble couldn't get the shot off. Sent out into the neutral ice by Skinner. Ahead now, Nate Nolan has it in. Farrell, down below, gets it over for Caden Snow to the neutral zone to Skinner. Skinner chips it off the boards, in the zone, carried in by Villanueva now. Villanueva, centering opportunity there for Farrell, didn't go the way they wanted it. O'Donnell, not able to clear it out of the zone. It comes out now, King to O'Brien. O'Brien, he's got Smith with, a, or Stamp, excuse me. Sent ahead up to Drew Dillon, drops it for Roach Green. Luke Roach Green sends it down into the corner. A bump down low. Drew Dillon loses it. It allows Payne to clear it out into the neutral zone. Fanned on the shot. Roach Green goes down. So it's going to be an O'Donnell power play, or excuse me, penalty kill put, put to work here. A minute 46 into the period as Jacob Payne will sit for two minutes or less on a tripping call. The goaltender for the Patriots, number 31, Eric Haas. He hasn't seen any rubber directed towards him yet this morning. Villanueva, Farrell and Skinner up front. Dobbin and Harry Smith on the back end. Finley Dobbin. Get to Skinner at the top of the circle, gets it over to Farrell. And it's sent out to the neutral zone by Liam Noble. Finley Dobbin with it now. He'll look to work it up. Gets it over the red and dumps it down deep. Picking it up on the far side, Michael Skinner. He chips it to the corner. Villanueva with it. Down low, turns to avoid the player. Lawler there. Skinner plays it back up top to Harry Smith. Smith to Dobbin. Dobbin with it, walking towards the middle. Poked out by Noble. Finley Dobbin there had to rush to collect it in the neutral zone, sent to the far side. Skinner couldn't get to it in time. Brady Lawler goes D to D. Jack Chafe, clearing attempt unsuccessful, knocked down by Farrell. Farrell with it now, tried to get it over. Intercepted by Chafe and sent all the way down. Noble racing out for it. Turpin had to come out and play the puck. A bouncing puck doesn't clear the line. It gets out now. Harry Smith with it. Smith racing up in over the line. With it from the circle. Gets it over for Farrell. It hits his skates. Villanueva with a shot. Gets blocked in front. Goes to the corner. Back out now. It's Noble going in. Noble on a break. Shot off the post. Liam Noble with a shorthanded opportunity there. Fires it off the far post. Up into the mesh for the whistle. 11.51 to go in the first and 37 seconds left on the man advantage for the Falcons. Be a neutral zone faceoff. Falcons win it. Avery over for Snow. Snow to Drew Dillon. Dillon through the neutral zone now will carry it up. He's got blue. Holds up on the wall. Looking for the pass. He'll give it to Snow on the blue line. Snow goes D to D for Avery. Back to Snow. Snow wires and fires it off the shins of Mole. With it now to Snow. Snow couldn't get the shot there. He gives it to Avery over in a circle. His shot towards. Play intercepted. Back the other way. Now it comes Andrew Stamp for the O'Donnell Patriots. Stamp in before the puck. He's offside. They have to touch up. Allows the Falcons to turn it back to neutral zone territory. It's dumped in. Stamp collects it. We're back at even strength. 
Andrew Stamp with it, high in the air. Knocked down, in the neutral zone. Payne loses it, Dillon has it back. Drew Dillon gets red, dumps it in. Nate Nolan lays it around to Alex Wood now on the wall. Wood with a little move, over for Payne. Payne dumps it down deep, racing in for the snow to Payne. Payne sends it down low. Collision at the blue line. It comes out in the neutral zone. Alex Wood has it. He chips it down to the Falcons' territory. Coffin plays it around the boards. Dylan stepping out is Warren now. Warren has it for the Falcons. He rims it around the boards. It's kept in. Sec sent back down low. Players collide in the corner, going down, working to get the puck loose. Falcons do. Chase King racing up. Gets it up to Logan Burt. They collide down in the corner. Loose puck. King fires it up there. There was no one there for it, though. Liam Noble has it now. He'll cycle down around the net. Looking to work some speed up. Does so through the neutral zone. He's got the blue line. Noble with a shot from the wall. Save made there by Turpin off the back wall. It comes out in front. Centering there goes up top. Chafe with a shot, fires it over the net. Noble gets it back, plays it off the wall for Cross up top. Back to Noble, loses it. Coffin, clearing attempt, works for him this time, but it goes for icing as the whistle goes. 9.25 to play in the first. Shots here now are 4-2 in favor of the Patriots. Still, still a scoreless game here, but we'll have another look at that crossbar. Liam Noble hit shorthanded there a little while ago. King wins it. Back to Noble. He moves to the top of the circle. Villanueva, a bouncing puck, not able to clear it. Connolly sends it out into the neutral zone. Noah King for Liam Noble. Noble lays it down low for Ben O'Brien. He holds it at the bottom of the circle, fires it. It goes off the side of the net. Finley Dobbin with it now. Dobbin plays it to Michael Skinner on the wall. Skinner ahead of the neutral zone, up for Villanueva. He's in over the blue. Holding with patience, fires it in, and Haas with a glove save. Some patience there for the, with the Falcons as they get in the zone. Wanting to make that perfect shot. But with no traffic in front, Eric Haas able to see the shot all the way through. O'Donnell wins the draw. Fired around the boards by Jack Chafe. It'll be icing, though. So, no, icing gets waved off. Connolly got the puck. Pressured there now by Jake Budgel. Budgel separates him from the puck. Finley Dobbin collects it below the goal. Dobbin. With it now, holds, fires it up at center. Skinner carries it in over the line as Villanueva is offside. 8.28 to go. Patriots win the draw again. Budgel plays it back to the D. Chafe with it. Ahead. Wood able to get it in the zone. Sent back out by Avery. Drew Dillon with it now. Avoids the hit. Gets it over for Keynes. Drew Keynes sends it down low to the O'Donnell end. Chafe collects it behind the net. Around the boards. Wood takes a bump. Players will battle for the possession of the puck on the wall. It comes loose. Lawler down low, turns to avoid Keynes. Lawler chips the puck to the corner. Carried out in front. O'Donnell with it now, off the glass and out. Drew Avery receiving pressure there from Alex Wood. Sends it up the wall. It's collected by Andrew Stamp. He'll carry it down low. Stamp receiving pressure there from Keynes. He gets it, fires it up the wall, but it comes to the point there for Andrews. A bouncing puck in front of the goaltender. And Turpin sees it through and will cover it up for the whistle with 7.27 to go here in the first. We're still scoreless. Changes to both benches now. 
As some fresh legs will come on for either side. O'Donnell wins the draw. The pain, he loses it. Snow gets it back. Phil Snow with it now for the Patriots. Snow receiving a couple of bumps here. Gets it back. Mole from the top of the circle fires it towards, and it gets blocked. Carried out in the neutral zone now. O'Donnell turning it the other way. Chase King fires it in, but is offside. 7.06 to go. Donnell, get it in their zone. They go D to D with the pass, send it up into the neutral zone. Chip down to the Falcons territory. Warren sends it out over the blue line. Pilgrim touches it, offside, they will be this time. 6.51 to go. Shots now, 5-3 in favor of the Patriots. Chase King wins the draw. Logan Bertle played to the D. It's to Snow for Warren. Intercepted by Mole, sent down deep to the Falcons' territory. Bouncing puck. Out in the neutral zone it is this time. Played over. Intercepted by Caden Snow, and he'll rush it up the ice. Poke check there by number 17. Lucas Andrews sends it out into the neutral zone. Phil Snow carries it in for O'Donnell. Sends it down deep. Down deep, excuse me. Warren takes a bump from Mole, separates him from the puck. Burke fires it off the wall, it comes back to the point. Over for Logan Andrews, now at the top of the circle. Fires it in a glove, saved by Turpin. Probably the best opportunity O'Donnell has had so far in the first period here. Is that shot from the top of the circle, and Turpin sees it all the way through and able to get it into his glove and, and get the whistle. Coffin with it now, off the backboard, sends it to the far side. Skinner tries to send it up the wall, but it ends up getting tied up as the O'Donnell Patriots pressure the puck. Looking to work it free, it does come free. It's under the stick of Liam Noble. He's separated from it. Villanueva skating up ice now. Dumps it down, but it go ends up going into the O'Donnell bench. Therefore, we'll have to redo the face-off in the neutral zone in front of the Falcons bench. O'Donnell wins the draw, they play to the far side. Noble gets it in over the line now with some patience and being pressured by the Falcons. Noah King has it, fires it across, crease, no one there. Skinner collects it on the far side, carries it up in the neutral zone, holds up for a second though to avoid the Patriots. Skinner ahead to Finley Dobbin now. Dobbin fires it, it goes off the shins of Ashton Farrell, allowing the Patriots to collect it. Evan Cross with it now, will play it around the boards. To Nate Nolan, chips it to Ben O'Brien now. Stretch pass for Noble, Noble going in on the breakaway. Liam Noble with some patience, backhand scores! Noble with some patience there, gets the goaltender offside, backhand opportunity, finds the back of the net. The O'Donnell Patriots strike first in this semifinal game. Five minutes and 11 seconds to go. We'll have the Rogers TV replay of that one. Holds with it, goes to his backhand and gets it by Turpin. Quickly off the draw, O'Donnell dumps it down deep to the Falcons' territory. Payne tries to backhand it out into the slot. Hits off the legs of a Falcons player, goes to the far wall here. As they fight for possession, it comes back. Stamp backhands it deep down into the zone. Harry Smith with it. Chips it off the boards. It's out. Staines gets poke check there from Nate Nolan. Back the other way now. Stamp couldn't quite get to the pass in time. Payne with it now. Payne 
Fires it off the backboards. Drew Dillon collects it for the Falcons. Kept in here on the stick of Payne. Turned over by Dillon. Out into the neutral zone. Evan Cross has it for O'Donnell. Cross, stretch pass ahead for Alex Wood. He sends it down deep. He couldn't hold the pass. To the wall now. Sent over. Roach Green intercepted by Lawler. He fires it back into the zone. A bouncing puck. Harry Smith back to collect. Plays it off the glass. Out into the neutral zone. The linesman calls high stick. Therefore, play will be blown down. And bought into the neutral zone for the faceoff with 4.02 to go here in the first. Falcons win the draw for Drew Avery here now. Avery plays it ahead to K Chase King. He tries to chip it down. Jack Chafe intercepts it and Phil Snow comes back the other way. Drops it for Braden Mole. Sends it to the corner. Snow collects it. Comes around the boards. Receiving pressure there from Drew Avery. The loose puck is played ahead. Mole tries to intercept it. It's sent down. There'll be no icing on the play. Jack Chafe back for it now. Chafe loses an edge. Bouncing puck hits off the Patriots bench. So faceoff will come inside the O'Donnell zone. There's another angle on that goal. And a beautiful one that it was from Liam Noble, who strikes first. 3.30 to go now. Play being carried uh, a little bit of an edge to the O'Donnell Patriots. Villanueva wins the draw. Skinner plays it back to Snow. Back to Skinner at the top of the circle. Over for Farrell to high slot. Puck gets deflected and bounces over the net up into the match for the whistle. 3.22 to go. King wins the draw. Chafe with it. High in the air, ends up going into the O'Donnell bench. So we're gonna see Phil Snow of the O'Donnell Patriots leaving through the gate here. He looked to be in some discomfort on the bench. So he's sent off. Noble in the neutral zone now. Gets it over. Ben O'Brien collects it on the wall. Sends it over. Noble intercepted by Villanueva. Carries it ahead. Intercepted by Lawler. Gets it in over the line. O'Brien. With the stretch there, able to stay on side. Ahead, Skinner gets it in over. Sent back. No, doesn't clear out into the neutral zone. Dylan Oeva with a stretch there, able to keep it in. Turned over. Snow plays it over for Drew Avery. Back to Snow, ahead to Dylan Oeva. Carrying it down the wall. Skinner tried to get it to Farrell there to get a sharp angle shot on the side. Didn't work out in their favor. Sent out in the neutral zone, and Farrell knocks down O'Brien. Ashton Farrell chips it high, down into the Patriots' end. Falcons offside, they had to touch up. That allows O'Donnell some time there. Noble to the far side for Noah King. Offside, Ben O'Brien is, whistle goes. Two minutes and 11 seconds to go here in the first. Still a 1-0 game in favor of the O'Donnell Patriots. Shot there off the blocker of Turpin. Played off of the glass. Drew Dillon on the wall now. Pressured by Payne. Finley Dobbin plays it to the opposite side. 
to the point. A shot right in and a pad save made by Turpin. Dillon gets it ahead for Keynes. Keynes going in now, coming down the wall. Holds up, drops it for Drew Dillon. That play gets intercepted by Payne, able to keep it in, comes out now. It's O'Donnell with it. Stamp takes a bump in the neutral zone. Dumps it down deep to the Falcons' territory. Behind the net, Finley Dobbin has it. A minute 22 to go here in the first. Dobbin gets it ahead to Keynes. To the far side, will get it over for Dillon. Sends it to the corner. Bumped by Pilgrim. Pilgrim plays it off the backboards. Payne on the opposite wall. Pressured there by Roach Green. Roach Green loses the puck. Sent out in the neutral zone now. Stamp has it. Andrew Stamp for O'Donnell. Fires it. It's in the back of the net. Andrew Stamp just cuts towards the middle and fires it past Turpin in the last minute of play. And the O'Donnell Patriots lead 2-0 with 51 seconds left in the first. Here's the replay of that one again, folks. And no one knew where it was to. With it now. Budgel wins the draw for O'Donnell. Back to the point that Cross plays it. Up to the Falcons and they clear it, but it's out of play for the whistle. 42 seconds to go now. So that faceoff will come back down in the Falcons' territory. <laughs> Falcons win the draw. Quickly to it now is... Justin Goss sends it down low. Goss collects it in the corner, takes a bump, gets it back. Racing to the far side now, Gavin Coffin sends it down low again. Goss will collect it on the opposite wall. Harry Smith tried to keep it in, but it bounced out in the neutral zone. Coffin plays it off the board. Smith with it now. Gets it over for Goss. Evan Cross intercepts it, sends it the other way. Coffin with it now, will hold it off the boards, clears out in the neutral zone, but not going to be enough time to get a shot off from Logan Burke. So that's going to do it, folks. After one period of play, the O'Donnell Patriots have a 2-0 lead. They also lead on the shot clock, 10-3 of the shots in favor of the Patriots. They've been carrying a lot of the play here as Holy Spirit hasn't been able to get much sent towards goaltender Eric Haas. We'll be back shortly after a quick intermission with the call of the second period.
second period. O'Brien sends it into Falcons territory. Quickly turned out by Connolly. Skinner, and on that shot there, it allows O'Donnell to collect it. Sent back in, racing for it now. Skinner and O'Brien will battle for the possession. Skinner gets it. Gets it to Farrell. Dylan away the now. An intercepted by Skinner again. Shot in on Haas. Covers it up for the whistle. 14.36 to go. Wins the draw. Villanueva gets it. He sends it to the corner. Jack Chafe gets it out. Not enough to clear it though. Connolly keeps it in. Gets it to Farrell. Farrell with a shot and he finds the top corner. What a rocket from Ashton Farrell over the shoulder of Haas. And the Falcons are on the board. Michael Connolly keeping it alive on the blue line. Sends it in and here's the Rogers TV replay of that one. Just a rifle from Farrell into the corner. And the Falcons are on the board. It wasn't looking like there was much life on the Falcons bench there for a little bit, but that certainly revived them. Back on their way now. Chipped ahead by O'Donnell. Wood sends it down deep to the Falcons' end. Caden Snow with it now. Receives a little bump there from Stamp. Leaves the puck. Villanueva sends it to the corner. Stamp has it. Sends it down low. Alex Wood comes away with it out of the corner. Sends it up top to Pilgrim. Pilgrim's shot blocked by Villanueva. Wood gets it on the wall. Sends it down low again. Stamp tried to backhand it to the slot. There was no one there. Payne with it now. Payne goes down. Stamp gets it back. Caden Snow off the wall. Kept in by Logan Andrews. A shot just misses on the short side of the net. Wood sends it back to Pilgrim. Oh, that's Stamp, excuse me. Stamp shot. We're near the net on the short side here. Ahead now, Skinner. Couldn't quite control that pass coming from Farrell, so it's going to be an icing call charged against the Falcons. 13.35 to go as the faceoff comes all the way back in their end. Patriots win the draw. A shot from Cross on the point. Doesn't get through the traffic. He tries it again. No can do. With it now, that's Drew Avery. It's sent out by Roach Green. Intercepted by Cross and sent back out in the neutral zone. Avery with it now. Will fire it. It goes off the hand of the linesman. He looks to be in some discomfort. I would imagine it is. It comes out in front to Haas. Dobbin with it. A sharp angle shot from Roach. It's blocked in front and goes up into the mesh. Thirteen oh nine to go. Budgel wins the draw, sends it down low for Cross. Cross comes to the opposite side, gives it to Braden Mole. Mole with it now for the Patriots, gets it back. A stretch pass here in the neutral zone, bounces off Jake Budgel up into the stands, so the faceoff will come back into the Patriots zone. as they look to redo that. Twelve fifty-seven to go here. Budgel waved out of the faceoff. Nate Nolan with it now for O'Donnell. Off the glass, out into the neutral zone. Finley Dobbin has it. He sends it back up for Roach Green. He puts it ahead for Keynes. Gets it in the zone. Nate Nolan rims it around the boards. Rushing to with Keynes. Sends it back down low into the O'Donnell end. Evan Cross backhands it up the wall. Braden Mole with it in the corner now. Played back to the point. Dobbin has it. Gets it over for Avery. Avery with a shot. It gets blocked. He gets it back. Sends it down low again. Wraparound opportunity. Haas just got the pads there in time. Dylan with it now from the high slot. 
fires, gets blocked off. Piercy ends up in the corner. Piercy gets it back and will send it down the ice for an icing call with 12.06 to go here in the second. Both teams with some changes now, getting some fresh legs out there. You'll look at that wraparound attempt once again there. As he was left all alone, but Haas just able to get the pad over there. Nine puck going in the net. Falcons win the draw. The point shot goes off. Liam Noble comes all the way back out in the neutral zone. Harry Smith collects for the Falcons. Smith knocks down O'Brien. Carried in now. O'Donnell looked to do so. Still in the neutral zone. Back the other way now. George has it. It's Andrew George. George with a shot off the blocker of Haas. He directs it up into the mesh for the whistle. 11.46 to go. Shots now are 10-9 in favor of the Patriots. So Falcons starting to get the shots working towards goaltender Eric Haas. They win the draw. Quickly plays it back to the point from Harry Smith. His shot gets deflected to the far corner. Sent out ahead now. O'Brien couldn't get to it in time. Racing back Falcons territory. It's Logan Burt. Plays it to Harry Smith in the corner who takes a bump from O'Brien. They look to work it free. It's Noah King. Sends it up top to Jack Chafe. Back to King. King with a move to try to get by Burt. It ends up going to the corner. Harry Smith off the glass. Can't clear it. It comes out now. O'Brien with it. Plays it down to Brady Lawler. Lawler loses it. It comes down deep into the O'Donnell end. Kept in on the blue line. Ahead now. Andrew George with a shot there. Lawler's stick. He lost it. Lawler takes down George. He puts it onto the side of the net. Jack Chafe has it now. Plays it up. Kept it on the blue line. Sent in towards the goaltender. Blocked. Liam Noble with it now for O'Donnell. O'Donnell backhands it out into the neutral zone. Warren and King chips it down low. The Falcons territory. Ben O'Brien in the corner now. Yes, it is O'Brien in the corner. Puck comes out and Turpin will slide out and will cover it up to take the whistle. 10.35 to go. The top line for the Falcons coming on here now. An important face-off to win in their own end. Coming away with it. Ashton Farrell, poke check there by the D of O'Donnell. It's out in the neutral zone. Villain away but looking for it. Turned over. Smith Skinner fires it deep down. No icing on the play. Pilgrim with it. Intercepted by Skinner. Sent down low. Wrapped around the boards. Back to the point for Coffin. Shot towards. Goes to the opposite corner. Players racing for it now. Tied up. Kept in by Connolly again. Pilgrim gets it out this time. Payne sends it down to the Falcons end. Connolly off the glass. Can't clear it. Pilgrim has it now for O'Donnell. Pilgrim's shot gets blocked. Alex Wood picks it up on the wall. Will carry it to the corner. Skinner gets it back, sends it out to the neutral zone, knocked down by Kill Pilgrim. He'll play it D to D. Ahead now, Payne takes a bump, but he's able to send the puck down deep into the Falcons' territory. In the corner, Andrew Stamp with it now, leaves it for Alex Wood. Wood with it. Sends it over into the slot. It's collected by Ashton Farrell for the Falcons, and he'll work up ice with it. Farrell has the blue, loses it there. He played it, the officials got it. It's too many men. The player coming off of the bench plays the puck. Too many men call against Holy Spirit. O'Donnell will go to the power play. You can see as soon as he touched, he tried to let the puck go. He was hoping to get away with it, but the officials saw it and called it. Nine twenty-three to go here. First look, the power play for O'Donnell. They win the draw. Played back to the point for Cross. He walks towards the middle. Still with it. Sends it in there for Nate Nolan. Nolan alone. The far wall fires it. It gets deflected out to the mesh on the far side. Out of play, the puck is.
Tipped off of the Holy Spirit Falcons, so it'll stay inside. King wins the draw again. Back to the point for Cross. Cross fires it in. It gets deflected in front of Turpin to the corner. They get it back. Nolan to Cross. Over for Noble. Fires it. It's in the back of the net. Liam Noble fires it on. And it redirects off the goaltender somehow and finds his way to the back of the net. O'Donnell restores the two-goal lead. Replay of that one here now. Noble fires it. Gets under the arm of Turpin. Side and into the back of the net. That's a power play goal for O'Donnell. It's 3-1 in favor of the Patriots. 8.58 to go here in the second. King wins the draw, plays it back to the D. Nolan to cross, ahead now off the stick of Noah King. It gets down deep to the Falcons' territory. It's played around the boards by Turpin. Racing to it. Ben O'Brien to Noah King. He sends it down low for Liam Noble. Liam Noble will send it up top. Nate Nolan leaves it there. Almost lost it. Able to recover, get it back. Sent over. Harry Smith now clears it out and will carry it up ice through the neutral zone. In over the blue line. Smith with a shot. No one knew where it was to that time. He got redirected in towards the goaltender. Back from the point. Dylan over for Finley Dobbin. Dobbin with some moves to try to avoid O'Brien there. Dobbin back hands it to Smith. Smith fires it off the backboards over to the corner. Roach Green lays it down low for Dylan. Back to Roach Green now. Fan on the shot and allows Noble to collect it for the O'Donnell Patriots. They come back the other way. O'Brien trying to get through the D. Couldn't do so. Steered the other way. Carried in again now by Smith. Smith takes a bump along the boards. Drew Dillon loses it. Smith gets it back, fires it, it gets deflected off to the back wall. Dillon's got it now, stepping in as Dillon Nueva with a little hold up there, loses the puck, gets it back. Cross, able to get it out now for O'Donnell. Plays it ahead. Turpin out to play it. Goals, I think it's going to be icing called. Yes, it is. I thought it got waved off as I heard the linesman shout no, but I was incorrect. 7.38 to go here now. You're killing me, bro. <laughs> the out-of-town score from over on rink A. The first intermission, it's scoreless between the Stephenville Spartans and the Gander Concords. Chafe will rim it around the boards. Clearing attempt, couldn't keep it in. So it's successful for the Patriots. A loose puck. Blows it down offside, but I'm really not sure why he did it. It, it didn't touch a Patriots player. Either way, neutral zone faceoff. Budgel wins it. Intercepted by Skinner now. Skinner going to go down through. Holds up, loses it. Cleared out into the neutral zone by O'Donnell. Sent back down low. Lawler into the corner, makes the bump from Skinner. On the wall, clearing attempt, kept in, and they lose it. Quickly, Coffin plays it off for the opposite boards, ahead. Icing's waved off, Reed Chafe now receiving some pressure there as Villanueva tightly on him. Knocked down, comes back to the point for Warren, shot towards net, it's deflected in front. Stretched pass up for Braden Mole now. Mole looking to go wide, doesn't get through. Warren on D. Played ahead. Collision there on the boards. Villanueva tries to get it over for Farrell. Farrell collects it now. Gonna work up top. Will send it down low. Skinner. Out to get it behind the net. He's tied up there. Jake Budgel takes down Villanueva. There's going to be a penalty on the play, and it's going against Budgel for cross-checking. You see that replay once again. There you see, yeah, that's where Budgel picks up the cross-checking penalty. So he'll go to the box two minutes or less. Holy Spirit Falcons head to the power play. 6.17 to go here in the second period. 
Noah King is waved out of the faceoff circle. Liam Noble, he'll come in and take the draw. Noble wins the draw, plays it to the corner, cross quickly to it. Turning to avoid the Falcons there. Dillon pressuring Cross very well. Cross takes down Dillon. It's going to be another power play, or excuse me, another penalty against O'Donnell. Evan Cross will go to the box for hooking. So a two-man advantage coming up here now for Holy Spirit. And we'll see that penalty there again on the wall. Yep, there's the hook there that takes him down. Five on three, two-man advantage opportunity here for a minute and 50 seconds. Villanueva wins the draw, plays it to Farrell up top now for Harry Smith. Over for Finley Dobbin in the circle. Dobbin shoots, save made by Haas. Chafe rims it around the boards, clearing attempt successful. All the way back down now the Falcons' territory. Turpin plays it now. Finley Dobbin will carry it up ice. Lots of room here for the Falcons. Dobbin driving towards the net now. He'll carry it down low. Centers it up top. Smith almost lost it, but kept it in. Plays it over for Farrell. Farrell and Dobbin, they'll switch off. Up top to Finley Dobbin. Dobbin over for Farrell in the circle. Farrell with a move, gets by Chafe. Loose in front of the goaltender. I believe the shot did go in on Haas. Villanueva with it now in the circle. Up top to Dobbin. Dobbin plays it to Villanueva. Gets it over for Farrell. Can't get the shot off. Too far of a reach. We'll cycle it up top. Harry Smith now to the top of the circle. Shot. Pad save made there. The rebound. Net is off. Good opportunity there. Only Dobbin quickly got the rebound shot, but as Haas was playing off the post. Net come off. The story of the weekend here is the, is the Nets. It certainly caused some havoc for teams. Bouncing puck. Chief tries to clear it. Goes to Farrell on the half wall. He holds up. Farrell sends it up top to Harry Smith now. Smith back to Farrell from the circles. Fires it. Goes to the opposite corners. Kept in by Smith. Plays it over for Finley Dobbin. Dobbin loses it. Able to recover on the wall. An update from the other rink now. Stephenville Spartans first on the board against the Gander Concords. Can they pull off their third upset of this tournament? Bouncing puck goes to the stick now. Noah King kept in by Dobbin as he jumps up to knock it down. Dobbin with it. Gets it over. Intercepted by Noble. Just eight seconds left on the two-man advantage here now. Dobbin with a shot. Fires it right in on net. The loose puck. And the whistle goes. The net off once again. Two pucks in a nice for some reason. Chafe in the corner. One man advantage here for the next 10 seconds. And out the neutral zone. Avery plays it over for Caden Snow now. Snow to the far side. Dylan has it. Back at even strength. Rims it around. Bouncing puck there now. King plays it out. Got intercepted a little bit there by number five, Drew Avery. Going up now, it's Roach Green. He's hooked a little bit by Nolan. There was no call on the play. King gets a stick on it. will fire it down the ice. It'll be icing called against O'Donnell. 3.40 to go here in the second period. Shots are 13-12 in favor of O'Donnell. Second zeros, he's fixing his equipment. Centering play, Keynes pokes it ahead, goes to the corner. Braden Mole now able to carry it out. 
Mole in the neutral zone, fires it down deep into the Falcons' territory. He's racing for it. Bumps Caden Snow. Drew Avery collects it in the corner. Avery puts it ahead. Goes up to the stick now. Carrying it in. O'Donnell pokes it ahead. It's in the zone. Roach Green sends it down low. Logan Andrews down below the goal. Able to clear it out as it bumps over this, bounces over the stick of Avery. Racing for it now, Andrews. Andrews separates his man. It comes off the backboard and out in front. Turpin had to be sharp there to cover it up and take the whistle. 3.06 to go. And that score is correct, folks. It is 3-1. In favor of the Patriots. As they look to book their ticket to the finals for a third straight year. Pilgrim will play it over. Back to Noah King in the high slot there. Fanned on the shot a little bit as it didn't get in on the goaltender the way he wanted. With the down low, Liam Noble will play it up for Pilgrim up top. Pilgrim holds. Centers it, it goes onto the stick of Chase King. High in the air, he sends it. George is in over. Deemed offside. Andrew George in the neutral zone. Dump it down deep, it gets by Pilgrim. Pilgrim plays it, his D partner ahead. Out in the neutral zone it is now. Smith sends it back the other way. And George is sat down there from Logan Andrews. No call on the play. Falcons were looking for a penalty. Sure, and Warren from the point sends it in, but O'Donnell is able to take it out. They'll get it to the far side now for Noah King. King coming down the wall. will send it across crease. No one can get the shot off. Liam Noble on the half wall now. Noble will work it up top. Noble to the far side for Lawler. Lawler with a shot. Turpin and the save. Lawler with it back. Sends it in towards. Shot there from Noah King. Save was made by Turpin. King has it down low now for Payne. Payne. Goes to the opposite side. Noble gets it. Receiving some pressure there from the Falcons. They're able to get it over for Lawler. Lawler's shot goes off the stick of Smith. And the Falcons send him back down to the opposite end for an icing call charge against them. A minute 18 to go here in the second period. Still 3-1 O'Donnell. Fighting for possession, it's O'Donnell able to keep it alive. Jack Chafe sends it down low. And Dalvin pressures it. Villanueva with it now down low. Looking to work it up high. Turned over and sent back the other way. Carried in by Stamp. Stamp taking a bump from Caden Snow. They fight for the possession. It's Caden Snow who collects it below the goal. He's pressured from Alex Wood. Dobbin lost it, stamped with a sh shot. It's blocked by Villanueva. Back to the point for Jack Chafe. That shot is blocked by Skinner. Skinner looking to get ahead of Chafe. Interfered with him a little bit. There was no call there. Ashton Farrell has it now. Farrell sends it up into the middle. There was no one there to take the shot. Back to Caden Snow. His shot goes off the stick of Alex Wood. Ends up in the corner. Around the boards now, O'Donnell plays it. Fiddley Dobbin able to keep it alive. Sends it down low. Villanueva below the goal line with it now in the corner. Sends it down low again. Stamp will take it for O'Donnell. Send it to the far boards. O'Brien with it. O'Brien chips it off the boards and ahead. No icing on the play, but not enough time for O'Donnell. And they do get a shot off. But there's going to be no goal on the play. The referee quickly washes it out. That'll do it, folks. After two periods of play, the O'Donnell Patriots carry a 3-1 lead into the dressing room. We're going to be back in about 12 minutes with the call of the third and final period. Stay tuned.
and we're back for third period coverage of this semifinal game between the Holy Spirit Falcons and the O'Donnell Patriots. Currently, the O'Donnell Patriots sitting ahead in the contest by a score of three to one. Gonna be a big 20 minute period here now from the Holy Spirit Falcons if they wanna keep their hopes alive. I'm sure there was some positive conversations in the dressing room uh, in the intermission there. But before we get underway here, an update now from rink A sees the Stephenville Spartans just scoring a power play goal. They're ahead of the Gander Concords now by a score two to one. Stephenville ended up finishing last in their division. Pulled off an upset Saturday morning, defeating the Holy Heart Highlanders in overtime. Pulled off another upset last night, defeating the Holy Trinity Tigers by a score of two to one in overtime. And now leading the Gander Concords undefeated in the tournament by a score of two to one. So should be an exciting finish over on rink A where Nick Hillier has the call. You can tune into that game. RogersTV.com, you just select Corner Brooklyn, you'll be live in on that channel. Right here now, back underway, and Skinner dumps it down deep into the O'Donnell zone. Villanueva pressuring quickly there. A bouncing puck comes to Noble on the far side. Liam Noble will get it up ahead now to Ben O'Brien. Ben O'Brien tries to go through. Smith intercepts the play. A dumping play there, Got it, went off the glass in the, uh, the Holy Spirit bench, excuse me. I don't think the official saw it though. No icing on the play now as there are both players there. So it's back down in O'Donnell territory. With it now, it's Evan Cross. Cross lays it ahead. O'Brien couldn't get the stick on it. So it'll be icing charged against the Patriots. 19.04 to go here in the third period. If you're the Falcons, you want to get an early one here now in the third to bring your team within one. So this is a very important offensive zone faceoff for the Falcons. Keynes wins it. Chase King played it back to Finley Dobbin. Dobbin quickly gets it to Drew Dillon. A shot there from Dobbin. Gets blocked in front. Sent down low. Roach Green slows it down. Loses it. O'Donnell coming back the other way with it now. Payne to the far side. Offside. Alex Woods still pressuring the play. Finally, here's the linesman. Will work his way out. Allows Holy Spirit to regroup. They'll fire it deep down to the O'Donnell territory. Haas out to slow it down behind his own net. It goes to the corner. Drew Dillon with it now. Drops it back for Drew Keynes. His shot just misses on the far side. Back to the point. It's kept in. Finley Dobbin with it now. Trying to get it across. It goes to the corner. Lawler. Intercepted there by Keynes. O'Donnell coming away with it. They get the red line. They'll chip it down deep into the Falcons' territory. Dillon with it. Moves. Collides with Mole. The two players become entangled somehow. Alex Woods shot gets over for Jack Chafe. Chafe with a shot at a blocker. Save made by Turpin. Chafe gets it back. That shot just misses on the short side, goes off the back wall. Kept in here now. Keynes gets it for Holy Spirit, not able to clear it. Tied up, Jake Budgel. Roach Green for the Falcons. will send it to the far side for Drew Dillon. It's in Falcons territory. Dillon will go for the change. Some fresh legs coming on now for Holy Spirit. Allows Logan Andrews to carry it in the zone, holds up on the wall. Sends it over towards the goaltender. Turpin comes out, covers it up for the whistle. We'll just switch to the out-of-town update as Jacob Hiscock of the Gander Concords have tied that game up now. It's 2-2. 17-16 to go here in the third. Budgel wins the draw. Played back to the point for Andrews. Andrews down to the wall for Piercy. Goes to the far D. Piercy with a shot there. Oh my goodness. Good opportunity there for the Patriots. Back the other way now comes Falcons. Goss, Justin Goss dumps it down. Haas slows it down behind his net, sends it up to the wall. Racing back now. Logan Andrews for the Patriots. Will fire it in. Turpin gloves it down, takes the whistle. 16.48 to go here now in the third.
Fresh legs for both sides coming on now. So the top line for Holy Spirit hasn't been able to get a lot going here today. Going to be important for those guys, for that team, you know, to, to get in those games. They need those top guys to produce. Loses Harry Smith in the corner, plays it off to the far wall. Nate Nolan racing in, is able to keep it alive. Centers it to King. King with a shot goes off the pads of Turpin. Noble clear, gets it on the half wall, sends it back up top. Sent down low again. Noah King tries to center it there. Ben O'Brien with it, puts it out. Noble was left all alone in the slot. It gets by him, racing back now. Skinner lays it ahead. Cross, sends it high in the air, sends it out into the neutral zone. Gavin Coffin with it now, sends it into the O'Donnell end. O'Donnell with it. That's Nate Nolan. Skates it up through the neutral zone. Will get the blue. Rims it around the boards. Picked up by Noble on the far side. Noble receiving the pressure there. Villanueva fires it up the wall. Goes to the stick of Ashton Farrell. Farrell gets it over. He was looking for the stretch pass. Coffin fires it off the skates. Up for Farrell now. Dumps it in. Bouncing puck right in on Haas. He covers it up to take the whistle. 15-41 to go in the third. Wins the draw, plays it back for the point. Avery with it now, his shot just misses on the far side. It's back to Caden Snow. Snow will put it down low. Roach Green, centering opportunity there, goes off the stick of Evan Cross into the corner. Cross with it now for O'Donnell, sends it out into the neutral zone. Sent ahead, Cross picks it up again. Separated, and Alex Wood fires it down deep to the Falcons' territory. Turpin plays it off the glass. Sent to the far side now by O'Donnell. Comes out off the stick of Dillon, out into the neutral zone. Payne racing back for it. He'll get it to Jack Chafe. Chafe goes for the far side pass. Roach Green sends it down low to the O'Donnell end. Jack Chafe with it. Around to the wall. Not enough to chip it out. Shot goes off. It finally comes out in the neutral zone. Racing for it now is Caden Snow. He'll pass it over for Drew Avery. Avery gets the red, dumps it down deep to the O'Donnell end. Slowing them down there. Roach Green trying to slow down Lawler, but Lawler still persisted to come with the puck. Dumps it down deep into the Falcons' end. Avery. To Chase King. Chase King for the Falcons now. will pass it up to Roach Green. He's going to look for the far pass. It goes... Off the legs of Drew Dillon in the neutral zone. It's knocked down. Drew Dillon has it back. Drew Dillon loses it there. Stepped up. Nice hit there from Logan Burt. To Wood. Chafe. A couple of collisions there now. Jack Chafe. Back the other way. Chase King going now. Chase King holds up. Tried to drop it to Logan Burt. I'm not sure if that's what he intended, but Burt Lost the puck. Shot there from Chafe to the glove of Turpin. He'll take the whistle. 13.49 to go in the third. Still a 3-1 hockey game for the O'Donnell Patriots. We'll see that kerfuffle there in front of the net as no one really knew where the puck was to. Trying to get the position first. And the hit there from Snow. Point shot there from Andrews goes off the pads of Turpin. Picked up by Piercy on the wall. He plays it back to the point. Another shot there. That got deflected. Almost ended up in the back of the net, actually. Fiddly Dobbin with it now. Loses it to Piercy. Budgel with a shot. Goes to the far side. Pilgrim stepping in. Keeps it alive. It goes to the stick of Chase King. King able to send it out into the neutral zone. O'Donnell touches up but sends it back down deep. Fiddly Dobbin with it now below the goal. Sends it up ice. Intercepted there. Logan Burt. Loses it to Andrews. Andrews carries it in wires and finds. Fires it off the pads of Turpin. Takes a bump there. Chase King around the boards. Pilgrim sent it in on net. Had save made there. Andrews shot towards. Another shot there by Mole. How did it stay out? Piercy down on one knee. Fires it over to goaltender in the back of the net. 4-1 O'Donnell. Here is the replay of that, folks. My God. 
Original save made by Turpin. Piercy goes down on one knee and is able to tuck it up top. 12.56 to go. It's 4-1 O'Donnell. Shots now. 26-13 in favor of the Patriots. They win the draw, cross, quickly off the glass. Comes out in the neutral zone, Skinner. Fires it to the opposite side, Nate Nolan takes it. Will play it back to Cross now. Cross off the boards, up to Liam Noble in the neutral zone. Noble holding, gets through Villanueva. Gets it back, Noble carrying it in. Noble with a shot. Gets block, uh, blocked by Harry Smith, ends up going up into the mesh. So the face off will stay inside the Falcons territory. Patriots win the draw. Noble with it. Fires it in. Blocker save made by Turpin. Building a wave of collects the puck. Plays it ahead. Comes out into the neutral zone. Collected by Evan Cross. Cross goes to the far side. Gets in. Carried in, but they're offside. So that faceoff will come here into the neutral zone. Quickly poked in the zone, gets over to Noble. O'Brien got tangled up here with Smith. Skinner on the wall, tried to get it over. Noah King sends it back down deep. Connolly plays it around. Ben O'Brien receiving pressure there from Connolly. Connolly ends up going down. Noble below the goal, tries to center it. Michael Skinner gets it on his stick now. Skinner looking to get by Nolan. Tied up by Nolan, carried to the boards. Noah King to Evan Cross, it bounces over his stick. Harry Smith able to keep it in. Sets it over on the side of the net there. And Haas playing the side there, the net comes off. 11.35 to go now. Kept in by Avery. Roach Green with it now in the corner. Sends it down low to Keynes. Drew Keynes with it for Holy Spirit. Poke check there by Cross. It allows O'Donnell to get it back. Alex Wood on the wall. Takes a bump there. Out into the neutral zone. Pressuring. They push through. Stamp with it now. Tried to get it over for Payne. He couldn't get the shot off. Racing back now. Alex Wood. Gives it to his D, and he's able to send it back down to the Holy Spirit end. It'll be no icing on the play. Played quickly ahead, goes right to the stick of Jack Chafe. Avery with it. Over for Keynes. Keynes gets by, but intercepted by Payne. Carried in by O'Donnell in their own end. They get it back. Wood racing for it, tried to get it by Coffin. Didn't work, stamped to Chafe now. Chafe ahead, Payne pushing through, Payne. Alex Wood with a shot there. Save made by Turpin, a loose puck and Turpin will jump out to take the whistle. Little bit of pushing and shoving after that one there. 10.21 to go in the third. We'll watch that last little scramble again. Oh, check there by Turpin. They're able to get the shot off. The shot comes from Alex Wood. Back underway here now. Caden Snow with it. Looks like he'll be the man to start to break it. Doesn't go the way they want. Poked out by Chase King now. King coming back to the O'Donnell end, looking to get by the defense. Loses it to Chafe, comes out in the neutral zone. Goss fires it off the glass, goes down deep. Holy Spirit 
Plays it, or excuse me, O'Donnell. Plays it back to the D. Chafe to Piercy. Over now for Mole. He fires it down deep to the corner. Finley Dobbin. Round the boards. Out into the neutral zone. Andrew George bumps Jake Pudgel. Off the stick of Goss, ends up going into the O'Donnell bench. So, a neutral zone faceoff. 9.32 to go. O'Donnell wins the draw. Quickly played ahead. Finley Dobbin collects it in the neutral zone. We'll play it over for Caden Snow. Snow to Dobbin. In his own zone, he'll play it ahead. Snow to Michael Skinner now. Skinner loses it in his feet. Caden Snow got it back for Holy Spirit. Carried in his own end, plays it up to Skinner. Skinner over for Dobbin. Finley Dobbin turning to avoid Noah King. He'll carry it down low and hold up behind his net. Dobbin with it. Up ahead to Villanueva. He'll cut towards the middle and come to the far side. Villanueva gets it to Farrell. Farrell's backhand opportunity there. Skinner loses it. Finley Dobbin cycles it up top. Sends it in. Noah King in the air. Able to send it out to the neutral zone and hops over Dobbin's stick. He's all the way back into the Falcons territory. Behind the net now, Finley Dobbin has it. Looking for the option here. To the far side, the stretch pass didn't work. Turned back the other way by Pilgrim. Dobbin's got it back now. Coming around the net, gonna receive some pressure here from Ben O'Brien. O'Brien, Liam Noble stepping in, gets it. Noble holds up in the corner. Takes a bump there, but Dobbin is the one that goes down. Noble loses the puck to Ashton Farrell. Farrell with it now. Coming around the net, holds up. Gets by Noah King, races to the puck, gets it back, sends it out to the neutral zone ahead to Skinner now. Skinner in over the line, carrying it down low to the corner, Michael Skinner, still there, directs it towards the goaltender, but an easy save for Haas to cover it up there. 7.47 to go here in the third. wins the draw, Ashton Farrell quickly to it, sends it down low, picked up low by Skinner. He tried to center it, but there was no one there for him. Payne working back the other way now for O'Donnell. He gets by Connolly, goes down. Connolly loses his stick. Warren takes a bump down low. Stamp comes out in front. Sends it to the corner. Skinner to Farrell in the neutral zone now. Farrell dumps it down deep. Farrell, puck now. Being pressured there by Nate Nolan. It's tied up in the corner. O'Donnell able to get it out. C come back to the point for Connolly. His shot. It's deflected to the corner. Villanueva. Tried to get it down low to Farrell. Clearing attempt by O'Donnell. Successful. Michael Connolly with it now. Sends it off to the far boards. Skinner. Carrying it down. Turns to avoid pain. Skinner still with it on his stick. Goes down finally, no call. Nolan to cross. Cross off the glass, gets it out into the neutral zone. Bouncing puck there. Drew Dillon has it now for Holy Spirit. Dillon will look to get through the D, and he sat down by Nolan. Evan Cross has it now for O'Donnell. Cross gets it in. Takes a bump there from Harry Smith, though, but able to quickly get to the puck. Got it in the corner, holds up, sends it, Coffin, round. To the far side now, Roach Green has it. He looks to get it through the legs of Budgel, couldn't do so. Jake Budgel turns it back, will carry it the other way now. Budgel, got Roach Green on him. O'Donnell gets it back, high in the air, they send it down to the corner. Gavin Coffin now for Holy Spirit, off the boards ahead to Drew Dillon. We'll get it over. Harry Smith now looking to race it up. 
Smith has got the blue line. Will carry it to the outside. Down low, centering opportunity here for Keynes. Couldn't quite get to it in time. Coffin fires it off the opposite boards. It goes down deep. Falcons touched up as they were offside. Played around now by O'Donnell. It goes to Budgel. Budgel over for Piercy. Intercepted by Coffin. Sent back the other way. Not enough to clear it out. Budgel fans on the shot. It's back for Chafe. Chafe shot right into the glove of Turpin. And he'll keep it for the whistle. Five minutes and ten seconds to go. King wins the draw, back to Noble. Noble with a shot, steered aside by Turpin. Out to the neutral zone now, it's Dobbin. Dobbin and O'Brien is kept in. Miscommunication there, Skinner has it for the Falcons. Skinner, got two Patriots on him. Able to be kept in there, Snow, it finally comes out in the neutral zone. It's collected by Ashton Farrell. He'll play it to Caden Snow, and Snow will send it down deep. Haas able to play it around the boards. And it comes out now on the stick of Noah King. King in over the blue line, will hold, trying to get to the middle. Shot, and it's in the back of the net. Noah King with a shot there, and I don't think they even believe it was in. But we'll have it on the, the Rogers TV replay here. That just went in and bounced out as quick as it went in. A shot there from King, right off of the side and comes out. 5-1 is the score. With four minutes and 33 seconds left. I think the O'Donnell Patriots have punched their ticket to the finals. There's really not much of an argument there that the Holy Spirit put up. I mean, you're looking at it in real time. Without that replay, I don't even know if it went in, but looking at it there, it was clearly in. Snow. Plays it over. Out into the neutral zone now. Farrell has it. Down by four, Holy Spirit air. Dobbin in the neutral zone has it. Plays it to Farrell. Farrell for Dobbin now. Dobbin carries it in. Gonna take the DY. Try to get it over. Loses it. Noble now. King loses it. Noble collects it back. will cycle in his own zone. Noble. Carrying it up ice. Noble looking to work through the D. Taken wide. Snow able to get it onto the boards. Loses it. They're able to get it out. They'll send it down to ice. Going to be icing called against Holy Spirit. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go. is the ice level camera there to show that goal. Bounces in and out. <laughs> Donald wins the draw. It gets tied up quickly, it's sent down low. Chase King with it there now for Holy Spirit, Harry Smith. Receiving pressure from Payne. Payne loses an edge and goes down. Smith able to carry it out. Sends it into the zone and it's gonna go deep. Harry Smith still in pursuit of the puck. Chase King. Kept alive now, carried out in the neutral zone by Drew Dillon. Dillon high in the air, sends it into the O'Donnell end. Stamp over. The far side now. Mole kicks it down for Pilgrim. Pilgrim to Stamp. Comes out in the neutral zone. Avery sends it down low. Falcons are offside. They had to touch up. Two minutes and 50 seconds to go here in the third. Logan Burt. And on it. Allowing O'Donnell to get it back. In the zone now. Stamp has it. Stamp carried it in. Trying to get through the D. Taken down and separated. Drew Avery sends it the other way. Racing to it. Payne. 
Tried to keep it in, but Logan Burt carries it out for Holy Spirit. Burt gets it in. Evan Cross with it now, off the glass. Kept in by Harry Smith. Out in the neutral zone it is again now. With it, Braden Mole. Mole sends it down low. Falcons with it. Stretch pass up ahead. Cross has it for O'Donnell, plays it off the boards, out into the neutral zone. Payne fires it down to the opposite corner. Harry Smith with it now below the goal net. Plays it to the corner. Picked up by Drew Dillon. Chase King loses it. And O'Donnell will start to carry it back into their own end. A minute 43 to go here. Cross. Ahead. Payne couldn't get to it in time. Oh, the nude's on. Off the boards. Out in the neutral zone. Noble with it now for the Patriots. He's kept wide. Piercy. Tied up by Connolly down low. With it now, Villanueva. Coming up ice. Loses it to Budgel. Comes to the far side. Connolly skating for it. Dumps it down deep. Last minute of play we're into now. Chafe off the boards. Warren loses it. Noble able to get it out. Ahead to Noah King and he'll fire it down. Falcons in. Warren with it. Chipped out by Skinner. Racing for it is Ashton Farrell. Looking to get it by Chafe. Tied up on the wall now, Farrell is. Almost had it free, Skinner did. Chief puts it ahead now. Noble going for the bouncing puck. Turpin out with the poke check. Nicholas Warren out into the neutral zone. Noah King has it. 20 seconds remaining in the game. It's sent in deep. Skinner leaves it there. Villanueva down low. Centering opportunity. The shot from Farrell gets blocked. Ashton Farrell from the wall fires it over in front. Haas with the save. And that's going to do it for this one, folks. The O'Donnell Patriots are off to the finals with a final score of 5-1, defeating the host Holy Spirit Falcons. The final shots in the game are 28-15 in favor of O'Donnell. Stand by as we have the players of the games presented by members of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment. Not the effort I expected to see out of these Falcons this morning. I figured coming off of a big win, you know, they would have uh, a bit more energy than they had in this game, but uh, kind of come out a little bit flat-footed and it, it carried with them in my opinion, all the way through. Uh, they, they had moments where they, Sean had a couple of good opportunities, uh, but you know, it, uh, O'Donnell did carry the, the edge and carried a lot of the play, as you can see by the shots, 28-15. So Jack Turpin, able to stop 23 of those 28 shots, while Eric Haas stopping 14 of 15 his way. As both teams shake hands now, they'll line up on their respective blue line. See you tomorrow. O'Donnell waiting to go shake the hands of the officials. <laughs> an update, an update from next door now with 10 minutes remaining in the third period. The Gander Concords have pulled ahead to give themselves their first lead. And they just scored again, so that's four to two now with 9.33 remaining in the third period. As I mentioned earlier, Nicholas Hillier over on Rink A with the call of that one. If you want to tune in on rogerstv.com, just select Corner Brook as your station location. Player of the game for Holy Spirit is number 10, Ashton Farrell. Good job, 
Player of the game for the Patriots, number 13, Liam Noble. And Liam Noble getting the players of the game honors for the O'Donnell Patriots. That's going to do it for me here this morning, folks. Thanks for tuning in. It was a pleasure to bring you this game between these two teams. Uh, as I mentioned, the O'Donnell Patriots off to the finals. Their winner yet to be determined. And But before we go off here, we'll just go through our scoring summary through this game. In the first period, it was Liam Noble got into that uh, quick goal there from Cross and O'Brien, giving the Patriots the 1-0 lead, followed up quickly by Stamp and Nolan. 2-0 Patriots after one. Second period, Ashton Farrell replies for Holy Spirit, cutting the deficit down to one, but Noble gets his second of the game and gets the lead restored in the third period. Piercy, remember that uh, shot from the knee, gets by Turpin and Noah King with the shot. The controversial goal there that they thought wasn't in, that definitely was. That's your final score, 5-1 in favor of the Patriots. They're off to the finals. We'll switch it over to some replays quickly first before we switch it over to the Concords and Spartans game. On behalf of the production crew and camera crew, my name is Chris Ryan. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Have a great day. Scoring update. Wait to see what that will be. It's the final as the O'Donnell Patriots knock off the Holy Spirit Falcons five to one. The O'Donnell Patriots going to their third straight Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup championship game. They're looking to win their third. They will be met by either Gander or Stephenville. Pinson up ice now. Shot and a save by Bellavo. Kellaway with it in the corner. Little deflection. Pinson has it. Up in front. Kellaway and a save by Bellavo. Stephenville back the other way. 
going in now. No luck there for Stephen Mills, number 87, Evan Heffer. Centered. Shot from Simon. Hits off some bodies there. Centering there. No opportunity. Play comes back the other way. And now for the Concords, a shot from Blackwood, who has three assists. His shot goes wide. Stephenville trying to get a goal here. Call. Puts it up ice, intercepted by 77, Jacob Hiscock. Marching across the line, offsides the call. Five and a half on the clock, shots 36-16. Stephenville struggling to get shots on Tompkins. Bellavo being peppered the other way. March taken down, clean hit there. March flip, shot from Blanchard goes wide. Call, shot from him. Intercepted in front by Russell. Now it's going to be put up the wall by Brandon Blackwood. Tipped off a player. Going to kill some time. Call. Puts it back down for McIsaac. McIsaac driven into the boards. There's going to be a call on the Gander Concords. Hear the call here now. Number 22, Carter Yetman, his third penalty of the game. This time going to be two minutes on the rough. Timekeepers need to speak to the officials. Ready to go. That one dumped out by the Concords. Stephenville, a very important power play here for them. Bellabo leaves it for McIsaac. McIsaac runs into Kellaway. Call up ice, intercepted by Kellaway and into Stephenville bench. McIsaac, McIsaac cross ice, shot from Blanchard, blocked in front. Callaway runs into Blanchard and puts him down to the seat of his pants. Blanchard, slap shot, can't get through traffic, not kept in. Callaway can't get it for the Concords either. Blanchard with it for Stephenville, centering pass off the toe of Tompkins. And Kellaway going to drive the Spartan into the cave, into the corner. That pass, tough pass there from target. McIsaac sidesteps. 45 seconds left in the penalty. Carter Yetman. Dutcher in now for the Spartans. Trying to make this a one-goal game. Dutcher centers for target. No good, McIsaac. Over for Blanchard. He can't get all of it. Shot there in front. Target bouncing puck over his stick. McIsaac goes off the skate. Or it does not. The referee saying it was a clear out.
Face off out in the neutral zone. 19 seconds to go. 333, 42 for the Concords. Now, Stephenville needs to generate some offense to stay alive. Carter Yetman at the ready to go back out there for the final just under three minutes. Dutcher trying to pick it up, but instead coming away with it is Kalen Layden. Liam McIsaac. Now we're back to five on five hockey. Coming up now for the Spartans, Liam Dutcher. Dutcher with a shot tipped in front. Net is off its moorings. Nonetheless, Tompkins makes the save. Out now by the Concords. Up now for Russell. Russell with the shot off the shoulder of Bellabo. That would have sealed the deal. Now, Gander still in their zone. Coming out now for Stephenville. Tristan Bullen. Bullen and Kosh. That one up to call and out. I suspect we may see Noah Bellabo heading to the bench soon. That one's tipped in, no icing. Call, put, pokes it up, kept in the zone by Canning. Liam McIsaac in the corner. Zach Russell fighting for it. Gander trying to kill some time here. A penalty there. Great effort there. Back and forth shoving match between Russell and Tristan Bullen. They were the two fighting for the puck in the corner. Time out, Stephenville. We will be back in 30 seconds. Underway here now. A minute and 45 to go. Face off in the Spartan zone. Blanchard behind the net. Blanchard puts it up. Trying to get that out now. Shot there. Can't be blocked by Dutcher. Will the reign of the Spartans come to an end? We have a minute and 25 to go. They need two to tie, three to win. Over now for Target. Target can't quite control it. He's going to get through. Pushed along the wall. Target now in the corner. He has possession. Target with a shot in front through traffic. Target with a shot. And Tompkins makes the save. Bellabo out for the extra attacker. Great save there from Tompkins through traffic. Probably about five or six bodies in there. He comes up clutch there. Shot there. That one tipped wide of the net. With it now is Dutcher. Gander looks to get it out. McIsaac. Doesn't have his D partner. They're playing four down low. Dutcher has it. He shoved off it. Dutcher. Down for target. Target with a shot on net. No good. March trying to lacrosse it into the net. March. Time winding down on Stephenville. Blanchard down to March. March got to put it on net. That's blocked. Shot there goes over the stick of Blanchard. 20 seconds to go. 
in there in the middle of the ice. Gander gonna get the puck. Fighting along the wall now, 10 seconds. Dutcher with it, slap shot, that blocked wide. Five seconds to go. The Gander Concords put that wide, but they will go to their first ever Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament Championship game. The Concords will do battle with the Patriots in the championship game. We will be live with that at 3 p.m. today. The Concords fans on their feet cheering here, as are the Spartans fans. The story of the week for sure. The Spartans going 0-3, but knocking off two Giants to get here in the semis against the Gander Concords. As the two goalies come together right now, beautiful moment there. Bellavo and Tompkins. As the Concords will do it. Your Rogers TV, three stars of the game. Third star from the Stephenville Spartans going to be number 10, Liam Dutcher. Second star of the game with three assists. Concord's number seven, James Blackwood. And your Gander Concord's going to get the first star of the game with three goals and an assist. Number 99, Alex Kellaway. We're going to head down now to ice level for the presentation of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Players of the Game. <laughs> Ryan McIsaac, a great game from him. Many of these Spartans, this is their final game. Shot there. Ryan McIsaac, the Royal Newfoundland Regiment player of the game for the Stephenville Spartans. A great game, a great game by McIsaac on defense. Really got to the puck quick, tried to do everything he could. No shocker there. Alex Kellaway, the Royal Newfoundland Regiment player of the game for the Concords. Three goals and an assist. Also named the Rogers TV first star of the game. That's going to do it for this one, folks. We will be joining you again at 3 p.m. today, live on Rogers TV and RogersTV.com around the world. It's the O'Donnell Patriots versus the Gander Concords. The Concords, the first time for them in the finals, taking on the back-to-back -back Champions, the Concords, now five, six, sorry, and oh, this week at the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Tournament, the Spartans with a valiant effort today. Story of the week, of course, you have guys like Dutcher and Target, but they would not be here without the goaltending performance of Noah Bellavo, the exceptional performances from Beliveau bringing them this far. It was a pleasure to watch the Spartans. Best of luck to the Concords. On behalf of the entire Roger TV, Rogers TV crew, volunteers, production team, I'm Nicholas Hillier. Take care. We'll be back.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Paradise Double Ice Complex, where we are here about to get underway with our closing award ceremony for this 2023 Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. A lot of awards being presented here this afternoon. I believe it's a total of nine or 10. Uh, gonna be presented before the female game, where it's gonna be the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers and the Discovery Destroyers in that game. Bound to be a good game there. We're gonna send it down to ice level where Nick is joined by Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Hatfield. Down to you, Nick. Thank you, Chris. I'm here with Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Hatfield, Commanding Officer of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, 1st and 2nd Battalion. Lieutenant Colonel, do you want to talk a little bit about first your position uh, with the regiment as well as uh, your role here with the tournament? So I'm the commanding officer of both battalions. Um, CO's uh, overall in charge of, of both of them. And uh, with here with the tournament, uh, we're very blessed that the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Association is, is taking the lead. And uh, what we've done here is we're more of a supporting role with both uh, our information booth and uh, helping with the awards, helping with uh, all the sort of administration, but, uh, and that's just to augment the association who has a, a great group of volunteers. Now, obviously this tournament carrying the title, the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. Uh, what does that mean to the regiment, obviously, given the history uh, and the importance of the regiment in uh, today? Well, I, I think it's very unique. Um, the, you know, we have these, um, these high school um, hockey players from across the island and you know almost the entire island and uh, I really think you know being a hockey coach myself that these young men and women really represent the the very best of our communities it takes a level of skill dedication hard work to be a hockey player uh, I'd like to think that the regiment itself also represents the best of the of the of the island as well and so to be associated with such great young men and women yeah I couldn't ask for anything better now one of the mottos of the regiment better than the best how does that translate over to hockey and now as we see the discovery destroyers against the Queen Elizabeth pioneers in the first women's final how does that carry over into this uh, you know I, I I had a good opportunity to speak to most of the teams before the elimination round and uh, before each one of their games and you know I, I told each one of them, I said, what we're looking for is, uh, I want to see that hard work on the ice. I want to see them play fair. I want to see them leave nothing on the ice. And so when they, when they put all those things together, you can see it in their spirit. You can see how well they play, how, how much they dig the corners, finish their checks, all that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, if everybody gives better than their best, then, then they're all winners. And, and the effort I saw this, this whole week uh, was phenomenal. You know, a couple of upsets, uh, a couple of outstanding players, but the team and the effort, uh, even when teams were trailing that they never gave up, that's the spirit we like. That's what we want to see. Now, one last question before we get ready. Obviously, we have the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Band here uh, on the ice, but how can uh, young adults get involved with the regiment, with the Canadian Armed Forces, with any kind of aspect of uh, the military Look, yeah it, it's for me I, I I've been in for 33 years I've always been a part-time reservist um, it's it is a it is a great experience um, 
I know that I've got some of my uh, members of the regiment who've played this week, which was great to see them play. Um, yeah, we're, we're always looking for a few good men and women. Um, certainly, it's, it's a great way uh, of, of further development for, for people that already got some really good talent. So, yeah, we have all our social media, our website, WellNewfoundlandRegiment.pro. Uh, yeah, we, we're, we're always looking for good people. You mentioned the term part-time reservist. For our viewers at home, do you want to just explain what that means and what you can do uh, in that kind of role? Yeah, so the Army Reserve is a, um, it's, it is a part-time organization. Um, we have, always have full-time opportunities, but um, yeah, we're, we're looking for people as they're going to school, as they have uh, even in their own civilian jobs that they do this on a part-time basis. Now that sometimes we ask them to step up and and do full-time work. So, for example, last uh, last fall when um, Hurricane Fiona hit, uh, we had almost a company uh, from both 1st and 2nd Battalions go to Port of Bass to help out, and they, they stood for full-time service for a couple of weeks just to help out. But, uh, you know, for the most part, it is probably one of the most challenging, rewarding, uh, part-time occupations that you could ever have. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel. We're going to head now to ICE Level 4 awards presentations here. Um, the MC will be ready to go. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Nicholas, for that interview with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Hatfield there. About to get underway for our uh, awards ceremony here. And we are... Uh, here now, the band is down at uh, the bottom of the ice level here. They will be bringing the national anthem here this evening. Uh, as we alluded to earlier, some award winners here looks uh, from both male and female divisions. Um, coming up this afternoon, Seth Hyde will the have the call play-by-play play here to bring it to you. As we now ask our fans to rise from move, we will now have the playing of the new, uh, national anthem by the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Band. Ken Gatehouse, and I am the Deputy Director for the tournament. I have the honor of being your MC for this afternoon's individual awards presentation and closing ceremony. I sincerely welcome you to the individual awards presentations for this truly fantastic community event, the 2023 Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. 
It now gives me pleasure to introduce to you our special guests who are joining us at ice level. Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Hatfield, the commanding officer of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment. Chief Warrant Officer Keith Wade, the Regimental Sergeant Major, 1st Battalion, the Royal Newfoundland Regiment. And Mr. Gerard Brennan, the Tournament Director. It is my pleasure to invite the Tournament Director, Gerard Brennan, to provide a few comments. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, look, thank you very much for joining us in the closing ceremonies. All I can say is, was that some kind of hockey here all week? Uh, <laughs> we'll just ask you to bear with me here for, as I thank a few, uh, a number of people and, and various groups. First and uh, foremost, I'd like to thank the tournament committee, our members, Ken Gatehouse, uh, John Lee, Jackie Wall, Michelle Morell, Patrick Dunn, Kurt Murley, and Spencer Barnes. That committee worked tirelessly. <laughs> and certainly without the tireless effort by these people, this tournament, putting it together, and the success we had, uh, wouldn't be possible without that input. To our many volunteers, again, without them, we would not be able to accomplish what we accomplished. So thank you to all our volunteers that stepped up and helped us all week long in the tournament. to the town of Paradise and the staff of the Paradise Double Ice Complex for their continued support of this tournament. From start to finish, they were just great all over. <laughs> to, the, to the Newfoundland Labrador Eastern School District and Hockey NL, thank you for your tremendous support in helping us ensure that every high school hockey player, both male and female, had every opportunity to experience and enjoy this tournament. The smiles of enthusiasm, the laughter in their throats, the tears of joy on all the players that played all, all week here was certainly a treasure to see. <laughs> to our many sponsors, our three major sponsors, Rogers TV, the Corps Commissioners, and the St. John's Ambulance, our gold sponsors, our silver sponsors, our bronze sponsors, look, a heartfelt thank you for all you've contributed and all you've done all week long. Thank you. I have two special groups now to thank here. To the players, the coaches, managers, and teacher sponsors, over 800 of them representing 19 schools across our island, thank you for your participation and some really great hockey all week. <laughs> Finally, to the fans, the parents, the grandparents, and fans alike, Thank you for coming out and supporting us and these hockey players all week. We can't wait to see what next year will bring. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gerard. It now gives me great pleasure to call forward Lieutenant Colonel Hatfield the RSM, and Mr. Brennan to present respective tournament awards. When you hear your name call, please come forward to accept your award and have a picture taken. The Gallipoli Team Spirit Award is named in honor of the Battle of Gallipoli in Turkey, where the regiment first fought together and bonded as a fighting unit. The Esprit de Corps, the regimental soldiers developed in Gallipoli, held them in good stead throughout World War I, where they went on to earn the reputation of being better than the best. This award is based on nominations from all teams in the tournament. Because the teams have traveled, um, the both winners, both the Gander Concords and the Stephenville Spartans, have returned home. There may be a representative for the Concords in the rink. If there is, could you please come forward? The winner for the girls was the Gander Concords, and the winner for the boys was the Stephenville Spartans.
the Sergeant T. Ricketts Victoria Cross Most Valuable Player. This award is named in honor of the Battle of, excuse me, this, on, this award is named in honor of Tommy Ricketts, the regiment's only Victoria Cross winner. The winner of the girls division, Molly Gill, QE Pioneers. The winner of the boys' division is Caleb Rashley from Cornerbrook Titans. I believe Caleb is in the stands. He's on his way down. The Munchie 9 Top Defenseman Award. Again, the recipients have both left and traveled back to their communities. But this award is named in honor of the Munchie 9, who held the defensive line against 250 German attackers for a period of 12 hours when the reg regiment was badly decimated at Munchie Le Preux. It is believed that it would have taken 40,000 men to recapture this terrain during the Battle of Arras had the nine regimental soldiers not persevered against all odds. The winners for the girls' division, Lauren Paddle from Marystown Clippers. <laughs> and Ian Wall of the Exploits Valley Eagles for the boys. We've just been notified that we do have a representative from the Gander Concords who is in the rink, and she will now come forward and accept the Gallipoli Team Spirit Award on behalf of the Gander Concords. Receiving the award is the captain of the team, Gracie Griffith. The next award is the Lance Corporal J. Shywak Top Scorer Award. This award is named in honor of Lance Corporal John Shywak. Lance Corporal Shywak was a hunter and trapper from Labrador and became one of the top snipers in the regiment, where he was well respected by his comrades. Lance Corporal Shywak earned a reputation as the best sniper in the British Army. He was killed in action at Menier in 1917. The top score is based on the total goals and assists in all games until the end of the round robin series. The winner of the girls' division, Brooklyn Kitchen from the O'Donnell Patriots. The winner of the boys' division, Caleb Rashley, Cornerbrook Titans.
Brooklyn Kitchen is on her way to the ice at the moment. The next award is the Lieutenant Dooley Top Goalie Award. This award is named in honor of Lieutenant Lionel Dooley, who was one of the youngest and most promising officers in the regiment. Lieutenant Dooley was the goalie for the regimental hockey team during World War I. He was killed in action in Belgium in 1918. The top goalie is based on performance as assessed by the awards committee. The winner of the girls division is Jennifer Murphy of O'Donnell. The winner of the boys' division, Noah Bellavo of Stephenville. Both of these players are not available for this afternoon's activities. The Captain J.J. O'Grady Sportsmanship Award. This award is named in honor of Captain J.J. O'Grady of St. John's, who was the regimental adjutant for the training battalion in St. John's during World War I. Captain O'Grady was responsible for all aspects of military drill and physical fitness instruction for regimental soldiers and received the Order of the British Empire in 1919 for this work. After the war, Captain O'Grady became the fitness instructor for the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary and for three local schools in St. John's. The winner of the girls' division, Maggie Bussey, QE Pioneers. division is Alex Kellaway from Gander, who again cannot be with us this afternoon. The Major B. Butler, DSO, MC, and Bar Leadership and Coaching Award. This award is named in honor of Major Bertram Butler of Topsail, who was known as one of the best officers in the regiment for his leadership qualities. Major Butler won the Distinguished Service Order at Cambrai and the Military Cross for his actions leading the night raids at Beaumont Hamel. He also received a bar to his Military Cross for his actions at Goudicourt. Major Butler survived the war and returned home to Newfoundland. School principals, coaching staff, and team captains were invited to nominate a recipient, and I must say the competition was stiff. There were so many deserving coaches, staff, giving of their time and of themselves to the youth in this province. It is truly a pleasure to present this Leadership Coaching Award for the girls to David Crane of Ascension. <laughs> With the encouragement, the, uh, the, uh, the chair, I don't know if David is in the audience, but could one of the team come down and receive it, please? Could one of the girls come please down to receive the award? For the boys' teams, the coach was Brian Kennedy of Gander, Concord.
And where will we be without our officials? The referees and lines persons have done a great job officiating the tournament. They all deserve our thanks and appreciation. The top officials for the 2023 tournament were selected by the referees associations. The top official for the girls program, Brooke Hiptich from the Paradise Minor Hockey. And for the boys' division, Ashley Hammond, Metro Referees. This award, called the Lieutenant Green DCM Excellence in Officiating Award, is named in honor of Lieutenant Walter Green of Cape Royal, who was a young Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Officer when World War I declared. Lieutenant Green immediately joined the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, where he was known for his bravery. He received the Distinguished Conduct Medal for his actions in Caribou Hill in Gallipoli. Lieutenant Green was killed in action at Marcoing in 1917. And finally, the Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Nangle Tournament Builder Award. This award is named in honor of Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Nangle, who was the regimental padre. Father Nangle was a gifted athlete and organized the first regimental hockey game in 1917 in the small village of Coisy in France. He was instrumental in the erection of the National War Memorial in St. John's, the Caribou Memorial Park in Bowman Hamel, France and other parks in France and Belgium marking the places where regimental soldiers died during the war. This year the board of directors has selected Tracy Hatcher who is the <laughs> Most of you know Tracy she is the chair of the girls' program of Hockey NL. And Tracy was instrumental in assisting us in developing the program for the girls this year. <laughs> Unfortunately, Tracy can't join us. She's out of the country in the south enjoying some sunshine. Thank you, and again, congratulations to all the award winners. I am sure that you will agree that every player who participated in this tournament is a winner, and because of the tournament objectives, our hockey community is also a big winner. I now invite Lieutenant Colonel Hatfield to provide remarks. What about now? Yes? Okay. Uh, first off, I gotta thank a couple people. Um, this tournament is actually being run by our regimental association, so these are people who have spent a whole lifetime in uniform, and then after they retire out of uniform, they want to actually continue to serve. So this tournament, and I'm going to tell you, I, I've been a hockey coach for five years. I've been to a lot of tournaments, but I've never seen a tournament as well organized and as meaningful as this one. So on behalf of the regiment, and hopefully on behalf of all of you, I'd like to give everybody in the regimental association a, a nice round of applause for the work they've done. Uh, we've had some great sponsors. Uh, I do want to note uh, Rogers as a sponsor. Um, 
I know that over the distance that everybody travels, not every family member could come here. Uh, I've never been at a tournament where it's been televised on, uh, on cable and live stream. So having that ability to reach out, so family at home who couldn't make the trip, is really special. And they've done, if you look at the feed, it's a professional feed, it's, it's very, very well done, and I'd like to thank them for allowing us to connect with everybody else through the media. So thank, the, thank them for that. <laughs> look, this has been great hockey. Outstanding hockey. Um, and and I've, I've had the opportunity to go and uh, speak to some of the teams at the end when, uh, when they got eliminated. And uh, sometimes I say to them, the effort on the ice doesn't always reflect on the scoreboard. The, your enjoyment in the tournament doesn't always be, it isn't always where uh, you place. Um, all we ever asked to honor the soldiers before us, to honor the regiment, is step on the ice, work as a team, play hard, play fair, and leave nothing on the ice. Every time you step on the ice, if you give it your all, you've honored those before us. And it's pretty amazing because these teams, these 28 teams from across this province, you represent the cream of the crop of the province. You represent the future. Not everybody can play hockey at this level. You are the elite in this province. You represent our best and brightest. And how does that relate to us? Well. All over 100 years ago, the best and brightest all signed up. And they went in uniform, and many of them never came back. So by you, the best and brightest now, stepping up and playing at your absolute best, better than the best, you've honored their memory. So that being said, here we are at the final. And we've got two teams, and I can't wait to see this one. Like, let's see a great game. Thank you for all your work. Uh, thanks to the parents who are the, and the fans who are the backbone of all the teams who get everybody here, who work the tournament. Um, and thanks to the officials. I was very proud. To s this is the first tournament I've ever seen where officials has received an award, and I think that's great because uh, I believe the officials have let you play the game and made sure that it was done fairly. So well done there, too. <laughs> Let's play some hockey. We've just been informed that uh, the winner of the Monchi 9 defense, Lauren Peddle, her teammates from the Tri-Pen are here on the ice, and they were going to come forward and re receive the award on L Lauren's behalf. Jordan Piercy, <laughs> Georgia Bolt, and Chloe Pitts. Thank you, Colonel. This brings to a close our individual award ceremony. I will ask you now to please rise as you are able for the playing of the Ode to Newfoundland and God Save the King.
Please be seated. We are now ready for the ceremonial puck drop between the Bonavista Dis Discovery Destroyers and the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. Could I ask the team captains please to join the CO of the RSM and Mr. Brennan at center ice. Thank you. We will now have a brief pause to clean the ice before the girls' final game gets underway. We will see you back here after the game when we present the Beaumont Hamill Cup to the first ever winner in the girls' division of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Tournament. Good luck to both teams. Right about to play the finals now against the Discovery Destroyers. Just a few moments ago, you were named MVP for the girls' side of this tournament. How does that one feel? Uh, you know, it feels awesome, but we couldn't do anything without all of our team. Like having Sarah Hillier in the net and all of our players, we did it as a team, and that's what counts here. Now, this being the first uh, women's championship, the first girls' tournament here at the regiment, uh, what would it be like to win that one for QE? Oh, that would mean so much because we've worked so hard for this in all our games. We've put everything out there. And being the first time, it would just be amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Best of luck. Now, we're going to stand by in a moment. We'll also be joined by Brian Kennedy, head coach of the Gander Concords. We'll be right back. Now we're here with Brian Kennedy, head coach of the Gander Concords. A few moments ago, you were named the top coach on the boys' side of this tournament. How does that one feel? Um, it feels pretty good. Obviously, it's because of the boys that are playing for me. Um, I'm super proud of them. We got this team together in January. Um, they've come a long way since then. There's guys in AAA, AA, A, and B, and came together as a team, and it just feels really good for them, just for the boys, that's all. Now, this is going to be the first appearance for the Gander Concords in the Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup Finals. What's the game plan going in against the two-time defending champions? Pucks in deep, right, boys? Pucks in deep. Pucks are in deep. On them right away. We're going to play our game. We don't care. Lineup matches and that kind of stuff. If we play our kind of game, we'll win the tournament. No, no problem. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Now that's going to do it. We're going to throw it to replays now. We're going to be joined momentarily in the broadcast booth by Seth Hyde for the Women's Championship Finals between the Discovery Collegiate Destroyers and the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. We'll be back right after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rogers TV live coverage of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. We are in the championship game on the girls' side between the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers and the Discovery Destroyers. Now, I'm here with Discovery Collegiate Captain Jordan Piercy. Jordan, how does it feel to get here to the championship game uh, in the very first one of this tournament? It's, it's feeling very nice. It's really nice to actually make it in the first year that the girls get to play. Now, what's the game plan going in against the PWC team? Uh, PW, sorry, Queen E. Our game plan is just to come out hot like we have in the first few games, coming right at the puck drop. Best of luck today. Thank you. We're going to head now over to the Queen Elizabeth bench. Back up to you in the box, Seth, for a minute while I can get over there. What an exciting time it is for these girls. Discovery versus Queen Elizabeth Pioneers in a history-making day. It is the final of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament, and it is the first time the girls will have a championship game. This must mean so much to these teams, and I'm sure Abby Newhook is very proud as the future of female hockey is looking very bright. The Queen Elizabeth Pioneers are the team to beat. They have been undefeated all tournament, so it's gonna be hard for Discovery to do it. But if any team can do it, it's them. I'm here with Maggie Bussey of the QE Pioneers. You're in the finals now against the Discovery Destroyers. What's the game plan? Oh, just, uh, just be aggressive, get shots, just stay positive, you know. Best of luck. Sorry? Best of luck in this game. Yeah, thank you. Back up to you, Seth, for the call. I'll be right up there. Thank you very much, Nick, and I'll keep the seat nice and warm for you up here in the broadcast booth. Well, what an exciting time. This must be, this must be for both of these teams. It's the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers versus the Discovery Destroyers. My name is Seth Hyde alongside Nick Hillier for the championship game, the first ever female championship game of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament. Here's Gill. Getting that one up ice. In comes Rustin. She takes a shot, testing the netminder Alexis Cooper early here in this one. Or sorry, that's Georgia Marsh. Finding his way out. It's Lambert who's going to get it. Playing it back off the boards. Up ice to Kennedy Goss. Thrown up to Rustin. She had two goals against Holy Trinity in the quarterfinal. One player of the game in that one. Down around the boards. Picked up by Piercy. Piercy off the wall. On the other side, it's Templeman. Templeman going to clear it down, and Queen Elizabeth left to chase. Icing waved off. Just as Grace Nolan gets to the puck, she turns away here with nine minutes remaining in the first period as Rustin gets it on the boards. Rustin has a look, trying to clear it. Being pressured by Harris, thrown up ice. Away goes Grace Nolan, drops it back to Maggie Bussey, and now the Pioneers have a chance to make something happen here. Fisher bringing it in on goal, blocked in front. Fisher gets it back once again, throwing it to the front of the net, lost on the boards to Pitts. Pitts trying to get it, lost it again. Now Bussey bringing it up ice, battling for it on the boards with Matty Dunn, but now it's a chance for Pitts. Pitts bringing it in and taken down by Deneen Wales, and it is gonna be a penalty against Queen Elizabeth to start off this game. Not the way that QE wanted to get this one started against a team like Discovery Collegiate. The Destroyers have had a very strong tournament 
an even stronger power play. So they're going to go up five on four here, less than two minutes into this game. Queen Elizabeth needs to kill off this penalty if they want to have any hope of getting that first goal. And this would be a huge uh, momentum booster for Queen Elizabeth, kill off a penalty this early, but it comes out in front. What a save by Hillier. Referee blows the play dead, and they got a bit of a lifeline there on the play. That was a close call. Did they ever, Seth? And, you know, Sarah Hillier been a star goaltender this week in the women's tournament for Queen Elizabeth. Great save there, as I believe the referee probably prematurely blew the play down. Around the boards, Piercy going to pressure Rustin. Rustin losing it down low. Fisher trying to shovel it to the front of the net, taken down. Kept in out at the blue line by Elliott. Elliott shoveling it forward. Hannah White gonna get it down on the side wall. Now it's Piercy. Piercy comes out in front, shoots, and Hillier makes the stop and goal. And now on the wall once again, Pike trying to clear. Out to the blue line to Russell. She plays it off the boards, and Queen Elizabeth get it out for a bit of breathing space here. As Russell cuts back around, dropping it out to Madison Elliott. Elliott back to Russell. Now here's Piercy, beautiful passing here by Discovery. Piercy comes in, shoots, and a fantastic defensive play by Lambert. Piercy trying to get it out in front of the net. Rustin losing it. And that one will just get out of the zone as Bolt is left to chase. Throwing up ice once again, it's Hayward. Trying to battle for it on the boards. Rustin managing to pin it against the wall. Great work from Hearn. It comes free and it's cleared all the way down the ice there by Anna Penny. So great job by Queen Elizabeth so far on this PK. They've really shut down discoveries. That one goes back down around the boards. Once again, Georgia Bolt will get it on the side wall. Bolt twisting back. She banks it off the boards. It's picked up by Maloney. Maloney breaking it up ice. Away she goes. Coming in on net. Maloney cuts across. Shoots. And that one blocked in front by Anna Penny. And now Molly Gill has a look. She sends that one down as we get back to even strength. And it ends up in the bench. Great penalty kill there by the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. Molly Gill a bit of... Uh, the driving force there on that one. You'll see the penalty there, very obvious one. Stick got in there and then the shove. Probably a bit more body contact and tripping, but nonetheless, still a penalty. You can't do that in hockey. Another shot blocked in front as White tries to fish it out. White down around the boards, lost to Rustin. Rustin bringing it up by she plays it off the wall. Dump back in and now White takes it in on net. White coming in on goal, shooting, blocked in front. And Kennedy Goss trying to free it on the sidewall. Picked up by Pitts. Pitts having a look, waiting, taking the rebound free, but Hillier managing to jump on the puck and make another great stop. A great start here for Discovery Collegiate. Queen Elizabeth, they were able to match a team who beat Discovery earlier today in the semifinals. Queen Elizabeth took on the Ascension Astros. Took that one two to one in overtime. Ascension in the Concord Cup just last month. Took down Discovery by I think the margin was almost eight goals. Yeah, so Discovery, lucky they didn't have to face them once again, but you never know what can ha happen in hockey. It's a very unpredictable sport, that's for sure, as Bussy takes it up ice here. She has a look, banks it off the boards. Down around the wall it goes. It's Bolt who's gonna get it. Georgia Bolt searching for an answer, but Molly Gill puts it out in front. Now up the ice, Chalk banks it off the boards and it will go down the full way for an ice and Colin. Nick, I gotta ask you, you were on the bench for both of these teams. What were you feeling down there? What was the energy like for both teams? It's a sense of belonging for discovery. And I, I think that's the best word that I can put to it. A sense of belonging for them to be in this game. But for Queen Elizabeth, they were down with 30 seconds to go. And they came back and ultimately took out the Ascension Astros. They're just excited to be here. 
Banked off the wall, and now it's off to the races. It's a foot race between Anna Penny and Jordan Piercy. Piercy's gonna come away with it. Throws it out in front, blocked. And now another chance, another shot blocked. Two great blocks by Molly Gill, and that's the reason she won most valuable player for the female division. Up by Molly Gill, sends it across, and now here come Queen Elizabeth, it's Lambert bringing it in on net. Lambert trying to peel it to the front. It took a weird deflection off the defender. And now it's being broken out by Russell. Russell just managing to get it out of the zone. Kennedy Goss sends it back out to Grace Nolan. She pulls it forward, Chloe Russell. Dumping that one down and it will go the full way for an ice seat call. You go to the Rogers TV replay here. A great defensive effort by the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers, notably the MVP of the girls division, Molly Gill, number eight. Two fantastic block shots there for her, swinging the momentum back in the Pioneers' favor. And now Rustin almost managed to power through the defense. It's on the other side, Maloney's there waiting. Finds it out in front, and the puck is still free, but Marsh just managing to cover it in time, and she must be breathing a sigh of relief. Go to this Rogers TV replay. A nice backhand in front from Queen Elizabeth Kennedy Goss. The goaltender, Georgia Marsh, almost fell back. Yeah, that was a pretty close call once again. Both of these teams have had a few hiccups this game, but the game is still deadlocked at 0-0, and that could change here as the Pioneers bring it up ice. Rustin cuts to the outside. She tries to drive it to the net. Rustin coming back out in front, and what a back check by Maloney. Out to the blue line. Dumped back into Grace Nolan. Played off the boards, and now... Up the ice comes Chloe Pitts. Pitts takes a surprise shot there on Hillier, and she makes the save. Played off the boards, Goss getting it back. She throws it up there to Rustin. Rustin going through the defense, down around the side wall. Rustin waiting, dropping it down to Gill. Now here's Goss. Goss to Gill. Gill, what, she, what can she do here? Goss brings it out in front of the net, out to the blue line. Wales shot blocked in front. Now here's Goss with it again. Down low, Gill twists away. Gill waiting. Out to Wales once again, out at the blue line. Shot blocked. And it's cleared down the ice by the Destroyers, and that's going to be a well-needed icing call. Both teams opting for a full line change here. 2.36 is what's on the clock. Neither team on the board yet. Very low in shots as well. It's only 5-2 to two in favor of Discovery Collegiate. Queen Elizabeth needing to pick that pace of play up. Up the ice brings Cole. Cole bringing it to the net, going to the outside. Takes a shot, another stop by Hillier, and she's been an absolute rocking goal. Dumped up, and it just manages to get by Madison Elliott. And now Russell going to take over. Russell has it behind the net, twisting away. Russell giving it up ice. It's Jordan Piercy trying to free it. Another shot, and what a save by Marsh. Another great stop from her. Marsh playing great so far on the few shots that she's faced. One thing I've noticed though, that she's gonna have to make that minor adjustment set. She's gonna need to watch her momentum. She, when she makes that slide across the crease, she has a tendency to start falling back. And that's gonna open up, as we saw in the second shot of the game, some scoring opportunities. And now, here come the Destroyers on the counterattack. It's sent up to Piercy. Piercy cut to the outside. She has a look, driving it to the net. Rebound freed, and they score! It's Chloe Pitts, tucks it in like a fitted sheet. And it's the first ever goal in the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament female final. Great play there. Piercy drove the net. Nice placement there by Chloe Pitts. 
She waited for that rebound. She was patient. We'll have a look at the Rogers TV replay. Piercy with it now. Backhands that one off the pad of Hillier. That comes out. The net off its moorings on the far side. That'll be allowed. Discovery and Collegiate. Actually, they're having a look at that now. The ref just went down. Hillier was complaining, but it looks like the goal will stand. Chloe Pitts with some great positioning. And it is 1-0. And you just witnessed history, folks. And what an honor, I gotta say, what an honor it is for myself and Nick to be calling this game. This historic hockey game is the future of female hockey right here, right now in front of our eyes. Uh, listen, Seth, it's great to see even this year bringing in the Metro High School Women's League and having this at the tournament just shows that, you know, the women's game is just as exciting this probably the biggest tournament in the province most prestigious that's for sure great to see the girls have an opportunity at the championship as well here's rustin giving that one ahead kennedy goss off the board she's going to chase it down lifting the stick on the side wall of maloney and now here they go again the destroyers take it up the other way lost in the feet of chloe pitts but it manages to find its way back to hannah white White trying to take it to the net, turned over to Rustin. Rustin bringing it in on goal, cutting back across. Here's Gill. Gill trying to get it to Rustin, and I gotta say, the Destroyers have done a great job of shutting down Molly Gill so far in this game. Usually, she walks around everybody out on the ice, but Discovery have really put the clamp on her in this game, but she has the puck here. Let's see what she got up her sleeve. Pass up to Rustin. Rustin coming in on goal. It's stripped from the puck. Now it's Hannah White. Taking it back into her own end. Around the boards to Madison Elliott. Now sent up ice, turned over in front, blocked once again by Georgia Bolt. Now played off the boards. It's Jordan Piercy trying to free it. Lost to Gill. Gill coming out in front, rebound free. They jam away for it. Where's the puck? It's still loose. Gill gonna get it on the boards once again. Dropping it down to Goss. Great chemistry from those two so far in this game. Goss giving it down low, backhand chance in front. Rebound, they still dig away for it. And somehow the Destroyers managed to get out of that first period without conceding a goal. There are some great defense by the Destroyers. That great defense by the Destroyers, equally matched by a great offensive push led by Molly Gill, and of course, Kennedy Goss of the Pioneers. They're gonna take the one minute, the two minute break now between periods. We'll be right back. One nothing discovery in the girls championship game.
Welcome back now to Rogers TV live coverage of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. This is the championship game on the women's side between the Discovery Destroyers and the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. Over to Seth Hyde with the call on today's game. Thank you, Nick, and what a first period that was. Both of these teams so well matched and so well deserved to be here in this championship game. Let's see what this second period has in store. My name is Seth Hyde alongside Nick Hillier for the first ever Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Female Championship game. And now up the ice comes Jordan Piercy flying through the defense. Oh, beautiful move. Piercy scores! What a goal by Jordan Piercy! Beautiful moves from her. And that was a beautiful finish. A highlight reel goal from her. That's Piercy's second point of the game. Beautiful job there deking out the defender going high glove. As Hillier misread that one. Discovery now leads 2-0. That was such a nice goal by Jordan Piercy, and I won't be surprised if that ends up on Atlantic Sports Highlights TikTok page, because that was a beautiful goal. And now here they come again, looking for another goal as Hannah White takes it to the net, down around the boards. Picked up by Harris. Harris throwing it on goal once again. Shot goes just wide, off the boards to Gill. Gill bringing it on net, stick lifted once again. And now Wales taking it up. She's going to try to dump it in, hit a body. Gill trying to take it to the net, lost. And now a shot by Lambert just goes wide of the net, out to the blue line to Wales. Wales shoots, tipped wide. And now here's White. White coming in on net. Lovely pass in front. It just got over the stick of Chloe Pitts. And now here's Gill trying to shovel that one out of the zone. It goes back down around the boards. Now back out to the blue line, blocked in front. Played on the boards there to Goss. Goss clearing that one out. Played back into the zone. And this Discovery team has really been standing on their heads so far in this game. Every single one of the players keeping Queen Elizabeth in the neutral zone for most of this one. And it seems like we have a typo there on number 20, uh, Walsh's last name. We thought it was Wales. It was spelled as Wales, but it is Walsh, so our apologies for that. And it looks like we got a delayed penalty here against Discovery. It's going to be two minutes for hooking and Queen here on the power play for the first time this game. Now, Queen Elizabeth has run a pretty good power play here in this tournament. They're going to go to work for the first time in the championship game. Both teams gonna opt for a change, actually. Bit of confusion there. As a linesman, lineswoman, I should say, put the call on the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers, but it did go to the Discovery Destroyers. Now we take a quick look at the special teams. Discovery, so far, they're two for nine on the power play. That's fourth best of the women's teams. Out to the blue line, Anna Penny, it just gets away from her. And now it's a breakaway for Jordan Piercy, but a, what a back check by Grace Nolan. And now here's Goss with it. Has her stick lifted, but she gets it back to Nolan. Sent across to Penny. Up ice and clear back down by the Destroyers. Now on the board, just Nolan. Dropping it back there to Gill. Gill taking it up ice, getting around Piercy. She got to get around three more here. Gill cutting to the outside. Beautiful pass to Rustin. Shot, rebound, freed. And Marsh manages to get across and make the stop. Now, want to have a quick look now at Megan Rustin of the QE Pioneers. You see her there on your screen. She had the overtime winner today against the Ascension Astros to put QE in this spot. Absolute laser of a shot from her side. Here's Walsh throwing it in front to Rustin. Tip just wide of the goal. 
And yeah, as we mentioned earlier, Megan Rustin also had two goals in the quarterfinal against Holy Trinity. So she has had quite the week, that's for sure. As it goes down behind the net to Lambert. Lambert has it down low, up to Gill. Gill taking it up, looking for a pass. She takes it down the wing. Pass there to Goss. Goss gets it to Rustin. Rustin coming in and shooting, and it's in! Megan Rustin does it again, and just like that, Queen Elizabeth are back in the game. Seth, you can never count a player like Megan Rustin out of it. She goes along her bench for the celebration. Really happy with that. We're gonna have a goalie change now for the Discovery Legion team. Rustin, beautiful, went forehand, backhand. Tried to put oh, that just one just in. enough room there. Just sneaks into the net, but I'm sure Megan Rustin isn't complaining, and Alexis Cooper is going to come into the net for Discovery. Great game from Georgia Marsh. She has been a key reason why this game is 2-1 to one for Discovery. Off the boards by Anna Halley. And now here go Discovery, bringing it back into the zone again. It's Hayward. Down around the boards, picked up by Nolan. Sent up ice to Bussy. Bussy pass ahead. Goss throwing it up to Rustin. Rustin gonna chase it down here. But it is gonna be saved by Cooper with 6.06 left to go in the second period of play. Great heads up play there by Cooper. And she's gonna make the save. Rustin was in all alone for the Pioneers. Not someone that you want coming in on a breakaway ever. It's nope. gonna be in, oh my apologies. It's actually, no, it's okay, it's really interesting to note though, Georgia Marsh just sitting on the bench, I, I really don't exactly know the rationale in, in that goalie change in all honesty. And now in on goal come the Destroyers. It's Georgia Bolt trying to take it to the net. Bussy looking for it out to the blue line. Here's Piercy, walks in, shoots, and Hillier didn't see it, it just went wide of the net. And now up ice comes Kennedy Goss. Not sure if they're related, but I know Cole Goss went to Queen Elizabeth as well, a part of the Pinnacle Growlers. Now here's Piercy in shoots, and what a save by Sarah Hillier. Another beautiful stop from her. She hung him to dry like a flake of salt fish. Beautiful stop. And there you see the shots on goal, nine to nine. So what an evenly matched game this has been so far. Seth, I gotta say, one of my favorite lines from you. Hung her out to dry like a flake of salt fish. We've heard it before, but very happy to hear it here at the Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup Finals. Sometimes you really gotta bring that out of retirement, Nick. The, uh, that was the call that started it all. And I'm so glad to be here, as I mentioned earlier. It's a true honor to call this game for these girls out here this afternoon. Beautiful pass up ice. Kennedy Goss gonna take it back here. But Discovery managing to get it around the boards. Turned over. Here's Deneen Walsh with it down behind the net, throwing it out in front, and they score! Unbelievable! Kennedy Goss parked in Wayne Gretzky's office, and she manages to put it in the back of the net, and Queen Elizabeth has climbed up the mountain. A phenomenal heads-up play by Kennedy Goss for her second point of the game. You'll see this here in the corner. That's gonna be number 20, Deanne Walsh, puts it out on the centering pass, bounces off the glove of Alexis Cooper and in a much deserved change there. Fresh slate now with 4.31 left in the second. And the game changes just like that. This has really been a game of ups and downs for both teams. And by the way, if you have any family members who can't seem to find the game, just let them know it's on rogers.com and the Rogers YouTube channel. And now here come the Destroyers. Look at this. It's White coming in on net. White shoots, rebound. Oh, what a stop by Hillier. Another great save from her in between the pipes. I got to make this comment, Seth, and I'm not one that I'm going to pick on officials, but that's the third quick whistle that should not have been gone today, really impeding the flow of play. Hillier had 
had it in her pads, but it was dropped down probably about a foot and a half, two feet in front of her. Hopefully that's the last time that'll happen. Now face off on her glove side. That was shot by the Destroyers, blocked in front. Here's White with it again, shooting just over the net. And now down the ice it goes. Bussy is going to chase. Banked off the boards, and now in comes Pitts. Pitts coming in on net, shoots. That's blocked. Pitts looking for it. Pitts bringing it in on net. Pitts still going with the puck, but she just lost it. And now Queen Elizabeth try to break it out of the zone. Gill throwing that one across to Goss. Goss coming in, back to Bussy. Bussy to Goss, some great passion between Goss, Gill, and Bussy, and Russ and those four have had some great chemistry. Here's Gill trying to take it away from Russell. Dumped into the zone, banked off the boards, and now Elliott is gonna get it. Elliott throwing it back up ice. Played up to Bussy, and now a chance. It's Goss coming in to Bussy. Bussy to Goss, to Gill. Oh, rebound freed, and they just clear it away, and the whistle goes once again. That puck was out in the high slot. That puck was 10 feet away from Alexis Cooper. So Nonetheless, some great saves from her on a three-on-one opportunity. We'll see Bossy with the pass off the stick of number 88, Madison Elliott. So you're gonna have Gil get in there, Goss in there, whole slew of pioneers poking away at it. So an unlucky call there for Queen Elizabeth as they look to bounce back here. Rustin loving that one down on the boards and Pioneers trying everything they can to keep it in, but not somebody you want to lose the puck to. It's Jordan Piercy, pass in front, just wide. Oh, what a chance by the Destroyers. Seems like in the second period they've had a bit of trouble getting shots on goal, but Hillier's done a great job of closing down the shooting lane and net, which is forcing the Destroyers to shoot higher up in net. And now Molin's gonna chase. Molin banks it off the side wall, and now another opportunity. It's Piercy taking it, driving to the outside. What a move, Piercy in front. Piercy getting it back, and has a collision there with the referee, and the Pioneers take it up the other way. Two minutes for body contact there against the ref. And now the Destroyers take it up once again. Lost on the boards, it goes to Georgia Bolt. Bolt gonna... Dump it down, White left to chase. Banked off the boards, the Destroyers managed to keep it in, a great hustle by Elliott. Elliott still holding the line. White gonna step in to help, White coming in from the corner. And now Elliott's still looking for it, she's gonna dump it back into the corner. Picked up by Penny. Penny pass ahead. Ross on the boards. And now the Pioneers take it up the other way. Bussy trying to get it. To, turned over on the boards. Chloe Pitts is going to try to free it. White stepping in to help. But now here goes Molly Gill. Pass to Goss. Goss bringing it in on that. And it looks like we have a bit of a lineup change here after the success they had last time. Bussy, Goss, and Gill are all out on the same line. Now, Aunt Kennedy Goss so far, goal and an assist in today's game. They're going to go for a change now, or will they? They. A semi line change here. Not really sure what QE was doing. Nonetheless, they just won that face off. Back in the Gill, throwing it out to Goss. Back to Gill. Gill trying to get it on net, throwing it in front to Rustin. It just gets away from her. Out to the blue line, dumped back in by Lambert. Now Rustin with a shot from the corner, already has one goal this game. Rustin turning it to the outside, throwing it back out in front to Lambert. Lambert, Gill shot just wide of the cage. Gill shot there, almost went off a skater to in front. 
And now it's a two on one the other way. A chance for discovery, but they just run out of time. The score after two is 2-2, two -two, and the shots are 13-11 to 11 in favor of Discovery. High scoring period in that one. As Jordan Piercy puts up her second point of the game for Discovery, that put them up two to nothing, but then two goals from Queen Elizabeth, one on Georgia Marsh, the other on Alexis Cooper. On a goalie change, it, I'm not sure why it happened. Marsh went back to the bench was dancing to the music. I, I don't know if they just put her in for a little bit of the game to give her the opportunity. Nonetheless, Cooper allowing a goal from Goss. This one's all tied up. The next 10 minutes are going to decide it. We'll be back in a moment. Two to two, Queenie versus Discovery here live on Rogers TV. back now 10 minutes to play in the third period in the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament Finals 2-2 two to two, the score between the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers and Discovery Destroyers over to you Seth for the call the most important period of hockey the third period my name is Seth Hyde alongside Nick Hillier for the third period of the championship game and both teams were getting really fired up over on the bench before the start of this period. It's going to be an interesting finish this game. Queenie making a comeback there in the second period. Banked off the boards and now away they come. Piercy coming in on net. Driving it to the middle, throwing out front. A shot blocked, rebound by Piercy and the net comes off. And we are going to have a whistle. The net coming off its moorings has unfortunately been the story of this tournament. I've been calling this tournament since 2000, and I believe it was 18, 17. It was a year the Mount Pearl Senior Hyowskis won for the second time. So 2018 is the first year I called this tournament with Rogers TV. And even back then with my broadcast colleague, Zach Power, it was brutal up the ice come the pioneers it finds its way up to maggie bussy bussy trying to get it to rustin rustin lifting the stick on the side wall of chloe russell now rustin gets it back out to the blue line and walks a ripped on net there by anna penny and a save and goal by cooper Cooper really flashing the leather. Queen Elizabeth was down considerably in shots early in this game. And now they are up 14 to 11. Face off going to come down blocker side of Alexis Cooper. Here's Rustin winning the face off through. Finding its way to Bussy, but the stick lifted there by Piercy. Piercy getting it away from Rustin on the boards. Ripped on goal by Penny once again. Now Rustin getting it back. Rustin throwing it out in front. Lost on the boards. Piercy trying to get it up ice. Banked off the wall. And now here comes Chloe Pitts. Lost to Rustin. Here's Pitts. 
Bringing it back up ice, away she goes. Hits, beautiful moves, almost got it to the net. Great effort from her. And now battling with it is Hannah White. White losing it on the boards to Molly Gill. Gill lost a penny up ice to Bussy. And now thrown ahead, Goss trying to get it. A collision there on open ice. But Gill is going to hop right on the puck shot. Blocked up in the air. And it is saved in net by Cooper. Fantastic chance there for Molly Gill. It's the Pioneers captain comes in on net. But we're going to have another look at this beautiful shot. Through the legs of the Discovery defender. Right in love of Cooper. Down around the boards, it's Pitts who will receive it at the other end. Pitts trying to take it to the net. Given out in front, lost on the boards once again, and it finds its way around to Fisher. Fisher pass up to Piercy, it just rolls away from Piercy, but she manages to get it back. Piercy taking it in, thrown out in front, it just goes through the middle. And now away goes Lambert. Lambert takes it in, shoots, and that one stopped in goal by Alexis Cooper. Great effort there by both teams on that shift. We're really getting short on time now. I'm feeling the tension in here, and it's the kind of tension that only arises when you have a next goal could win situation. Yeah, this is a bit of the situation the Leafs game was in last night with Tampa the next goal would win whether it was in the third period late in the second period it all came down to that and that's the same situation here and I gotta say I was very happy last night uh, first time in 19 years our Toronto Maple Leafs are on to the second round and Nick I know you're a Leafs fan as well Seth I, I dropped to my knees and just started to cry I look for contrast I'm now a substitute teacher <laughs> And the last time our Leafs won a playoff series, I wasn't even in kindergarten. Well, now that changes last night, and all the heartbreak and all the things us Leafs fans have been through is all washed away now. So hopefully they'll get past Boston or Florida in the next round. Here's Piercy taking it in on net. Piercy throws it out in front. What a defensive play by Deneen Walsh, I believe that was. Now banked off the boards, Rustin taking it to the net. It's a two on one, Rustin and Gill. Rustin shoots, blocker save. It's up in the air and it finds its way back down. Out to the blue line to Walsh. Walsh trying to get it and the net is off its moorings once again. A number of times that I've said that on air this tournament, I've, I've jokingly said I could make, if I had a dollar for every time I said it, a beautiful shot from Rustin there. Blocker save. Nobody knew where that one was going to land. I said, if I had a dollar for every time we said the net came off its moorings in this tournament, I could make this double ice complex a triple plex. Here's Rustin trying to take it to the net, and that'd be quite something. Lots of hockey would be going on if this was a triple plex. No more ice time crunches in the metro region. Absolutely. Thrown on net by Goss. Shot goes wide of the net. Picked up at the other end there by Alina Fisher, but it's just kept in by Walsh's shot. Steer just wide of the net. There's Hayward, just getting that one out, but it's just barely kept in by Penny. She walks in and shoots, blocked in front. Here's Penny. Finds its way out to Goss. Goss trying to pressure. Up ice it goes, and now away goes Piercy. Piercy comes in on net. She shoots just wide. Oh, what a chance from her. A great defense by Deneen Walsh. Molly Gill actually came back on that one. The two captains got in a great foot race. I mean, I think the QE Pioneers were very happy to have Gill right there where she was at in that point in time. Gill puts it down low. Pioneers stepping in and having a look. It's Goss to Gill. To Goss again. Goss back to Gill. And now Rustin trying to get it on the boards. Given up ice and now taking off is Chloe Pitts. Pitts in on goal, shoots just wide. It almost trickled past Hillier with 440 left to go in the third. And now Rustin. 
Makes its way out to the blue line to Chloe Russell. Backdoor feed, right idea. But Rustin just got her stick in the way. And now coming in is Discovery. And on net is Chloe Pitts trying to throw it out in front. Out to the blue line. Fake shot down around the boards. Chloe Pitts gets it once again. Pitts trying to take it to the front of the net. Out to the blue line to bolt a shot. That just goes wide of the net. And now here's Lambert trying to break it free. Turned over on the boards. It goes to White. White trying to get it around the boards once again. Kept in by White. A great hustle here by Discovery. The Pioneers are trying everything they can to get it out, but they just can't do it. But now they have Lambert finally getting it out of the zone. And Discovery looked for a penalty there on that play. That was a close call. Down around the boards it goes. Picked up once again by Maloney, but it's turned over in front to Bussy. A shot, rebound, and it's in! They score! The Pioneers pull in front with 3.19 left to go. Didn't quite catch who scored that one. We'll see who it is. It's Grace Nolan rings the door on the doorstep and says hello and puts it into the back of the net and it's 3-2 Queenie. That's actually gonna be Kennedy Goss. Goss right in front there. That's gonna be her third point, second goal of today's game. Unbelievable from her. A, a huge scramble there in front of the net. And Kennedy Goss, patient as can be, patient as a preschool teacher, and she manages to lift it into the back of the net, and that could be the goal that puts Queenie ahead and propels them to the championship. Another replay here, a great pad save, but it rides the stick of the goaltender, Alexis Cooper, rides the stick, just goes up over there uh, on a great goal from Goss. So, so both teams making their way back out onto the ice here. It all comes down to this. The last three minutes, 19 seconds of this game. 3-2 lead for Queen Elizabeth as the Destroyers are going to try everything they can. They're going to leave it all out there in order to bring the first ever Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament Female Championship home. So Nick Hillier is going to take off. He's going to go down at ice level to try to fetch a few interviews while the game is over. So appreciate Nick stepping into the booth with me for this game. Going down around the boards. It's Molin who's going to try to get it. Molin looking forward on the boards. Dump back down around. It's Kennedy Goss. Been involved in all three goals of this game so far. Molin trying to clear. Piercy steps in for it played up ice and now away go to the destroyers looking to make something happen here hayward taking it in on the net she cuts to the outside bringing it in on goal taken down by walsh there's walsh looking forward and we got a injury on the play there we hope that claire aylward will be okay Looked like she hit her uh, collarbone into the boards there. She's getting the trainer out on the ice, so we hope she will be okay here. Oh. 
last letter can you want to say fuck, you just want to be fair and celebrate it. I just kept scrolling out and scrolling in the Oh, look at this. No, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. So it looks like they're going to get the paramedics out on the ice here as they make their way out to see if they can fix up clear Hayward on the play. So Claire Hayward still getting medical attention down on the ice. Huge thank you to St. John's Ambulance who've been around here this weekend and helping out with the injured players. They're gonna take Hayward out on a stretcher here now as they bring it out onto the ice. So she landed awkwardly on her shoulder, it looked like. So we got <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm here down at ice level just on the far goal line uh, as one of the Discovery Collegiate players. I can't quite see the number. Number six is going to be down in the corner. She's attended to by uh, members of the St. John Ambulance. Uh, tournament officials on the ice as well. She went in awkwardly into that corner board, uh, favoring the left collarbone. Those are those are really tough injuries. Very easily, uh, very easy to happen, uh, and to no fault of anyone's own really. But uh, we're just going to keep you updated. The medics out there now as they're going to try and get her on uh, on the stretcher. That's what I'm seeing to my right here now. Obviously, out of respect for the situation, we're going to keep the cameras off of that but all the same a very scary uh very scary collision into the boards there uh, yesterday we saw the gander concords defenseman paul hughes hit into the stanchion next to the bench uh this one she's she's up she's been conscious the whole time uh we're looking now the medics just kind of stabilizing her uh, and making sure that she's going uh to be okay uh, we still have 2.35 left to play in this game. The Queen Elizabeth Pioneers are up 3-2. to two. Uh, I'm sure Discovery is going to use this as a bit of a rallying cry for themselves 
but obviously that not on anyone's mind right now. Right here, uh, our mind is on Discovery's number six. I wish I had the rosters right in front of me, but uh, all the same, we do hope for the best there uh, for, uh, for the Grace Nolan is who it is. Number six, Black. She, sorry, Grace Nolan is on Queen Elizabeth. Elena Fisher is the name of the player down there now. Number six for Discovery. Working on her now. Looks like there's uh, a temporary sling being put on to stabilize. Uh, but yeah, we're, uh, we're just waiting here. The game in delay. We were very late starting this game as it was. Uh, nonetheless, uh, hoping for nothing but the best. Queen Elizabeth just having a chat along their bench. Discovery, nobody's talking. They're all looking down in the end zone. Uh, is there going to get try now uh, and potentially get uh, Walsh up? Uh, she's still down, uh, being tended to by members of the St. John Ambulance. I believe there's a parent or trainer out there now as well. Tournament organizer uh, and uh, Obviously, on behalf of the entire Rogers TV crew, we wish the best there. Uh, what I think we're going to do now for the next minute or so, uh, we're going to throw it uh, possibly to some replays. I'll see. We yeah, okay, thank you. We are going to send it to replays for the next couple of minutes as, uh, as well as she's attended to uh, and taken off the ice by members of the St. John Ambulance. 3 to 2 with 235 left here in the third period of the championship game. The first female championship game here at the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. You're watching it live on Rogers TV. We'll be right back. Why is it close to What are they going to do with the course now? Oh, okay. Who cares? Wait, what do you mean the course? Joining us here live on Rogers TV during our coverage of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. We are here, 2.35 on the clock left in the third period. A member of the Discovery Collegiate team, the Destroyers. Uh, Elena Walsh, I believe, was the name. Uh, she's taken off now by St. John Ambulance paramedics, walking off under her own power, but visibly uh, in some pain. She went awkwardly in favoring the left collarbone. Uh, very scary injuries can happen there. Nonetheless, uh, she's walking off there now. They're getting the skates off her as there's, there's just concrete along over there. But uh, you'll see here her there on, uh, on your screen as both teams gonna get ready to resume play. Uh, the referees gonna try and get this underway and uh, get the game finished, obviously. Uh, putting uh, it on this one. Remember St. John Amlitz cutting across there on uh, in front of me here. But the face off outside the blue line, I'm going to throw it back up to Seth for the call on the last two and a half minutes. 
All right, thank you very much, Nick, and we hope that Helena Fisher will be okay. Off the boards, Queen Elizabeth take it back up ice here. Away goes Gill, bringing it in on net, playing it down around the boards. On the other side, Georgia Bolt's gonna get it, banked off the wall by Piercy, and now away go Discovery, bringing it up the other way. It's Chloe Pitts, takes a shot on Hillier, going just wide, Piercy. Looking for it, it goes down to White. Giving it out in front of the net. Finds his way out to the blue line to Bolt. Bolt with a beautiful move. Comes in on net, shot. Clear just wide of the net. On the boards, Piercy trying to take it away. Goss gets it to Walsh. Walsh up ice and now away goes Bussy. Bussy cutting back around. Bussy bringing it in on net. Turned over on the side wall, and now the Pioneers try to bring it up the other way. Played back down around the boards. It's Lambert. Lambert shoots. That one stopped the net. Now Walsh is going to get it once again. And as I mentioned earlier, we had a typo on our rosters of Deneen Walsh's name. So all weekend we've been calling her Wales. But luckily we had a fan come up and tell us that her name is Walsh. So our apologies for that. Gill pinning it up against the boards. Destroy is trying to get it free here and the ref lost sight of the puck and she will blow the whistle. And it looks like we have a timeout coming up here for the Discovery Destroyers. So it's back to the drawing board for them, seeing what they can cook up over there on the bench. Time is starting to run out for them. They're in search of a goal, in search of an answer of Queen Elizabeth's three unanswered goals so far. Discovery isn't out of this game just yet. They're gonna try everything they can to even it up before that final buzzer goes. picked up and dumped in Piercy left to chase kept in out at the blue line by Bolt Bolt trying to keep it in netminder out there for discovery with 50 seconds remaining can Queen Elizabeth hang on Hannah White's gonna get it on the boards back down around Grace Nolan gonna try to clear Rustin pinning it up against the boards and now Queen Elizabeth try to get it away it's Gill Molly Gill taking it up ice forced to the outside Trying to get it to the net, Gill cuts back, puts it down low, 25 seconds remains now. Turned over to Rustin. Back out to Goss, a shot blocked in front. And now here go Discovery the other way. Up ice they come, Chloe Pitts shoots, save, rebound, Piercy! Oh my goodness, what a save by Hillier. That was absolutely gorgeous from her. And that is a clutch save with 10.5 seconds remaining. And here's the replay. Coming down the wing as Chloe Pitts surprises her with a shot. And then the defense gets caught on their heels. Piercy brings it in and just barely, just barely, Sarah Hillier is going to get her stick on that one. Another shot on net and it's saved by Hillier once again. 6.1 left to go. Queen Elizabeth. Can they hang on? What a finish this is gonna be, folks. Face off, one back, pinned against the boards, and Queen Elizabeth are gonna be hockey royalty for the first time ever. We have a female champion, and it's the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. History in the making. Queen Elizabeth are your first ever Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament female champions put the crown on their heads. They are royalty. And huge credit to Discovery. They played a fantastic game 
Nobody expected them to be in the finals of this, so they should be very proud of themselves. Fought right down till the very end. And man, the stakes on next year's championship game's gonna be really high. The first one ever was so good. A great game from these two teams and the future of women's hockey is very bright. to hang on coming back from two goals down in the third period of play getting three unanswered goals Kennedy Goss is going to be hailed a hero as the pioneers win the first ever World Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament female championship what a game this was folks what an unbelievable game of hockey So here are three stars for the championship game. The third star, Molly Gill with an unbelievable game from her. She was all over the ice. Jordan Piercy with the second star with a gorgeous goal, which made it two to nothing. And Kennedy Goss, the hero with the golden goal of this championship game. Well done to those three young ladies. Player of the game for Ascension, number 95, Jordan Piercy. And the player of the game for Discovery is number 95, Jordan Piercy. Sorry, that's Piercy. Discovery. Great game from her out there this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> player of the game for Queen Elizabeth, number 20, Deneen Walsh. And player of the game for Queen Elizabeth is Deneen Walsh. Great game from her. <laughs> so the cup is in the building, folks. The first names that will be engraved on that trophy is the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. Welcome back. That was a great game. Congrats to the first ever winner in the girls' division of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. We will now commence with the awarding of the medals and trophies. I call upon Lieutenant Colonel Hatfield and the Tournament Director Gerard Brennan to present the silver medals. So Discovery will come ahead and 
received their medals. Well-fought tournament from them. They pushed the undefeated Pioneers to the brink and almost managed to come away with the W, but once again, such a well-fought game from both of those teams. forward to accept their medals and the tournament hat. presentation of the Beaumont Hamill Cup to the overall winner in the girls division. We call upon Colonel Hatfield, R.S.M. Wade, and the tournament director, Mr. Brennan, will present the cup to the winning team. Would the captain of the team and her two assistants please come forward? Three assistants, come forward. So, Pioneer is about to be presented with the Beaumont Hamill Cup. The first ever Beaumont Hamill Cup win. They get some pretty cool hats, a medal, that really nice banner. And now, for the first time ever, the Beaumont Hamill Cup will be hoisted. And it is by the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. 
who are your 2023 Beaumont Hamill Cup champions. I believe Nick Hillier is alongside Kennedy Goss with an interview. Down to you, Nick. Kennedy Goss, you guys scored three goals tonight. The one's off your stick, the second and the game winner. How did those feel tonight? Uh, it felt great, but, you know, obviously they were like a team effort. We all pushed and got the win. Now, Sarah Hillier stood very strong in net. How is it like having her in net? It's great having Sarah in that. She's a great goalie. Now you go get in that team picture there now. Congratulations on the win. Back up to you, Seth. Thank you, Nick. And what a game from this Pioneers team rallying back and erasing a two-goal deficit. But the Discovery team has been has played incredible this tournament. I'm sure everybody out in Ponte Vista is very proud of that Discovery team. As the celebration continues for the t team, we remind everyone to join us back shortly for the championship game in the boys' division between the Gander Concords and the O'Donnell Patriots. Thank you all for being here with us today and helping to bring the great sport of girls' hockey to the forefront. We look forward to seeing you back here next year cheering on the girls' players. Thank you. I believe Nick Hillier is down there with somebody else from the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers team. So Nick, what's the gossip down at ice level? Thank you very much, Seth. I'm here with the Royal Newfoundland Regiment player of the game, Tadine Walsh. Phenomenal game for you uh, with the Queenie Pioneers. Your, your teammates gathering in front of you for this one. What's the championship win like for you folks? Oh, this is amazing to be the first females to ever win this tournament. It's just an unreal feeling. Now. We talked about, we talked with Kennedy Goss earlier. K Kennedy with three points tonight. Sarah Hillier standing strong in that in both of your semifinal and finals games. What's it like to have this team uh, around you uh, for the Pioneers? Oh, this is amazing. We got an awesome team here, especially with Sarah keeping us in there in the back end and our top forwards up there scoring our goals, our rock solid defense. We got it. Well, congratulations on the first ever female Beaumont Hamill Cup uh, win. The Queen Elizabeth Pioneers, go on and celebrate with your teammates. Thank you. Back up to you, Seth. All right, everybody, a huge congratulations to the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers once again for being the first ever Beaumont Hamill Cup winners. Well, my name is Seth Hyde alongside Nick Hillier on behalf of all the Rogers crew. Thank you very much for tuning into this game. We'll be back here at 3.30 when O'Donnell Patriots look for the three-peat over the Gander Concords. My name is Seth Hyde, signing out, and we will see you next time.
Friday morning. How's your mom doing? She's fine. It's hard knowing she'll be here by herself, but she understands. I'm really gonna miss home.
I was a young man, I carried my pack and I lived the free life of a rover. From the Murray's Green Basin to the dusty outback, I waltzed my Matilda all over. Then in 1915, my country said, Son, it's time to stop rapping. For ten weary weeks I kept myself alive While around me the corpses piled higher Then a big Turkish shell knocked me arse overhead And when I awoke in a hospital bed And saw what it had done Then I wished I was dead
the pinnacle of high school hockey in Newfoundland and Labrador. The Gander Concords versus the O'Donnell Patriots. We are live on Rogers TV for coverage of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. This is the Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup Finals. The O'Donnell Patriots going for the first ever three-peat in this tournament, looking to become the first team to win the Beaumont Hamill Cup three times. The Gander Concords making their first appearance in the finals of this tournament. We look at these two teams, they are the two top teams, both coming into this game six and oh. Seth Hyde has the call on today's game. Up in the broadcaster's booth with him is Cameron Gill. Up to you, Seth, for the call. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Paradise Double Ice Complex for the biggest game of the high school hockey season. It's two undefeated Titans clashing at each other, the O'Donnell Patriots and the Gander Concords. I'm joined by Cameron Gill. And Cameron, how do you think this game is gonna go down today? Seth, this is without a doubt the most important and most exciting contest of the entire week. But before we talk about that, we're gonna head down to center ice for the national anthems. Welcome back to the Paradise Double Ice Complex for the championship game. It's the Gander Concords looking to win their first Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament championship. The O'Donnell Patriots at the other end of the ice looking to be the first team ever to do both a three-peat and win the tournament three times. Yes, the Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup on the line tonight. Two clubs who have went 6-0 and oh in this tournament. This is definitely going to be, without a doubt, the most important, most competitive, and most exciting game of hockey we have seen all week. We have a packed crowd here this evening. Seth, and here we go. It's time to watch some hockey. This is going to be an unbelievable game. Two very well-matched teams both undefeated but only one team will stay that way and only one team will bring the trophy home the gander concords looking to win this tournament for the first time since the school opened back in 1994 and a big check there to get this started off by adam pinson i believe that was for the gander concords and another hit from him alex kellaway gives it down low he tries to get it back out in front and the net comes off the moines and a fast paced start to this championship game. Hey, Cameron. Well, both clubs are going to be bringing that kind of attitude, I presume, throughout the entire game. It starts right off the first puck drop. Gander getting in the O'Donnell zone. They're going to be looking to take it home today. And Gander came out really fired up here. They got quite the fan support in attendance for this game, and that's got to be a big booster for them. Oh, most definitely. Here's Kellaway trying to get the shot off right away. He plays it back down low and let me tell you Alex Kellaway 
is quite the player. Plays for the Central Impact in the NL U18 Major Hockey League. Led the team in helpers this season. He also got second place in the fastest skater competition. And his sister also plays as netminder for the Gander Concord's female team. And now here they come on a two-on-one. It's a chance for Pinson, but he lost it to Evan Cross, who had two goals in the championship game last year. So he is no stranger to the spotlight, that's for sure. Here's Reed Fowler laying the pressure on. Kellaway gonna hop right on it. Fowler has it down low, giving it to Pinson. Pinson cycle out in front. It just gets away to the blue line. Sargent shoots just wide of the net. Now Noble taking it up the other way. Beautiful pass, but intercepted and shoveled back into the zone. And this Gander Concord's team is running wild on O'Donnell so far in this game. Down around the boards it goes. Stamp almost beating the icing, but it is going to be an icing call against O'Donnell. Shots on goal, 2-0 and oh so far for the Concords with 13-27 left here in the opening period. I expect to see plenty of shots coming on both netminders tonight. And goal for the Gander Concords, number 35, Simon Tompkins. Down on the other end, number 31, Eric Haas, Seth. On the boards, it's banked off the wall by Pilgrim. And now up the ice come the Patriots. Beautiful move by Stamp trying to get around. And this has been a rough clash between these teams so far. This is probably their last game this season. So they are leaving it all out on the ice. Well, the Patriots, regular season cut a little short as when they got into the playoffs, they did lose to the Holy Heart Highlanders. Now, this is their tournament. Despite losing in the Inner City League, they knew the Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup tournament was coming up. They're two-time champions, and they're definitely looking for their third here. And anything can happen. We saw earlier in the tournament, Stephenville got sh uh, shockingly eliminated Holy Heart in overtime. And this is almost like the March Madness of hockey here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Almost definitely. We've seen multiple different playoffs finishing up there starting with the uh, high school hockey league here in the city triple a hockey finished up as well as seth you're very familiar with junior hockey as well as uh, our very own nicholas hillier follows and for myself the herder memorial trophy playoffs just finished up last weekend as the southern shore breakers took home the iconic trophy in five games over the deer lake red wings and what an honor that must have been for those men. And this is the last event here on the hockey calendar. It's hard to believe it's come to an end already. But myself, being a Leafs fan, we get a bit of extra hockey uh, this springtime. So that's a bit of a treat for me. Yes, definitely. Outside of this tournament, the talk around the town here in uh, the greater metro area, and for that matter, across all of Canada, is the uh, magnificent win there by the Maple Leafs. The win their first playoff series in 19 years, but wasn't even born yet. No, nope. me neither, Seth. So we finally get to see it, and I've waited a long time for that. And you know who's waited even longer? The Gander Concord fans. This school's been around for 27 years, and they've yet to win this tournament yet. It was 1996, not 1994, the school opened as the St. Paul School High School and the Gander Collegiate merged together to form one school back in 1996. So that's a bit of history for you and a trivia question as well for you. Well, a lot of history out in the central area, of course. Oh my, oh my goodness. goodness. A big hit there by Alex Kellaway. Kellaway, despite, despite his small stature, he's not afraid to get in those corners and lane an absolutely beautiful check and taking down the linesman in the process maybe Alex Kellaway didn't like the call he made earlier in the week. There's Noble trying to bring it up ice, and there's Kellaway again. Look at that. He works like a dog out there, and him and Adam Pinson very, very familiar with in that uh, under-18 league, as well as Paul Hughes, who I believe is injured um, for this game, unfortunately. But those three, I've got the pleasure of watching pretty much all season. Here's Evan Cross, it just squeezes past him. Gives it across to Nate Nolan and turned over. It's Burns taken down, down low. King trying to get it on the boards. Cleared down the ice, it's 
picked up by Evan Sargent. And now just avoiding the hit is Russell, turned over to Noble. Noble bringing it in on net here. Losing it and it finds its way back out to Cross. Stick tied up, Payne takes a shot and a save by Tompkins in net. Around the boards, picked up at the other side by Blackwood and another body laid and now a chance for O'Donnell but that's turned over and now the other way comes Zach Russell, it's a two on two. Russell gonna dump it in. Chafe is gonna play it down around the boards. Just getting there out at the blue line is Blackwood. Shot just goes over the net. Blackwood takes a shot from the corner and it's gloved down in net by Haas. Excellent to note, Seth, despite taking a pretty nasty hit yesterday. Beforehand, actually, we're going to take a look here at the Alex Kellaway hit. Just really runs in and absolutely runs My over. Goodness. What a check by Alex Kellaway. And you can see the Gander Concord players uh, leaning over the bench and screaming their approval to Alex Kellaway. On the boards, it's Canning with it. Canning trying to dump it in now. Layden gonna try to take it away. Set to ice. Smith trying to power through here. Did a little spinorama there. Goodness, this has been such a fast-paced game so far. I couldn't imagine two better teams to be in this final. Well, I think walking into the tournament, Gander was definitely what you would call a sleeper pick to win this one. Not on anyone's minds. Nobody was eyeing them to do anything in this tournament, as that's pretty much been their history uh, since this tournament kickstarted just a few years ago. But definitely coming into this one with a different attitude, a different club, and they've proven that as they are now in their very first Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup Finals. And I'm sure everybody in Central is cheering on this Concord team. They've had a great season so far that the, the Central hockey teams they had their central impact go all the way to the under 18 final just fell short in that one and now they got the concords in the beaumont hamill centennial cup final so what an honor it must be for these players they also won the concord cup just recently yes the uh, Ghana concords swept the entire Cancor uh, concord cup my apologies there by a uh, magnificent difference Scores completely uh, obliterating most of uh, Central Newfoundland there in that one. Off the boards and played down the ice there by Nate Parsons. Now Peter Troke looking to get it on the boards. Troke plays that off the wall there to Kellaway. Kellaway sending that one all the way down the ice. Reed Fowler is going to chase Cross. Cross and Fowler battling on the boards. Kellaway moves in for it. And now Fowler sneaks it out in front of the net. It just rolled off the stick of Adam Pinson. Now out in front to Kellaway, got away from him. And a pinch there by Troke. Kellaway comes in for it. Pinson loving it down and a great cover for the D-man. Nolan going for the check, lost it. Cross is gonna get it on the boards. Here's Evan Cross, shots even at 5-5 apiece. Cross up to King, back to Noble. Noble trying to get it in the zone. Noble sending it up the middle to Ben O'Brien. It's a two on two. O'Brien coming in on goal. Beautiful move, but it was shut down by Evan Sargent. Sargent trying to free it on the boards. He's gonna intercept that one from King. Out in front of the net to Noble, turned over and Love down there by Pilgrim, but it is just called for offsides. Bit of back and forth action there between the Concords and the Patriots. Tied at 5-5 in shots now. We're gonna take a look here at the scramble in front of O'Donnell's net just a few moments ago. There was Kellaway looking for the wraparound, couldn't connect on Haas, and the puck went wide. So what a crowd in attendance for this game. I would say, if not, sold out it is very close to being sold out here at the paradise double ice complex and this arena has had lots of action uh this springtime they hosted the under 13 triple a provincials they hosted the under 13 triple a atlantics and now they're hosting the beaumont hamill centennial cup finals so busy last few months for this rink that's for sure well it is that time of year and when playoff hockey comes around without a doubt 
It attracts the crowds. Face off one back by Payne. Andrews gives it across to Pilgrim. Pilgrim trying to get it up ice, dumped back into the zone. Andrews is going to take it. Now Payne trying to send it across. Lost to Pilgrim. Pilgrim bringing it in on goal here. Pilgrim cutting to the outside. Stamp gets it to Payne. Cross on the boards of the Concords. Try to get it up ice. Reed Fowler. And it looks like we have a hand pass call against O'Donnell. Looks like both clubs are going to head for a bit of a change here. Get some fresh legs out on the ice for the Concords. Out comes the top line. Here's Adam Pinson, who's ready to take the draw on his left wing there. You see Alex Kellaway, who we've mentioned a couple times now and has been absolutely electric so far in this tournament, recording a hat trick earlier this morning. Him and Pinson have some unbelievable chemistry. The both of them are the top two on their central impact team. And actually, uh, Adam Pinson's dad, John Pinson, was best friends with my Uncle Steve when they were younger. Uh, John grew up in Clarenville and spent lots of time in my mom's house uh, with her brother Steve. So we know that family pretty good. Well, as uh, the story goes, Seth, especially in this province, it's a small world. Exactly right, Ken. And there's a lovely save by Tompkins, flashing that leather. Out to the blue line, Blackwood shoots, rebound freed, and it's just cleared away. It hit the linesman, and that helps out the Concords a little bit here. Dumped up the ice, Noble drops it for King. King bringing it in on net, beautiful moves. King trying to kick it right to the goal. He almost managed to get there. King out in front to Noble. Noble has it, throwing it out to Nolan. Nolan being pressured, Kellaway trying to get it. It just hopped over his stick. Now here's Fowler laying the pressure on out at the blue line. Pinson stepping in for it, banked off the boards. Fowler is gonna get it. Now Kellaway moves in for it. Kellaway still jabbing away for the puck. Dumped down around the boards and the Concords are gonna head for a change as the Patriots chase. Up the ice it goes once again, batted down in midair by Carter Yetman. He tries to take it to the goal. Turned over the toke and now up ice comes the Concords trying to make something happen. Another body laid there. Noble gives it across. And on goal comes Mole. Mole shoots it just wide and crunched against the boards is Troke. Troke still managing to power it just out of the zone here. There's Troke looking, waiting, sending it across. Glove down. Dump back down around the boards. Tom Kids is going to leave it, but Piercy will intercept. Piercy losing it on the boards, trying to clear it away out of the Concords. Lawler coming in, and that one called for offsides against Gander. A bit of extra pressure there coming from the Patriots, who are trying to get ahead in this one. Shots on goal, 6-5 to five in favor of the Concords, however, with 5.04 left here in the opening frame. Once again, the atmosphere here in this building has been absolutely electric. Both teams want this so bad. O'Donnell trying to continue their dynasty, and if you think about it, they've had this title for just about five years now due to the COVID uh, shutdown, which let them hang on to it for two more years, and then they won it again last year. Yes, the Patriots, no stranger to the Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup. But can the Concord steal the way from them? That is the big question this evening. The question I don't think any fans thought they were going to have to ask, but nonetheless, we see the two teams on the ice, and one of them is the Concords. And if any team can do it, it is the Concords. They have had that fire under their belly all tournament. They've had that fighting spirit 
and they might just be very well do it, but O'Donnell have really held them off defensively, and O'Donnell's got a pretty good back end, and they have really showed that out here so far in this game. Now O'Donnell trying to break it up here. Payne dumping it down around the boards. Chafe is gonna move in. Oh, a big hit laid on the boards there by Kosh. Now it goes down around Payne, laying on the pressure against Diamond. Diamond trying to poke it off the board. Stamp moves in, Payne trying to get it. And now it's a two on two the other way. Up the ice comes Canning, trying to lift it ahead to Layden, but it just got away. Layden still pressuring for the puck. Played out to the blue line. Kept in a shot by Troke, blocked in front. And now O'Donnell trying to break it up ice, but it's cleared back in by Kalen Layden. Now Alex Kellaway getting it there to Adam Pinson. He keeps it in and puts it down to Kellaway. Kellaway trying to sneak it out in front of the net, but Haas with another great stop. Now, Seth, we've talked about Kellaway. We've talked about Pinson. We've even mentioned Simon Tompkins between the pipes. But I think one player definitely to look very closely at in this game is Michael Canning. Canning, one of those players that when he gets the puck, he makes it very hard for the other team to get it. And when he has the puck in open ice, you usually find it a couple seconds later in the net. And those players are always pretty annoying for the opposing team to defend, that's for sure. Going down around the boards, Cross trying to get it. Here's Pinson laying the pressure on Cross. Looking for another two-goal performance like he had last year. A shot on goal, rebound freed, they jam away for it. And the whistle blows the play dead here. That was a close call for O'Donnell. And that first line is running wild in that zone. We're going to look at a Rogers TV replay here. You can just see Puck shot out front. Haas didn't exactly know where it was. You can see Callaway there digging for it with Pinson right in front of the net, ready to tap home a rebound. But the Patriots were able to catch a break there on that one, and the play was whistled down. Yeah, just a miscommunication there. Defensively, the puck squeaked out front, but the referee lost sight of it. Around the boards, Nolan's going to keep it in out at the blue line. And then Kellaway going to try to take it back. Still shoveling for the puck, and it finds its way all the way down the ice. Haas is going to play it to cross, and we saw last night Stuart Skinner, the Edmonton Oilers, broke his stick, trying to do the same play, which led for an easy tap in the, for Philip Deneau. So luckily that never happened to Eric Haas on that play. Up ice to Noble. Noble coming in on net, turning around, has a look. Liam Noble, who I believe you uh, mentioned he asked out his girlfriend during one of the games this weekend, Cameron. Actually, that was uh, Ash Mitchellmore of the uh, PWC Cavaliers who uh, made one of the biggest moments so far in this tournament. Arguably even more exciting to watch other than any of these games when a player asks out a girl in the audience and she of course said yes yeah it gets those two confused sometimes ash mitchamore and liam noble uh two players on the east coast blizzard and they are very much alike in their style of play a big battle on the boards there on the boards it's luke kosh trying to free himself poked free and now Noble getting it up ice it's O'Brien on his way in on net Ben O'Brien coming in on goal shooting off the side of the goal Tompkins gets across for that one and now up ice come the Concords in on net is Canning trying to free it Kalen Layden moving in for it now it's Canning with it down low Canning drops it down out in front to Layden, and it just squeaks free. And getting there to keep it in is Brandon Blackwood. Now, Kalen Layden trying to get it in on goal here. Blackwood shovels it back down into the corner. Pilgrim. Dumping that one down the ice, and will it get there for icing? Yes, it will. Folks, a shout out here with 22.1 left to go to the Gander Pilots Baseball Club. 
the entire team watching from home, as we mentioned. Many people in Central are watching this one, but a special shout out to them. They were awarded $100,000 today by the Blue Jays Foundation. So, shout out there to the pilots. Yeah, and a huge congratulations to them. And great charity work by the Blue Jays as well. Always trying to grow the game of baseball here, and that's going to be a penalty against the O'Donnell Patriots, and that's going to be... Didn't quite catch a call. Oh, boarding. It is going to be boarding. I believe that'll go to Stamp. Number 27, Andrew Stamp, headed to the box for two minutes. Going to take another look at this one on the Rogers TV replay. Oh. Just absolutely hammers, I believe. That might be, Callaway. that is Alex Kellaway. And I know. Got a bit of his own medicine there on that one. I, I know we've uh, given him a lot of praise, but he got right back up after that smashing hit and glad to see both players were okay just two seconds to go now here in the opening frame i think we're going to see this one tied at zero after one out to the blue line kellaway shovels a backhand and on goal it's blocked on its way to the net so after one, the score is zero for the Concords and zero for the Patriots. Folks, we're going to send it down here again to the man who kicked it all off, Nicholas Hillier. Take it away. Thank you very much, Seth. I'm here down in the Rogers TV uh, center here. Uh, going to walk the, our viewers through the trail of the Caribou and how these two teams got to where they are. Now, the O'Donnell Patriots played the host Holy Spirit Falcons, beating them five to one. The Falcons defeating Queen Elizabeth. That uh, matchup made in the quarterfinals. Now the O'Donnell Patriots given a good run for their money by the Prince of Wales Collegiate Cavaliers. Now we hop over to the side with Gander. And Gander dominated the Ascension Astros. Seven to nothing, the score of that one moved on to play their arch rival the exploits valley high eagles so it's going to be four to two in that game so they faced the stephenville spartans in the semi-final they took that one four to two obviously to get their ticket booked to the final but now the spartans a bit of the story of the playoffs they played the holy heart highlanders the metro league champions uh, and beat them 3-2 in overtime. Kyle Target, their captain with the goal there. Moved on to face the Holy Trinity Tigers. They were down 1-0 with 28 seconds left. They put one past Lucas Durant and pushed it to overtime to win that one and slay the Tigers, but couldn't quite get past Gander. Here you go. Both teams 6-0 back up to the broadcast booth for the second period. Thank you very much, Nicholas. We're back up here at the broadcast booth now, ready for the second period. As you mentioned, there's Steamboat Spurns, a bit of a miracle story. 0-3 in the round robin. They knocked off the, the inner city league champions, the Holy Heart Highlanders. And then in a heartbreaking loss by the Tigers, the Spartans took it. But one of the teams we see right now, as the second period gets underway, the Gander Concords were the ones who slayed the Spartans, and we see them now in this finals. Back over, back over to you, Seth. And it just goes to show anything can happen in this tournament. Stephenville 0-3, as you mentioned, and they managed to rally past the Tigers and Holy Heart Highlanders to get all the way to the Gander Concords, and they managed to stay undefeated, and that's why they are here in the championship game of this Royal Newfoundland Measurement Memorial Hockey Tournament. Sent up ice, dumped back in. And chasing it down is Peter Troke. Troke taking it up ice, faking out King Troke. Looking to go the full way here. Troke cutting to the outside, bringing it in on net. Thrown in front, rebound for Kellaway. A shot saved by Haas. Back to the blue line. Troke plays it in, Kellaway dancing past the defense, give it in front of the net, and it just gets away from Troke. Oh my goodness. So close. Oh, so close for the Concords there, Alex Kellaway. 
had a few great opportunities. And there's the Alex Kellaway shot from earlier. Almost managed to roof that one into the net. And actually, uh, who are we looking for here? Paul Hughes. Paul Hughes is back in the game. He had a injury earlier today, I believe, but we're so glad to see him back in action out here for the championship game. Now up the ice come the Concords, coming in on goal and shooting. What a save by Haas. Great effort there by Michael Canning. Almost dances his way to the net. Now King trying to get it on the boards. Canning pins him up against the wall. Kellaway moving in for just 20 seconds left on the power play. Concords have it down behind the net, looking for an open man here. Up ice to Kellaway. Kellaway bringing it in on net. Cutting to the outside, Alex Kellaway to the backhand, thrown in front, kicks it back to himself. Kellaway out in front of the net, walking in, shooting. Canning looking for the rebound. Scramble in front, and they just get it out. My goodness, O'Donnell have really been shutting down the Concords in front of their net, not letting them get any rebounds. Played off the boards, it's Luke Kosh with it. Trying to play it in, but Payne comes in. It's a two-on-one, tried to throw it on net, but it hit off Jacob Hiscock's mask, his cage. That's a good way to wake you up in the morning. Hey, Cameron. Oh, definitely better than any alarm clock you could ever get. And we do see here when that kind of stuff happens, usually the refs will blow it down. However, when the goaltender waves it off, hey, I'm okay, we can keep going, you won't see the whistle blown. Thrown out in front of the net, the Concords have a chance, and they score! The place erupts, Kalen Layden tucks it in like a fitted sheet, and the Gander Concords are on the board first. The crowd has gone absolutely wild here in front of us, Seth. We're gonna take a look here at the Rogers TV replay. You can see scrambling in front, Layden just barely oh able to tuck that so one close. in. What a great play there by him. Waits it out, knows this chance will come, and he wraps all the ways around Eric Haas there, and the Concords are up one to nothing. That was so close, O'Donnell almost kept it out of the goal. And this place has really exploded into life. The Gander Concords might very well do it for the first time in their school's 27 year history. Thrown up the middle, Canny managing to get it down low. Kalen Layden trying to get it on the boards. Andrews pins him up against the wall. Dumped back in by Diamond. Liam Noble with it down behind the net. Banked off the boards, turned over in front. In they walk, and it's just cleared away. It's Mole taking it up ice, banked off the boards, and chasing it down. Here is Piercy, but it is called for icing with 11.38 left in the second period. Said the Concords, definitely a bit of a sports story right now. Not supposed to be in this one on account of what the fans are thinking but they are now in this championship game, and so far, they have been controlling it. The two-time Beaumont Hamilton Tail Cup champions, the O'Donnell Patriots, haven't even been able to break past the Concord's defense so far. And because of that, it's Layden who got the Concord's up one to nothing. Banked off the boards by Adam Pinson as he tries to free it to Alex Kellaway. Many people searching for the puck with magnifying glasses down on the boards. O'Brien, oh, what a pass, a shot, and they score! What a response by Liam Noble! And the defending champs push right back. And it looks like I'm gonna have to eat my own words there on that one a little bit, Seth, as just like that, the Patriots break through exactly what I said they had to do. Beautiful pass, cross net. That one's picked off. And it's Liam Noble, who we see right now there on your own screens, who has the tying marker. And the O'Donnell Patriots have done exactly what they need to do here. 
is slide Simon Tompkins around. He's a bigger goalie, so he takes up more of the net. And if they just keep trying to shoot it right at him and not move the puck around, oh, they've got another one! A surprise shot by Ben O'Brien and the O'Donnell Patriots lead it two to one here. Unbelievable! What a shocking last 30 seconds here. Patriots go from trailing and now they're in front. It looks like O'Brien just completely fanned on that shot and oh, it, it somehow goes up. It hits off Tom Simon Tompkins' stick. Tompkins went to swipe it away and he hit it up into the net. Unlucky from him. He's only human after all. Dumped into the zone here, Pilgrim trying to get it. But as I was trying to say, uh, Tompkins, Simon Tompkins is a fantastic goalie. They need to slide him around a little bit because he's so big. They need to move that puck around, you know, try to find an open lane. That's the best way they can beat him. And also proc people in front of the net for tips and screens would be a big help to them. Tompkins, although looking a little shaky here in the last few minutes as the Patriots have now gained control of the game. Out to the blue line, Pilgrim managing to keep it in. And actually, Simon Tompkins' cousin, Curtis Barrett, was a netminder for the Gander Concords high school team, and he also played for the Gander Flyers. So he comes from a pretty hefty goaltending family. And I'm sure his cousin Curtis is very proud that Simon could do what he couldn't and make it to the Beaumont Hamill Championship game. We're gonna see the Patriots just dish that one down the ice as a pass wasn't able to be connected. And we're gonna head right back down to the Patriots end now as the Pinson line comes out there for the Concords as they look to get right back in this one with 9.47 left in the second frame. Here's Kellaway, throws it out in front of Pinson, is just shot wide and it looks like the net has come off its moorings. Ref's gonna reset that one there, and we're gonna head back to the same hash marks. So Pinson at the faceoff dot alongside Noah King. Around the boards, Noble's gonna get it, trying to throw it up the middle but it hits off Kellaway's stick and now in comes Pinson Pinson bringing it in on net losing it on the boards and now here come the Patriots looking for a third goal here and on net shoots and Tompkins makes the save another shot and Tompkins gets another stop dumped back into the zone it's knocked away in goal by Tompkins Third down the ice, Cross gonna dump it back in. Sent all the way down the ice once again by the Concords and it will be an icing call. And I think the Concords really gotta relax here that after the two O'Donnell goals, they've, it's been a bit of a fire drill in their own end. What do you think, Cameron? Well, it's definitely the, to note that the Concords, it didn't exactly change their game in any way. The Patriots, with the luck of the Irish, just got a couple lucky breaks on that one. It's important for the Concords to remember now, stick to their game, stick to the formula, pucks to the net, and eventually persistence will pay off. You're absolutely right, Cameron, and they have been working like dogs all game, both of these teams, but O'Donnell has dominated these last few minutes, and now it's a two-on-one the other way, and what a back check by Michael Canning. You were telling me earlier, what a hard worker he is. Like I said, definitely one of the star players for the Concords. You see Cannon coming up the ice now, really smart with the puck, knows how to get it, knows how to keep it. Here's Smith, leaves it there for Chafe. Now picked up on the boards, the Patriots bring it up ice. Mole coming in on goal, he's gonna dump it back in and Mole completely swiped off his feet by Kosh. Now trying to take it to the net, beautiful pass in front. Mole takes a shot on Tompkins and he'll knock that one away. Off the boards, 
Trying to twist away with the puck is Kosh. Losing it on the wall to Andrew Stamp. And now up ice comes Paul Hughes. Hughes bringing it down the wing. Already injured this weekend, as we mentioned, so what a trooper he is to come back to this hockey game. Kellaway gonna chase down Payne. Burns dumps it off the boards. Hughes avoids the check. Hughes trying to get it up to Kellaway. Off the wall once again. Banked off the boards, but it's turned over to Payne. And now here goes Alex Kellaway off to the races. Dashing to the outside. A lovely move from him. Slipping it out in front and nobody home. Great effort. Pinson off the boards. Cross is going to get it. Cross kept in. Out at the blue line. Kellaway trying to shovel it in front of the goal. Off the boards. Dumped back down around. Wood is going to try to chip it through. Stick lifted and it's turned over to Nate Nolan. Nolan trying to get it, it's banked off the boards and it's gonna roll all the way down the ice for an icing call and Cameron, let's say you were the coach of both of these teams, what would you say to them if you were on the bench? Well I think for the Patriots side, definitely important to note, look, we got a little lucky, we got some shots on goal, don't stop anything, up your game, keep going, keep the pressure on. For the Concords on the other end, remember, they did just get lucky, it's not something that you should let go to your head. Stick to your game. Keep the formula going. Eventually, it will pay off. We're not a bad team. We just have to keep playing the way we are. Here's Nate Parsons trying to free it. Sent out to the blue line to Nolan. And now he sends it across to Evan Cross. A shot! Oh, it just trickled through. But they managed to clear it away. A great defensive play there by Adam Pinson. And now it's sent up ice to Alex Kellaway. He brings it up the other way. Kellaway coming in on net. And that puck covered up by Eric Haas. And I just want to take this time to thank the Rogers crew this weekend, especially the cameraman, the, the people down in the van. I mean, everybody who's made this tournament so great. A huge thank you to all of them. What a lucky break there you see. Simon Tompkins, who was completely beat there on that one, but the puck didn't trickle into the net. Instead, trickles just across the crease, and the Concord still only trail by one goal. Lovely pass across there to King. Drop back over, and now here come the Patriots. And on goal, twisting away is Liam Noble. Out to the blue line to Pilgrim. Pilgrim shoots, saved by Tompkins. And Cameron, I gotta ask you, this next period is gonna be 20 minutes this third period. How do you think this is gonna change the game for both of these teams? Well, it seems like so far in this tournament, the third and final frame has always been the decider. As we see a lot recently. Before that, we're gonna take a look here. A great save there by Tompkins, who is solid on that play, but as I was saying, a lot can happen in 20 minutes, and sometimes everything changes in the final minute. You never know, right? And it's important for both these teams to stick to their game, keep the confidence up, keep the competition, and keep playing, because you never know when you're gonna get that break. So a brilliant game of hockey so far between these two teams. Shots are 18 to 14 in favor of the Patriots. Banked off the boards once again, and Layden's just gonna clear it down. He has the only goal so far for the Gander Concords. And now turned over up the middle, sent out in front, rebound! What a save by Haas! That is absolutely huge for the O'Donnell Patriots. And a big chance there for the Concords. Like I said, sticking with it, keeping the persistence going, and they almost beat Haas on that one. Now with an offensive zone faceoff, let's see what they can do with 4.54 left on the clock. It's gonna be an important finish. Both teams going back to the locker room. 
after this period concludes and it's lost and now O'Donnell racing up the other way stamp in a net shot wide rebound comes back out in front just cleared away now to Lawler Lawler giving it across a shot saved in goal once again by Tompkins out to the blue line to stamp in walks Lawler shot blocked in front losing it on the boards is Zach Russell played up ice Lawler just managing to keep it in on the play they still battle for it on the sidewall but it finds its way out to Zach Russell down around the boards picked up by Zach Diamond and Diamond is going to clear it down the ice and it just slows down on time Lawler going to leave it for Cross Cross trying to take it up ice Stamp leaving it for Chafe Chafe coming in on net, losing that one on the board. Now Stamp. Stamp throwing it in on goal. Lost once again to Paul Hughes. King trying to pass it out in front of the net. Stamp battling for it, and helmet of Brandon Blackwood comes off. And now here's Kellaway. Kellaway trying to take that one in on goal. Here's Kellaway, pinning it up against the boards. Now O'Brien is going to intercept. O'Brien giving it up ice. Oh, fanned on pass by Noble. Back into the zone, it's Paul Hughes. Hughes clearing that one down, and now it's Kellaway. Losing it to O'Brien. Trying to get it, Noble freeing it, and he clears it down the ice, and icing waved off. Now Nate Parsons up the middle and banked off the boards. Here's Nolan with it. Nolan, oh, what a beautiful pass. Here's Noble, and on goal, shoots and scores. Liam Noble with his second of the game. Like a Ruffles chip, you can't just have one. It's three to one for the O'Donnell Patriots, and what a way to go into the second intermission, Cameron. What a pass there. Perfect play by the Patriots, just outsmarting the conference team on this one. And what a break there for Liam Noble, who is on the board yet again here with 2.36 to go. Lots of work, it seems, for the Concords now, who are in a very tough spot, perhaps the toughest they've been in so far, in this tournament. Pass off the boards by Layden. Here's Luke Kosh trying to keep it in the zone. Great play by Kenny. Now he's going to exit the zone and dump it back in. Pilgrim going to take it away. Throwing up the middle. What a pass. Here's Mole in on net. Mole cutting back. Oh, beautiful move. Turned over to Canning. And now back down around the boards. It's being picked up by Evan Sargent. Now away go the Concords. Pass up ice. In goes Layden. He shoots. Stopped in goal by Haas. Now back down around the boards. Liam Noble up the middle of the stamp. Turned over and dumped back into the zone there by Kyle Burns. And it is going to be covered up by Haas. 135 to go here in the second frame. Shots on goal, 21 to 16 in favor of the Patriots, who says have really turned this game around and have put the Concords a bit back up on their heels as they lead three to one. So 135 left to go in the second period of play. It is three to one for the O'Donnell Patriots as they look for their three-peat and to be the first ever team to win three World Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament championships. Here's King taking it to the outside, to the blue line, to Nolan. Fans on the shot, still manages to get it into the corner. Pass across, King. Oh, what a shot. But Tompkins managing to make the save and we got a whistle here. We didn't hear it, the crowd is so loud, but it is a whistle against O'Donnell. I think the Patriots were a little bit confused there on that one as 
the Concord's really backed off out of nowhere, and I think the Patriots kind of slowed down and thought, whoa, whoa, what's going on, before they realized that the whistle had blown. As you said, the crowd very loud here. Sometimes even the players weren't able to hear the ref call the play down. O'Donnell having a look, cross, dumping it in on goal. That one turned over. And now here's Adam Pinson, sending it down the wing, thrown in front to Callaway, just getting away from him. And now O'Brien, sending it up ice, Noble to the outside. Noble waiting, giving it to Nolan. Nolan shooting, and it just hits the upper netting with 31.8 seconds left to go in the second period. to Canning. Here's O'Brien. Trying to take it up ice. Chafe losing it. Noble turns it over and open ice. Now Canning trying to take it to the net. Turned over O'Brien bringing it up the other way. Time for one last attack. O'Brien trying to shovel it to the net out to the blue line to King. King dumping it in. And that's going to do it, folks, for a second period of play. So the score after two is three for O'Donnell and one for Gander Collegiate Concords, live from the Paradise Double Ice Complex. Folks, shots on goal, 22 to 16 in favor of the leading Patriots. Before we chat a little bit about what the first two periods have been like, once again, I'm going to send it down to our broadcast partner, Nicholas Hillier. Take it away. Thanks, folks. I'm here with Adam Pinson, captain of the Gander Concords. Now, heading into the third period, down 3-1 to one against the defending champions. What's the game plan? Uh, we got to get a lot more shots. We're not testing this goalie. And I think we had to keep our forwards high. They're, they're blowing the zone every time, getting the odd man rushes on us. And they've capitalized on that a few times now. So, got to play better D and get more shots, I'd say. Now, what are you guys doing right so far that you want to stay here with uh, the O'Donnell Patriots make sure that this lead doesn't go any farther. Uh, we're forechecking the deep, putting pressure on them, and they're turning pucks over, so that's good. We want to do more of that. And uh, breaking out of our zone, we're doing pretty good. I think you were using the glass well, so got to keep that up and then add the other touches, and we should be able to bring this back, I think. Best of luck. Thank you. We'll be up back to you in the booth, Seth and Cameron. Thank you very much, Nick. And what a first two periods of play that was, Cameron. Seth, some great hockey so far in this game. O'Donnell catching the Concords a little bit off guard there. Despite trailing, first of all, the Concords would fall behind as the Patriots came back, striking not once, not twice, but three times. They lead 3-1. to one. Who do you think is going to have the upper hand here in the final frame? I think Gander Collegiate are going to come out with a bit of fire under their belly. They're coming in here to St. John's trying to prove themselves, trying to show that they're not a team that people can walk over anymore. They got something to prove, and I think Gander's going to come out flying here in this third period. The 20 minutes could be a difference maker in this third. Well, it has been so far in this tournament as we've seen multiple shockers come in the final 20 minutes. And as I said on the broadcast, sometimes even in the final few seconds, you never know what can happen here in this tournament. You never know what can happen in hockey. The Concords, not the most luck they've had in the past in this tournament, not having exactly the impact they've wanted to, but they came into this season. Great performance by them in the Concord Cup. Coming in here, very competitive. Before we talk a little bit more about this, we're gonna send it right back down to Nicholas Hillier who's ready with an O'Donnell Patriots player. Thank you very much, Seth. I'm here with Liam Noble of the O'Donnell Patriots. It, current score, three to one for you guys. Two of the goals came off your stick and one of the assists. How has this been feeling for you so far? Uh, pretty good. Teammates have been setting me up really well, and everything's clicking, and we just got to go for one more period. Now, you have the chance to become the first team to get the three-peat here in this tournament. What would that mean to you guys? Mean everything. 
I mean, the boys are great. We just want to win this game so bad. Now, I want you to talk for a second about your goaltender, Eric Haas. He's been playing great so far this tournament. How are you guys going to support him now in the last 20 minutes? Uh, we just got to get the pucks out of our zone. No shots on him. He's been playing great all tournament, all season. He's got to keep it going. Best of luck. Thank you. Back up to you, Seth. In the Actually, no, sorry. We are going to go right to replays. Nine minutes left in the intermission. We'll be back after this.
All right, welcome back, everybody, to the third and final period of play of the championship game between the O'Donnell Patriots and the Gander Collegiate Concords. Well, well the Seth, first two periods of play it was. Cameron, what do you think? Well, Seth, this is what we've all been waiting for, the final period. O'Donnell, I think they've put up so far the best fight against this Concord team who are caught a little bit off guard, weren't exactly sure how to react. I guarantee you, though, after a great chat now in the dressing room, a good break, they're ready to go. We're ready to go. Third period action is underway. And this O'Donnell team is very experienced. Multiple players coming back from last year's team. So they know what they're doing, and it's not going to be easy for Gander to make a comeback here tonight. Sargent dumping it down around the boards. He tries to keep it in, making its way all the way down the ice. It's picked up by Troke, but it is going to be an icing call. Well, lots of support in the building from other schools. I see lots of Gonzaga, Holy Heart players here in attendance, a lot of Holy Spirit players. A few Queenie players here who just won the girls' championship. Here comes Payne, trying to get it up ice. Stamp bringing it in on net. Stamp taking it to the outside, trying to throw it on net, and it's banked off the boards. Blocked in front by Sargent. Giving it to Canning, who shoots. Blocked out to Sargent. Again, another shot, and it's saved in goal. Now Stamp banks it off the boards. Up ice to Liam Noble, looking for a hat trick. And nice, calm play there by Simon Tompkins. Coming out of his net and banking it off the boards. Here's Noble. Being pinned up against the boards. Out to the blue line. Going back down around the boards. King lost to Kellaway up ice. Reed Fowler trying to get it. Played back into the zone. Paul Hughes will pick it up. Hughes around the boards to Sargent. Picked off the wall and taken down as Pinson looking for a penalty there. And I'm surprised there hasn't been more penalties in this game. We've only seen one so far in this one. And now O'Brien, throwing that one on net, blocked. Now it's down around the side wall. Banked off the boards by Pinson. Now here's Kellaway taking it up ice. Kellaway pass across and going all the way down the ice and Haas is gonna elect to cover that one up. Well, Seth, as you just mentioned, a little bit surprised over the lack of penalties, but what I think everyone has to remember here is that this is the championship game. It's important for both teams to play it cautious, play it safe, because neither team wants to be down a man and on the penalty kill. Finding his way out to the blue line. Shot blocked there by, I believe that was Lucas Andrews. So a great play from him, and he'll definitely be feeling that one in the morning. Thank off the boards, Andrews. Trying to get it ahead, but Hughes plays it off the wall. Here's Budgel. Giving it back out to Andrews. Back to Budgel. Lost on the boards and chasing it down is Diamond. Now here's Budgel trying to take it to the net. Turn over and now the Concords are going to bring it up ice. Dumped down around the boards. Picked up again on the wall and it's Layden trying to shovel it to the net. Layden trying to get it to the blue line, lost to Budgel. Now Hughes is going to try to get it. Dumped back into the zone. Left behind by Tompkins. And now away go the Concords, bringing that one up. Ice. Beautiful pass across there. Just getting ahead of Luke Kosh. And he's taken down by Jack Chafin. The fans love that one. Here's Payne. Sending it up the middle. O'Donnell making their way up ice. Wood down around the boards. Picked up at the other end by Hughes, but it's intercepted by Lawler. Concords get it back. Zach Diamond. Trying to get it around, it goes to Stamp. 
Lawler shoots, blocked, now Payne. Payne coming in, shooting, and it hit the crossbar. Great effort there by Payne. And now here come O'Donnell again, over to Chafe. Chafe shoots, and another save by Tompkins and Cameron. I don't know if you noticed this, but O'Donnell are really favoring that left side of the ice and the blocker side of Simon Tompkins. Forehand, we talked about that. We're gonna take a little look. What a collision there between what looked to have been Luke Kosh and Chafe of the Patriots. But yes, I think the Patriots might have found a bit of a weak spot there on Simon Tompkins, and they were definitely eyeing that one as they put on a lot of pressure there on their last shift. But out came the Pinson line now to hopefully weather the storm a bit for the Concords. Up ice to Noble. Noble bringing it in on net, looking for a hat trick. He could dethrone uh, Evan Cross's two goal performance in last year's final, but it's gonna be hard. Well, this, this old down Patriots team is just so full of talent, so many players to look towards, and so many players to really keep a close eye on, and Liam Noble is definitely one of them. That one just goes up and over the glass and actually a fun fact about the gander concord's name a concord is a supersonic airliner so if you're wondering what a concord is there you go well the concord with that it's one of the most iconic aircraft to have ever been built and was a mainstay at the gander international airport for a number of years actually the concord was first tested at the Gander International Airport due to uh, the sheer, sheer size of the airstrip there. But I think that's uh, exactly why the uh, Gander Collegiate picked that iconic jet for their team name. Yeah, definitely a really cool name. And maybe for their goal song, they should use Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins. That'd be pretty appropriate, the Top Gun Maverick theme song. Yeah, that would definitely be a... A neat idea for sure. Here's Noble giving it across to Nate Nolan. Nolan up to Noble. Beautiful breakout here by O'Donnell. O'Brien trying to take it to the net, who right now has the golden goal as it stands. King taking it to the net and a stop by Tompkins. And we saw in the last championship game, Queenie down 2 0, managing to come back and win it. Will we see the same thing happen here tonight, Cameron? Well, anything can happen as I've mentioned before here in the third period but uh, over five minutes gone now is 1444 sits left on the clock here in the final frame the big question now is can the Concords soar their way back to success here's Mole getting it on the boards and that one turned over I think the the next goal pretty much is gonna be the one that's gonna carry through in this game, whether it's Gander who scores or whether it's O'Donnell who scores. The next goal is so important for these two teams in this game. Well, for the Concords, the next goal means a fighting chance for the Patriots. It's an ensuring one. We'll see who gets the next one. Around the boards, Piercy looking for it, Budgel steps in to try to take it away, but the Concords take it up the other way. Beautiful move around there by Zach Russell. He tries to get it to Kellaway. Kellaway trying to just slip it out in front of the net. Oh, a beautiful pass, and we got a penalty coming up. Our second penalty of the game. And the Gander Concords are gonna be on the power play, and what a big moment in, in this game this is, Cameron. Well, now a big opportunity for the Concords as they will be on the man advantage for the very first time this evening. Get a look at the Concord power play, which has so far in this tournament been very effective. And just to note some of the names that are gonna come out here for the Concords. As I mentioned before, the Pinson line has been very effective and we see him right now ready to take the draw. The team captain, Adam Pinson, he's joined there by Alex Calloway and to his right, Peter Troke, surprisingly uh, enough, is going to be out there with them. So 13.50 left to go in the third period of play. We'd like to do a shout out here uh, and say hello between, uh, on behalf actually of 
myself and Seth to the over 300 viewers we have watching just on YouTube. We hope you guys are all enjoying the feed and uh, have invested in this very exciting matchup. Yeah, this, this tournament wouldn't have been possible with both the volunteers and the viewers at home, so thank you guys so much for all the support this weekend. Now up the ice it comes, the linesman gets in the way there, dumped in, Tompkins is gonna glove it down and he'll elect to cover that one up. Just, just a tough break there for the Conquerors, but we're gonna see up front here how close some of their chances have been, specifically that one the there. That was the cross-checking penalty there against O'Donnell as well. Down behind the net, Paul Hughes has it. Looking to take it up ice, it just rolled off his stick. Michael Canning has it on the boards. Canning cutting across, bringing it in on net. Going to the outside, taken down, and another collision in on the glass. Now Kellaway gonna get it. Trying to take it to the front of the net, out to the blue line. Sargent to Kellaway. Down to Pinson, to Kellaway, to Sargent. Sargent holding and waiting, giving it to Kellaway. Down low, pass back to Kellaway. What a give and go feed by Pinson and Kellaway. And it almost paid off for them. And it's actually both of their last high school hockey games of their careers. So this is extra special for them. Just an excellent passing play there by the Concords. Who have demonstrated so far in this tournament that they have the chemistry, they have the know-how, and you see it right there. Very clued together well team. But the score remains three to one with 40 seconds left to go here on the Concord's power play and just 12.25 to go here in the third period. Here's Zach Russell giving it to Sargent. Sargent starting to take it up ice. Bringing it in on net here. Trying to send it over to Pinson and a check after the whistle. And Gander looking for a call. They're not going to get it, and they have 20 seconds still left on that power play. Bit of shoving down there between the Patriots and the Concord. Zach Russell there trying to reason with the refs, pointing out what just happened there after the whistle, which was blown down due to offside. So we're going to get a face-off here outside the Patriots zone along their very own blue line with 12 10 to go here in the final frame shots on goal 25 to 18 in favor of the patriots here's stamp winning the face off back to chase and now tensions are starting to get high in this game i'm not going to be surprised if we see a lot more penalties here in this game now to the blue line pinson drops it back it's michael canning taking it to the net and we're back to even strength here it goes down low to Pinson Pinson cutting around the outside trying to take it to the net Kellaway gets it on the sidewall back to Pinson throwing it out in front and the net comes off unlucky there for the Concords we're going to take a look here on the Rogers TV replay but pushing something you can just see there as Stamp shoving down what I believe was Evan Sargent on that play and Stamp is just going to skate away on that one as the refs actually surprisingly made no call on that play. That would have had the Patriots down to a five on three penalty kill. They luckily avoided that one. Out to the blue line, big shot on net by Diamond. And now battling for it is Kosh. Around the boards and at the other end is picked up by Diamond. Giving it back down low and banked off the side while Lawler's gonna get it. Lawler leaving it behind there and is picked up by Alex Wood. Kept in out at the blue line by Diamond. O'Donnell trying to break it free and a huge check on the play and we got a penalty coming up here against the Concords. A rebound out in front and it's saved by Tompkins. And so O'Donnell are going on the power play. It is a head contact call against the Concords. And for the first time this game, O'Donnell send out their special teams lineup. 
Well, both clubs kind of trading power plays there as we see Evan, sorry, Zach Russell head to the box now for the Concords. And the Patriots are going to have a chance to take a commanding three-goal lead. Can they do it? You see their captain there. Noah King. He loses the draw there to the other captain, Adam Pinson. There's no one with it out at the blue line. Giving it across to Evan Cross, shooting it on net, rebound, they jam away for it, and Tompkins managing to hang on. Fantastic stop from him. It's excellent pressure there from the Patriots who are, like I said, really trying to just drive this one home and ensure tonight's victory. Yeah, they gotta hang on for another 10 minutes and 37 seconds in order to bring home their third straight Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament Championship. Here's Cross moving in, rebound freed in front. Noble going to send it back out to the blue line across. Cross, Noble shoots, and it is saved by Tompkins, and it hits the netting for a whistle. The Patriots here now really applying the pressure here on the power play. The Concords. Not exactly able to control this one. We're gonna get a look here at the head contact call. I believe that was a headbutt there on that one, it seemed. Down behind the net, it's Nate Nolan trying to break that out. Nolan cutting to the outside, has a look to see what he can do as he brings it to the net. Nolan shoots, stopped in goal. Nolan gets it back once again. Nolan with Noble out at the blue line. Noble waiting, giving it out to Nolan. Nolan waiting. Nolan waiting. He takes and the shot is stopped by Tompkins. His save number 26 of the game tonight. Well, I think for Tompkins, it's extremely important that he play his best game possible as there's still 2.50 left here on the Patriots power play. If the Concords can kill this one off, it will not only be a big confidence booster, but it will present them with a great chance to get at least one back here in the third frame. Nolan out to Cross. Cross brings it in on net. Nolan back to Cross. Cross shoots, tipped over the net. Down behind the net, Noble has it once again, creeping his way out front. Gives it to Cross. Noble shoots and Tompkins with the save, and he has been the rock of this game, the Concord team in this third period. Well, Tompkins just excellent tournament for him. He's played extremely solid so far, contributing well to the Concord's 6 and 0 win-loss record here. Face off one back, Concord's going to clear it down, and that was actually a four minute penalty against the Concord's. So, 2.10 left to go on that one. There's O'Donnell trying to break it out of their zone. Noble bringing it up ice, and they've had almost a two minute shift so far in this one. They came out about 30 seconds into the power play, and they haven't come off since. There's Cross to Noble. Noble fakes, waits, shoots, and scores! It's a hatful for Liam Noble, a hat-trick in the championship game. And the O'Donnell Patriots score on the power play and make it 4-1. to one. That might just do it, Seth. What a beautiful goal there. Noble waited. Went from the forehand back to the backhand and just shot that one. That one goes to the top right corner. As we can see from our view here in the press box, it seemed like a couple fans were throwing their hats down onto the ice. What a performance by Liam Noble, I say. Yeah, hat trick in the final. Got to be a big deal for him. He must be pretty proud of himself over on the bench, that's for sure. And a huge reason why O'Donnell have marched on to the final here. Played off the boards, it's kept in by Payne. Now to O'Brien. And a 
off the boards, lost to Pinson. Here goes Adam Pinson, taking it up ice, sent ahead. Lovely move, it finds its way to Kellaway, who tries to get the shot through, but Cross manages to get down and block that one. Played off the boards, lost, O'Donnell bringing it up. Payne giving it into O'Brien, beautiful move. O'Brien coming in on net, but it's lost to Hughes. Now up ice they go, it's Adam Pinson. Cutting away, he plays that one down low. Chasing his backwood. And now it's Carter Yetman stepping in to help, avoiding the check, and he runs right into the glass, and it just finds his way down the ice here, and left to chase is Paul Hughes. Hughes off the boards, Nolan is gonna clear it into the zone. Hughes gets it down low. Sent up by Smith. Getting that one, playing it in to Stamp. Stamp has a look, banks it off the boards. Cleared back into the zone. And now, Brightfield back in on net. Haas turns that one away. Around the boards, Wood is going to pick it up. There's Wood. Trying to get it, lost once again to Smith. Batted down, turned over to Zach Russell and a bit of pushing and shoving there after the fact. Played back in, Andrews is gonna get it. Andrews throwing it up to Wood. Wood now giving it up ice and Stamp coming to the outside, goes to Wood and it is offside. Tompkins makes the stop. Pass across there. Luke Kosh taking that one up ice. Kosh coming to the outside. He's gonna dump it down around the boards. Haas playing that one back up ice. Turned over to Kalen Layden. He gives that one down around the boards. Andrews. Out shot, just goes wide once again. There's Kalen Layden. Turned over, flipped ahead. Nice glove play there by Diamond, but O'Brien brings it in, sent out front, and Tompkins with the stop. Beautiful save from him. That's save number 27 for him in this game. He has been completely peppered with shots so far in this one. Dumped down around the boards. Canning is going to chase. It's Jack Chafe giving that one up ice. Thrown ahead, King. Coming in on net, toe drag shot blocked. O'Brien trying to get it. King looking forward on the boards. Kellaway stepping in to help. Just 5 10 remaining here in the third period. Cleared up ice, turned over to Noble, a shot wide of the net. Now O'Brien dumping that one back off the boards and sent up ice. Kellaway just gets under his stick and it will go the full way for an icy goal. Gander just looking a little bit in shock as that seems to be their attitude right now playing as they are down three goals score four to one with 456 left to go the Patriots have them right where they want them not much time left on the clock if the Concords are going to have any chance of taking home their first Beaumont Hamels attention call I'd say Gander do look a little bit discouraged out there, but I mean, even though they are down four to one, they should at least pour it out with everything they have. This is their last game of the season, so I say leave everything out there. And I don't care about the loss. If they come out with drenched in sweat, I think it's a win for them. Almost oh, definitely a very impressive season here for the Concords. Something to definitely build on. Yes, a couple of their star players like Kellaway, Pinson will be leaving the team as they will be graduating, but this is most definitely a team effort, and everyone so far on this Concords club has looked great. Here's Payne. He's going to pick that one up. And O'Donnell has done a great job, though, of countering this Concords offense. That offense has been incredible this whole week. But O'Donnell's defense has been playing incredible in this one, and their offense is backing up their defense, if that makes any sense, and that's why they're up 4-1 here in this game. Payne 
taking a shot, hit a body on its way to the net. Stamp plays it down around the boards. Played up ice, Nolan's gonna get it. 3.45 left to go in the third period of play. It's Troke with it down behind the net. Troke giving it across. It's Kalen Layden with a gorgeous pass, cross ice. Stick lifted by Lawler. Lawler taking that one up the other way. 3.20 left to go here in the third period. Lawler's gonna chase it down. Lovely check on the play by Kalen Layden with the only goal so far for Gander. They need three goals in three minutes here to send this game to overtime, and that's going to be a high-sticking call with 3.05 left on the clock. Well said, time a ticking here on this one on the Concord season. As you just mentioned, 3.05 left on the clock. Patriots leading 4-1. Do we already know this year's champion? In other words, can the Concords come back? We'll have to wait and see here as we have now breached the three-minute mark and are down to 250. Sargent giving that one to Pinson, and now the top line is back out there just to see if they can get back into this game. Off the boards, Kellaway going to chase it down. Callaway pinned against the boards by Cross, and that one goes into the bench with 2.32 left now in the third. Shots on goal, 33 to 19 in favor of the leading Patriots who have since really just taken complete control of this game. A little bit surprising as the Concords were the first one to get onto the board, but the Patriots have stormed back and showing their knowledge and skill and effort which they have gained through winning this tournament twice already seems like they are in good hands i'm just gonna say after the concords conceded those two goals it seems like that really took the wind out of their sails in those last few moments of the game O'Donnell with another shot on them, looking for a fifth goal here. And now Stamp tried to glove that one down, but it finds its way down the ice. Thrown on net, lost to Mole. Mole taking it down the wing, cuts across the top. Lost Canning, he's gonna dump it in. Here's. Brady Lawler giving it across to Andrews. Andrews off the boards. Payne is going to lose it. And now Haas is going to elect to cover this one up with 113 left to go in the third period. It's 4 to 1 O'Donnell. And I think it's safe to say that this game might just be over. What a game of hockey between these two teams. I don't think the score does it justice. Uh, the Concords really fought till the very end here in this game, and they're still trying to put the puck in the back of the net. Wrap around chance for Kellaway, hit the post. And now some pushing and shoving after the whistle, and oh, this has really brought something on. Everybody's involved here, and things have really kicked off. Oh my goodness, everybody's still swinging at each other. They've got to calm this down. And both clubs getting very heated. And there. now look at this, still swinging, and they're still going at each other. Oh my goodness. It all started with the hit against Evan Cross. He was slow to get to his feet, and then a few punches being thrown down behind the net and it all kicked off.
So both players being kicked off the ice, Carter Yetman and Noah King. Well, uh, quite the way to uh, start off this last minute of this game. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. I've been calling mostly minor hockey, and obviously we don't see uh, line brawls in novice or anything like that, do we, Cameron? No, definitely not, but as you can see here, with 59.2 left on the clock, one team heavily being favored. The other seem to have gotten a little heated and uh, pushed back there from the Patriots, and, you know, one thing leads to another, and before you know it, the helmets are off, the gloves are off, and here's the brawl. Yeah, the emotions getting the better of both teams here. So 59.2 seconds left to go in the third period. It's four to one for the Patriots and another player being kicked out of this game. That'll be Evan Sargent who's headed out here with under a minute to play. So everybody being thrown out of this one. Refs now. Having a chat with the timekeepers. Meanwhile, Patriots player, Nate Nolan seemed to have been getting the crowd really into it. So the end of this game could take a lot longer than we anticipated. Yeah, it seems to be a bit of a delay here by the refs who have to have a chat with both clubs. They seem to have a sheet on them, maybe reading out a couple different numbers of a couple different players who were involved in that event down there in the right corner of the Patriots end just a few moments ago. So what a crazy sequence of events. And you know what, they could, I know it's they're probably not gonna do it, but they could just call the game off and O'Donnell could win it here even with 59.2 seconds left since it's such a, a margin, a, 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 a blowout lead here for O'Donnell. Well, I think the Concords are going to stick around to play it the final few seconds here in this one. That's the fighting spirit of of this Concords team that they've had this whole tournament and mad respect to them. They've been down for most of this game and they've just kept pushing, kept fighting and doing everything they can to get back into the game. But unfortunately, looks like they're just gonna fall short here. Well, definitely something to shout out. Although it seems like we might already know who our winner is. The Concords, what a fight by them set so far in this tournament. Absolutely impressive performance by them through six games and now through their seventh. They definitely have a bright future and I expect to see them come back even better next year. And what's better than losing in the finals? Winning. Absolutely, couldn't put it any better, Cameron. So looks like O'Donnell is gonna be going to the penalty box here. Shouting coming from the crowd here, trying to get the fans back into it. 
and that will be today's goal scorer, Liam Noble, who's going to have to sit in the box now for two minutes as we get set to get back to action. Well, crazy last few minutes here. I think uh, both of these teams still have their adrenaline pumping. So once again, we'd like to thank all the viewers who have tuned in this week. It wouldn't have been possible without you guys, so thank you so, so much for the support. And still bodies flying around everywhere here. That puck goes down the ice. The benches are so short now. They kicked out so many players. So I wonder how the uh, celebration is going to work out for O'Donnell here as Canning takes it to the net. Concord still looking for one more goal. That's the fighting spirit of the Concords as Kellaway circles around, gives it across to Canning. Canning shoots, tipped in front, and it hits the netting. And Cameron, we talked about the Concords not giving up. I'm sure all the fans out in Gander are so proud of this team and proving everybody wrong. Oh, well, this team has just had such an ex excellent season, as I mentioned before, winning the Concord Cup. Coming in here, trying to set the tone, which they did. And we found them here in the finals. And as we roll down the final 15 seconds, Patriots fans starting to get riled up as the Concords. So Canning is going to pin it against the boards and for the first time ever there will be a three-peat the o'donnell patriots have the four-leaf clover once again they have the luck of the irish and they are boom on hamill centennial cups for the third year in a row what a performance by this patriots team seven and oh in this tournament and yes that's right they are three-time Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup champions. A shout out coming to the Concords now from their fans and from us. What a magnificent performance from the Airport Town Club as we go for the regular respectful handshake. Common practice between teams after the ending of either a series or a finale. And you know what, this game, the score doesn't do it justice, as we said earlier. The Concords go back to Gander with your heads held high. You guys proved everybody wrong. A lot of people thought it was gonna be Holy Heart versus O'Donnell in the final, but Gander rallied. They pushed so hard, and here they are in the championship game. So a great job from them, and hats off to that team. And the O'Donnell Patriots are going to come away with their third straight championship. Folks, as we get set for the Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup presentation, it's time to take a look at the Rogers TV three stars, your third star between the pipes for the O'Donnell Patriots. Number one, Eric Haas. Sorry, number 31, Eric Haas, that is, <laughs> who had an amazing performance sticking out the Concords. Very pro prolific performance and efforts. Now our second star, Alex Kellaway, might have not got on the score sheet, but he played an unbelievable game. And we're gonna send it down to Nick Hillier at ice level, who uh, I believe has an interview with Nathan Edwards. And it looks like we're gonna have to wait a moment actually for that one beforehand. Your first star of the evening with the hat trick, Liam Noble. What a performance by him. Rogers volunteer, O'Donnell Patriots manager, three-time Beaumont Hamill Cup champion. How does that one feel? It, it feels amazing. It's been a long week, but this is just amazing. Three-time winner, it's just and another completely different group of guys to win it all again. Now, this is the first three-peat in tournament history. Now, it's also officially, you guys have won half of the Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cups. 
Nathan, congratulations on the win. Go enjoy it with the boys. Thank you very much, Nick. Back up to you, Seth and Cameron. Player of the game for O'Donnell, number 13, Liam Noble. We've got the player of the game for the Concords and the sole goal, but there it is, your Rogers TV first star, also the Royal Newfoundland Regiment player of the game, Liam Noble. Seth, what a performance by Noble, pulling off the hat trick here in the championship game. Oh, Absolutely impressive. Oh, yeah, he played unbelievable in this game. That's a moment. I know there's a catchphrase going around now. Liam Noble is him. He is him. That was a he's him performance out there tonight. Welcome back. That was a great game. Congratulations to the Not sure if anybody teams. knows what that catchphrase means. We'll now means, commence with the awarding of the medals from the Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup. And said, I'm going to do it all Lieutenant myself. Hatfield and the tournament director, Gerard so Brennan, to present the, the silver medals. And a well-deserved first star from us at Rogers TV. And we never got to explain uh, our second star, uh, but we got to send it back to Nick, but we'll talk about that in a second. Down to you, Nick. Thanks, Seth and Cameron here with Eric Haas, the goaltender for the O'Donnell Patriots, number 31, 18 saves for you. You were named the third star of the game, the Rogers TV three stars. How does this uh, win feel for you? Uh, it feels pretty good. It's my first one on Hamels last night, and uh, I'm glad the seniors got to uh, win their last one. Now we see, uh, obviously, Two teams that went 6-0 and this week. What was it like facing the Gander Con Concord's offense, guys like Adam Pinsent, Alex Kellaway, Reed Fowler, players like that? Uh, yeah, they definitely came out flying. Our defense did a good job of containing them. And, uh, yeah, we ended up doing good out there. Congratulations on the win. All right, thank you. Back up to you, Seth and Cameron. Actually, a fun fact about Eric Haas. Eric Haas is my second cousin. That's my dad's, my dad's cousin's Darlene son. So there you go, a bit of uh, my family tree for you. So our second star of the night, who we never got a chance to talk about, Alex Kellaway. Ne might have not got on the score sheet, but he worked like a dog and was always trying to get that puck. So a great game from him and a great game from the Concords. Well, Kellaway just all over the ice tonight. I don't even know how many times we had to mention his name. A truly great performance by him. Hat trick earlier in the tournament, earlier today, and he came out flying today. Unfortunately, not able to get it done for the Concords. And it looks like before the presentation of the Centennial Cup, out come the gold medals by the regiment, which will be presented to the O'Donnell Patriots Club. A special shout out to one of Nick's interview ease earlier. Nathan Edwards, who is a volunteer for us here at Rogers. Nathan has done quite a lot of work for us over the last week, specifically in graphics. And now with the gold very great medal in, winners, so please come forward to accept their medals. Congrats to Nathan and, and the club. Hat. Nathan's got to be sick of winning this by now. That's his third straight title. And a bit of a dynasty here for the O'Donnell Patriots. Well, something to note about Nathan, he is currently the sole member of the Patriots to have won their first Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup way back in 2019, actually as a team mascot, jumping on last year then as one of the coaches and now this year as a general manager. So, wow, impressive string he, he, along he there by Edwards. He just kept getting promoted. He just kept getting promoted from uh, mascot to, to team coach and now to the general manager. Let's see what signings he makes this offseason. Cameron, uh, Connor McDavid. <laughs> well, 14.5 mil. That's the most impressive thing about high school hockey is it's not like you can sign a player. It's not like you can trade for players. What you get is what you get, and that's what you have to work with. Whoever comes to that school for educational purposes, of course, that's who you have to pick from. And now three different seasons in a row the Patriots have had a good enough crop to pick from that they are three-time Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup champions. Yeah, just unbelievable. And I saw uh, two of the veterans from this team that were key pieces of the win last year, Brady Walsh and Regan Hiscock, who is back for the summer. And we're going to send it down to Nick Hillier, who once again is there for an interview. Down to you, Nick. 
Thank you very much, Seth and Cameron here with Evan Cross of the O'Donnell Patriots, number two, the assistant captain, your second championship in as many years, going back to back now, one of the few players who have ever done it in this tournament. And now the moment How does this victory feel for, for you and the Patriots? Uh, you know, it's unreal. Uh, winning, winning's the best. Nothing better than winning, so it feels great to do it again, especially with this team, special. Now, we asked your goaltender, Eric Haas, what it was like playing against a 6-0, very strong Gander Concord team. The result, very similar, a three-goal win for you guys, just like last year. Walk us through that and how Gander played today. Oh, they're an unreal team. Uh, I know a few of their players from AAA, and they, they got uh, good quality players over there, but uh, we stuck with it today and got the job done. Any plans with the boys after this win? Absolutely, we'll find something to do tonight. Take care. Congratulations. And folks, your 2023 Royal Newfoundland Regiment High School Hockey Tournament Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup Champions. The O'Donnell Patriots, they are presented with the now iconic trophy. So what a game from these two teams. The Gander Concords with an unbelievable performance out there tonight. They got a heroic send off. So a great job from them. And your 2023 Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup champions for the third year in a row are the O'Donnell Patriots. What a way to do it. They've done it in style once again. Just a great performance all throughout the tournament by the Patriots. They get to celebrate now with the behemoth of a trophy. Such a size, and that's gonna be presented around, and each player is gonna go for a bit of a loop, seems. A salute to the fans, of course, which is usually the practice after you take home whatever championship you're playing for. And I believe that's the student section they're all going over to try to get riled up over there, so. O'Donnell holding on for a sixth year in a row. A true dynasty. There you see Liam Noble with it. He just hoisted that to the crowd. What a performance, and he's going to give that one right to our third star of the game, Eric Haas. Nicholas now with your first star, Liam Noble. Take it away, Nick. Thank you very much, Seth and Cameron, here with Liam Noble. First off, as you see, Nathan Edwards getting to raise that cup for the third time. Uh, you were named both the Rogers TV first star of the game and the Royal Newfoundland Regiment player of the game. How did it feel playing such a big role in today's win? It was great. I mean, the boy, we were all connected. We were all ready for this game. Um, came to play every game, and this game is really good. Now, as a great 11, you're due back next year with the Patriots. Do you think? That a four-peat could be in the carts? I think so, yeah. I think we, we could definitely do it. Well, you go celebrate with the rest of your team. Take care and congratulations. Thank you. All right, so if you notice, Liam Noble sporting the double hat. He won player of the game and now his championship hat down at ice level. And he has a chance to win three straight years, a triple crown, because he was on the team last year, on the team this year, and if he wins next year, he'll be Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup champion for all three years of high school. And now we're down to Nick Hillier once again, who's with Noah King at ice level. Noah King, a little bit of a kerfuffle behind the net uh, towards the end of the game. Nonetheless, two-time Beaumont Hamill Centennial Cup champion. How does this one uh, hit the heart? How does this one take the emotions? Uh, this is uh, unreal. Just as good as the first one. A uh, couple different people. We're missing some big boy, some big guys, but uh, that helped us out last year. But a lot of people stepped up. Noble had a great game today too. Now you talk about Noble having a great game. Haas also named the third star, uh, the Roger CB third star of the game. What's it like playing with this core group of guys? We just we all buy into a system here and. Uh, Makes it easy to play when we're all together. One last question for you now. As you know, Nathan Edwards, a key part of this team, as the captain, what's it like having a guy like him around? I would say he's the heart of O'Donnell. Congratulations, you go get your team picture. We're gonna head back up to Seth and Cameron before coming back down for one more 
and wrapping it up for the tournament. And it looks like the Patriots are gonna go for the team picture as they all head around to the Patriots end by the net and laying down there the Beaumont Hamilton Daniel Cutton hoarding around it. What a club this Patriots team having a great season. Weren't able to capture the Inner City League Championship, but this is the one that matters. They're provincial champions. Absolutely, and that's three straight for this team. They're gonna be having a party at O'Donnell tomorrow. No work for anybody at O'Donnell tomorrow, so a huge congratulations to these guys. A well-deserved win for them. And I'm Thank sure their school support. is Thanks. very proud of them winning it their third year in a row. Just such an impressive stat that is three seasons in a row. It must get a little old for uh, some players and specifically Nathan Edwards who, as we mentioned before, has it three times. But of course for the rookies on this team, it's great to of course, it's great to uh, experience this moment for the Patriots. And once again, I got to thank all the cameramen and women this weekend and all the volunteers that have made this tournament just so great. And in our first year back from COVID, this one was definitely worth it. Well, Seth, it's been a historical tournament. It's been a historical week. It's been a great game. Thank you very much for ha coming on. So on behalf of Seth and the entire Rogers crew, my name is Cameron Gill. I'm going to send it down to Nicholas Hillier for the finale. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Cameron and Seth. That's going to do it for the 2023 Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. The pinnacle of high school hockey in Newfoundland and Labrador, and at the top of the mountain this year, the O'Donnell Patriots. Thank you for tuning in to Rogers TV live coverage of the tournament from the Double Ice Complex in Paradise. On behalf of the entire crew of volunteers, thank you to our sponsors and all who made this possible. See you next year.
have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. This is Rogers TV. Your mouth can do a lot of amazing things. And your mouth can save a life. Hi, I'm Tom Wong. I'm just one of close to 1,000 Canadians in search of a stem cell match. We need your help. A simple swab is all you need to register on the National Stem Cell Database. You could be the one to save a life. Find the hero in you. Now you can enjoy Disney Plus on Ignite TV. Just say Disney Plus into your Ignite TV voice remote and stream Disney Plus movies and series like Marvel Studios, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, For Wakanda! Star Wars, The Bad Batch, Real Subtle, and Strange World. The world is so big. Upgrade to Ignite TV today and get six months of Disney Plus on us. Visit rogers.com slash Disney to get started. Sometimes, for a wish to come true, it takes a kingdom. Because together is stronger. Tied tight, united we stand. In honor of one child's wish. To fuel the fire that will grant many more. Join the kingdom. This is Rogers TV. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants 